I want to get into it starting with a message I got on one of my videos from a great commenter. I won't say their names, just, you know, I know it's a public comment, but I just, I don't know. I feel like it's, you know, I just out of respect. They watched me um, watch the video of um, Bushnell lighting himself on fire. And they said, I honestly don't even know what to say. How can you, uh, how you can have that empty of a reaction is beyond me. Now, it took me a lot of, I spent my time just like meditating on my own thoughts yesterday since I wasn't feeling well. And I was like, okay, like I'll just like focus on this. I, when I first read this comment, I'm going to read it again. I honestly don't even know what to say. They're, re they're reacting to my reaction of watching Bushnell light himself on fire. How can you have that empty of a reaction is beyond me. Okay, so a few things. They're stating confusion on observing me. They're saying, how can you have that empty of a reaction? They're assuming I'm having an empty reaction because to them it feels like not enough, okay? They're saying it's beyond me. So now they're saying it's beyond my comprehension. And as I read it, I'm thinking, oh, oh, wait. And I even sat there and I'm like, that's interesting. I've never, what does this comment mean? So now I have to sit there as the content creator and say, what does this mean? Okay, let me pull apart their sentence and try to understand it. They're saying they're confused and they're confused that I had an empty reaction, but I was having a pondering reaction. I was deeply pondering what I was witnessing. I was obviously in observation mode, which means unless my feelings were going to be evoked by what I was watching, I was only going to remain in observation mode. Since for my, my curiosity, for my thing that I do, I like to observe people and especially myself. When I say to my partner, let's talk analytically instead of emotionally about our problem, whatever, let's say there's a problem over like dishes, okay? I'm saying not to have a reaction that is emotional, but is analytical. So you're not having a reaction, you're pondering. So let's say my uh, partner and I were having a conversation about something you said hurt my feelings. I'd be like, okay, we need to analyze, like, analyze this, which means now... We don't use language like this hurt my feelings because now we've decided not to consider your feelings. We're only considering why your feelings might have gotten hurt in the first place, which is the analyzing part. So when you say I had an empty reaction, you're watching me analyze. That's what it looks like to analyze something because I'm observing a behavior and I'm not in any way thinking about it from a more uh, like projecting myself into that space or thinking about anything more than like, what am I observing now? That can be punctured. My analyzing ability can be punctured if I'm really emotionally moved by something. I wasn't emotionally very moved by his um, by his action. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. One, he's not the first person I've seen light himself on fire. Two, you have to remember that I have immigrant parents from Iraq who grew up watching people massacred in the streets who had their own family members killed in gas attacks by Saddam, whose own grandfather and grandmother were jailed by Iraqi soldiers, whose own relatives were rebels in the country, whose own family was persecuted. So I grew up hearing stories, experiencing my parents, like my parents' childhood through stories, my grandparents' childhood through stories. And, you know, when we were children, we were introduced to videos of beheadings, like when we were teenagers gas attacks by Saddam. And we were told, we want you to learn our history. I grew up watching like the Holocaust videos. I grew up like, I don't know how to explain this to people, but if you're young and this is your first tragedy, like if, if Israel Palestine is your first war, you have to understand I was born in 89. I have now seen very many and I grew up in a place without the internet. And now I have the internet so I was one of the first people on the internet. And though I wasn't on every space on the internet, I don't know all the memes. Yeah, I was on the internet at a time where watching videos or seeking out the most like, you know, that that was just a part of like growing up on the internet before it was like heavily regulated. I also kind of, when I was younger, would pride myself in being very disciplined when experiencing the harshness of life. I sort of grew up in a bubble that sort of, 
promoted preparedness for like being captured and tortured. And that was something I thought about a lot. I read a lot of books. You know, I've read thousands of books, a lot of them about surviving horrific situations, a lot of biographies, a lot of like war oriented books. So when I think about observing a person, what I even grew up watching Al Jazeera uncensored. If you grew up and watch different news sources uncensored, they will show you massacred babies. They will show you adults. They will show you things. And that is devastating, right? Like it's horrible. It's very different watching people who are not consenting to being massacred than watching people who have consented to dying. And I think that that for me is very contextual because my brain separates everything into like categories. So my my brain absolutely separates the fact like, am I watching a child and a father and a mother being massacred in Palestine? I'm probably going to cry. Am I watching an American soldier who's consenting to doing this form of protest? That's very different. It's like a very different sensation to my brain. It says very different messages to my brain. And I guarantee you that if you watch somebody else do the same thing for political reason you didn't like, you probably wouldn't care as much because you have no way to relate to it except it must be insane, right? There was a recent tragedy on YouTube or Twitch, I can't remember, where the man severed his dad's head and was allegedly a conservative. Obviously, the man was mentally ill. No sane, rational conservative is going to behead his own dad and then talk about how he's now the president of the United States. The man beheads his own father's head, puts it up on the internet and says, I am now the president and no longer Joe Biden is the president. Can we all agree that's obviously an insane person? That is in no way, but people were saying, see how Republicans are so crazy? This is what Republicans do. Is that what Republicans do? Or is that what a mentally ill man who, who grew up in a conservative home ends up doing? But like in any way, shape or form is that good faith to say that's what Republicans do. No. It is so bad faith to say that. That is not what a Republican does. That is what an insane person does. Now, in contrast, I don't think Bushnell was necessarily an insane person in the same way. But for some people, no matter how you explain it, they will always see this version of protest as mental illness. And obviously that's a bubbles thing. That is how you process information. That's how you process like what is happening, right? So when you watch videos, again, you have to understand like they're going to impact you differently by what you know and how you observe information. Obviously, um, I wouldn't be very good at my job of observing people if I got broken down every time I observed people being people. When I say humans are going to human, I'm trying to get you to radically accept that everything human does is a part of us. And that the thing that separates you from other people is just your category. It is not who's more human. Everything is human. It's not about like, oh, I'm better than that human. Nope, you're just in a different category. And because you're in this category, you think you're better than people. And that makes a lot of sense because through your values, like you would be. It's just not objective. It's just subjective, which is valid. It's super, super. I think I'm much better than people who um, like torture their children. But it doesn't say anything. I'm not saying anything of value. Right. OK, so. That that comment was really interesting. Then. I saw another comment and it's a good question, by the way, like it's a good question, but I didn't have an empty reaction. I had an observing reaction. It's very different. And also I have no connection to this. Like political protest is very specific and it's it, if he if he consented, we're all saying he consented, he did it of his own volition, then there would be no reason for me to be emotionally moved by it. I'm not in that bubble. I don't understand what he did that for. I'm not in that like I'm not in that that world, right? It's like watching a Catholic starve themselves for, for aborted babies. Like, I'm not in that bubble. You can do whatever you want. I'm not going to feel bad for you, right? Like, that's a decision you can make. Okay, the next comments I saw were on Sneeko. And again, all great comments in their own way, but I want to explain how my brain works. So someone said, oh my God, Sneeko's changed like four or five times in personality. Yeah, he's definitely like all over the place, right? Second comment says, you constantly trying to explain why Sneeko doesn't mean the things he said is super cringe. Okay. 
Next comment. I was in my 20s too, and I knew no many people who were in their 20s, and none of them are so obnoxious, stupid, and garbage as Sneeko. It's crazy to think if he has an audience of small kids who mimic his degeneracy. Um, I'm not sure if that comment makes sense, but the point is, so there's three things happening in these comments. First, there's always an acknowledgement that Sneeko is a lying person who changes constantly and slash is always deceiving people. So I go, okay, so he's in the category of person that does not in any way, shape or form actually share his realness. He's not grounded. He's always performing. So he's not real. I don't believe anything he says. And people go, what do you mean? You have to believe what he says. He said it. But you can't say he is a liar who never says what he thinks and is actually just a bullshit grifter. And then you know who Sneeko is. If he's a grifter, you don't know who he is. Which is why when I say, oh, like you're lying. Oh, this isn't true. Something here isn't real. It's because there's no foundation to Sneeko. And so we don't know which part is the real Sneeko. If he's a grifter, he can't also be himself. So that's what I'm trying to explain, but people can't get it because they think the grifter is who people are. And the grifter is who you're performing to be. It is not who you are. You are not a grifter. You are performing grifting, which is separate from who you are, right? When people say, oh, I was in my 20s and I'm not like this. I love that for you, sis. It's not about you. People are so narcissistic. They think if this wasn't how it was for me, then it can't be that way for you. It's not about you. It's about this person we're observing. It's great that everyone in your life, who's what, like maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe 1,000 people, is nothing like Sneeko. But what about the other 8 billion people? It's interesting that the same people that will talk about it's obvious what to do in Israel and in Palestine. It's obvious what we should be doing. It's obvious what we should be doing. They'll come on my videos, which is so reasonable for their bubble, and they'll say, Brittany, you're so uneducated. You don't know what you're talking about. You asked everybody, you know, what is a genocide? Yes, I want you who are upset to explain to me what you think you think you're talking about. Because obviously, if I talk about it from my perspective, we're not going to share definitions. And I was making it about the audience, right? So, okay. Then they go, Brittany's so uneducated, she shouldn't be talking about this. Also, I think YouTubers should be talking about this. Why aren't they talking about this? <gasps> Brittany's so uneducated. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <gasps> Why don't people care about my cause? Oh my God, people don't know anything about my cause. Why aren't they talking about my cause? Oh, you don't know anything about my cause. You can't talk about it. People don't know what they want. They want the world to talk about their cause but they don't want the world to talk about their cause if they don't say the things they want. They think you're only saying the things you're saying because you don't have the right information. If you just had the right information, you'd think exactly like me. Okay. Maybe. Maybe, right? And so again, when we're having these conversations, my brain is trying to figure out, how do I explain this to people? So I created a new picture. This is how I see categories in my head. I see them as very nuanced shades. And one person goes, Brittany, I don't care what it's called. It's called blue. I don't care if it's different shades. It's all blue. And I go, but it's not all blue. There's a difference. There's like many shades of blue. I want to know exactly which shade of blue we're talking about. It doesn't matter, Brittany, they say. It doesn't matter. It's blue. But it, it means something different. It's very, I need to be very specific about which shade of blue we're talking about. And they're like, it doesn't matter. Why do you think it doesn't matter? Now, every brain works differently. I've had this conversation with lots of people. Of course, it wouldn't matter to them because their brain doesn't work that way. The way they seek out knowledge, the way they're interested in knowledge is specific. It's interesting. One of the largest criticisms I get of my level system is that it's not nuanced enough. But that's because the system itself, I don't, I could do it. I just don't have the spoons to like literally get as nuanced as I want. So what I do instead is I try to be nuanced in the conversations we're happening. Like this, here's the nuance. But when I bring in the nuance of the shades, they go, uh-uh, the shades don't matter. So the shades only matter when I'm leveling you, but they don't matter when we're actually having a discussion that leads to me leveling you. So obviously the way I level people 
is usually by figuring out how aware they are of the categories and how they where they are of, of how to explain that nuance. Like everything is a construct. Now the irony is like fours and fives can run into the problem of forgetting to be introspective because they're in their trauma, their feelings, their biology. They're like, like succumbing to their own issues. But if you yell at me over a construct, I obviously know we're not having a five conversation. So if somebody comes to me and they're yelling at me over like, oh, I saw a comment you made. I didn't like it. Okay. Why are you yelling at me? Because I was hurt or you were wrong. Oh, was I wrong? Was I explaining something subjective or was that my opinion? Well, your opinion makes me feel like you are this way. Okay. See how it's still about you? What can I do to make you feel like you understand me better? Okay, well, that's going to take a lot of fucking work if you're not willing to admit that you're making a request of someone that's inappropriate. I noticed on the talk with Tom Foolery, Kyla did really good on it. She went really hard on Jay Stock, who, who deserves it. But I've noticed the conversation around the way people in that space, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say this space because I really feel like my community is not a part of that space because that space is so, it's just a fucked space. Like not everybody in it, obviously, but a majority of the people in that space are very bad thinkers. And they're bad thinkers because they only are allowed to think within the mechanism of how they create content. So with the exceptions of other people in the space that I do like, like Kyla and Tom and Wick and all those people, a lot of the people in this space, they don't understand first change. They don't believe in forgiveness. They don't believe in meeting people where they're at. And they specifically don't believe people because they're all liars. So I was thinking about lying because lying shows up. Lying in a category is different. People lie on a spectrum. So I remember in my 20s, I was, I needed to quit, a, I, need to, I needed to quit a job. I needed to quit. And I was worried that I wouldn't get a good reference from my boss because she was a little like inappropriate with the relationship. Like she would definitely feel like we were more friends and I didn't feel the same way, um, which happens often, especially in nannying or like in other, other jobs. And I felt like, okay, I needed to lie about why I was quitting so she would give me a good reference. So I told her my sister was pregnant. My sister's not pregnant. Like, mm. okay, my sister's not pregnant. But I told her my sister was pregnant and I needed to go help with the baby. Wasn't true. Shit lie. But I got a good reference. Now, I stopped uh, lying in that way in th at 30. I decided, okay, 30 Brittany, 30s Brittany, she's going to be different. She's not going to tell a lie like that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Right? Now, lots of you, lots of people think it's totally rational to lie to your boss and to lie to strangers. I saw a TikTok of a woman that says like, oh, I love like lying to strangers. You know, a woman comes up to her and says, oh, I love your hair. Right? And so she goes, oh, I just traveled in from so-and-so country and I just got back. She's like, girl, I've never left the country, but I love lying to strangers. And I think that's interesting. There's something interesting about that kind of person who's willing to lie to strangers. I try hard not to lie to anyone, but I often do lie to strangers in small talk. How are you doing? I'm not going to tell a stranger how I'm actually doing. Right? Like, that's not what's happening here. Now, some people say, oh, your neurodivergency or your brain, Brittany, thinks even those social moments are like lies when they're just like not even lies. Well, they're both. It depends on how you're processing it, right? So again, what shade of blue are we talking about? What kind of a lie are we talking about? Right? So when we observe people, right, we're observing people by how we process what is a lie. So sometimes in conversation, I'll be like, why did you just say that? And they're like, I didn't just say that. And I'm like, but you said this verbatim. What do you think that means? They're like, that's not what it means. This is what it means. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that until we have a clarification. But if you can't get a clarification, my, my belief is that you stop the conversation. We stop it. Because again, I'm not going to spend my whole life arguing about what shade of blue we're talking about if the person I'm talking to refuses that the shade of blue is shades. So if, again, if we're going to have conversations about nuance and introspection, then we've got to talk about, talk about the shades, in my opinion. If you don't think that's true, then I don't need to talk to you about it, which in some ways is forming a bubble that isolates how other people are thinking. Because to be honest with you, there's too many people on the planet to actually care about what everybody thinks. And again, that coincides with everybody thinks, everybody believes, everybody thinks we should do this. That coincides with your morals, your ethics, what you think is right, what you think is wrong. 
it was interesting. Yesterday, Kyla said something on the panel that I just didn't understand. But she said, you cannot prove that it's morally wrong to like fuck a dead chicken that you're about to kill. And I was like, whoa, for the record, I'm a secularist and I don't believe in a God. And I do think it's immoral to fuck a chicken. Right. And then it was like this logic brain bro thing where she was like, but what's the argument type thing? And maybe I'm misunderstanding her. I could be. But that stood out to me because I I don't think that's how my brain operates when I think about morals, because those are my personal values. Right. I think I could absolutely argue why it's morally wrong to fuck a chicken. But also it would be through my values. Right. So it's not about it being objective. It's about it being within reason for my values. I think it is in within reason of my religious brother's values to be pro-life and anti-LGBT. It is outside of reason for me as a queer person to hold those beliefs because I believe like we're all animals on a planet evolved over time. But obviously I would have explained why I think we're on the planet to explain why I got my values, which are formed by my understanding of what I'm doing here, which is informed by his understanding of what he's doing here, right? So again, it's interesting, like when we're talking and we're having these conversations, like what are we all really trying to say to each other? What are we actually trying to convey? I'm trying to convey that we are talking about blue, but we are not talking about the same shade of blue. And that's what I'm trying to say. So when people say like, we are our biology, I'm not saying what Spolosky is saying, right, Richard? I'm not always saying what he's saying in determinism. When I say, oh, we're just our biology, I'm not saying what Tom is always saying. Like Tom's always, Tom brings me up sometimes when he's, like, Brittany says this, we are our biology. Yes, because depending on the bubble, we're all saying different things using the same words. So when people hear me talk, they're like, oh, I can't believe you've moved into this bubble. And I'm like, or they're like, oh, I can't believe you're saying this. And I'm like, I was like, I can't believe you're saying this. And I'm like, we're both, we're all talking about blue, completely different shades of blue. We're not even having the same conversation. But people go, we are having the same conversation. I'm like, we're not even having the same conversation. We're not having the same conversation. And that is what I think the whole world is doing. We are all having completely different conversations. But since we all think we're talking about the color blue, which we are, we think it's the same conversation. So the question is, which category are you talking about? Which subject, which bubble, which thing are you actually talking about? And that is why it is so difficult because it's, Half the world be colorblind. And then half of us argue about which shade of blue we're even talking about in the first place because we all see different shades of blue as different colors. So again, like, I love this work because it gives me a chance to observe. But when I do get comments that are like, how could you react this way? You're not asking me a question about myself. You really should be asking yourself, why did you observe it that way? Why did you observe it that way is a much better, better question to ask yourself than why did Brittany say this this way? Because both are important, but most people do not ask themselves, why did I react that way? Why did I say this this way? Like, it's interesting how I've made my position, position so clear that what's happening in Palestine is absolutely not okay. From a humanitarian perspective, from my own personal perspective, I am anti-war. So I'm not okay with ha what's happening in Palestine. Right. But people hear it as like, as not that because they don't like the way that I'm not fully on board with every part of their political movement when I've already said I'm not political. Right. Someone said in my comments, um, indifference is what was it? Com what was it? What's the word they use? Hold on. What? How do they say it? Uh, indifference is. What is the word they use? Hold on. It made me laugh because I was like, huh, like you don't believe that you think, hold on, hold on, that's me, hold on, they made me laugh, oh, being neutral is being complicit, by the way, so first of all, see, when I say no one actually believes that, what I'm saying is like, you haven't thought that through enough to actually believe that, right, like being neutral is being complicit, by the way. That's not something people really believe. It's just something people say because it feels really good to say it. But it's not something you believe because it doesn't match your action through and through. Being neutral is literally how you get through life on most topics and most issues people are going through. It only feels like people are being complicit 
because they're not engaging in the way you would want them to, but you are not engaging in every problem around the world. See, my brain goes, people can only and only should focus on what they think is important. Not what other people think is important. And they should make the world better in that particular regard, right? So when people say like, oh, you're neutral, so you're complicit, complicit in which part? In whose side? Because now you're assuming there's like a, a, a complicity. So what part am I complicit about? Am I saying, because what if, what if you're neutral, but you're on the one side, like you, how do I say this? Am I verbalizing correctly? When you say you're complicit, you're making the assumption that I would agree with you on your idea of which side I'm being complicit about. So you're not saying anything. You're just saying something that sounds really, really good. You know? Because you're assuming, in order to make that statement, you're assuming so much. And I'm saying, I'm trying not to assume. I'm trying to ask, like, what are you, what is the thing you are doing? What is the thing that we're talking about? Right? <clears throat> Manta says, I think it can be more accurate to say inaction can be the action in and of itself sometimes. Maybe. It depends. Right? Lacar says silence is violence. I hate that statement. Yeah, silence is violence. It's not a real thing. Right? Like it's not a real, it's only real within the bubble. So your bubble means something when you say that. But other people and even yourself are not always thinking about life that way. Because if you ask people about what's happening in the Congo, right? They're not, it's like silence is violence, sir. But like, you don't have time to know what's going on in the Congo because it's too complicated. It's too far away. You cannot know what is happening. Did you see the protests in Poland happening? Like you cannot know what's happening around the world at every moment. So we were always complicit because we we're always silent because we don't know. And even when you know, even when you know, what does it matter that you know? What does it matter? You cannot hold the belief, right? And I know you can hold multi a multitude of beliefs, but you have to understand that the belief is coming from a subjective perception that your brain is processing as the most important thing. My mom calls me the other day, sweet woman, and she goes, have you seen this, um, this Catholic saint story that's about to become a movie? And I said, no, I don't know what's going on. She goes, how do you not know it's in the movie theaters? I was like, I don't know what's in the movie theaters, mom. Like, I don't pay attention to what's in the movie. I have no idea what's going on in Hollywood right now. I don't know. And she goes, do you know she's very feminist? Ask your audience. She, my mom goes, ask your audience if they think she's a feminist. Because Betsy, she's a nun and she's like a feminist. And I'm sitting here like, do you see how my mom sounds just like you and you sound just like my mom to me? You are making so many assumptions in order to quote, get people on your side that don't even coincide with how to understand other people you're talking to. A feminist is a very specific concept that is multi-categoried, multiple shades of blue, that often doesn't overlap with religious communities, but can. My audience isn't even primarily feminist. It's primarily philosophy focused and not political. Even if you guys hold political values, we don't talk about politics here often, okay, or at all. So she's assuming so many things about my audience just to have a conversation where she can convince us to be pro this Catholic movie because it's feminist. As if there's not different shades of feminism. As if like, cool, you can be a conservative feminist, but what about this, this version of feminism? Right? So again, when we're talking about things, we all think we're talking about blue, but we're not talking about the same shade of blue in the same way. So what I want to do, okay, I want to go over these timestamps I wrote down of this conversation with Tom Foolery. So the point of showing you this is to show you how people are having the conversation and how they're trying to make sense of the conversation as well. The way they talk, the words they use, why I get this like tingling of like, mm, this is a lie, this isn't accurate, this doesn't make any sense. And also understanding that I am not Tom's close personal friend. I do not know Tom in a close and personal way. I've never talked to Tom off stream, except in DMs to mostly talk about stream. Um, we have not had a personal phone call. And even people I've had personal phone calls with, I don't know much about them. I only know usually what they are willing to tell me. Some tell me more than others, okay? But Tom and I, I am not Tom's personal friend. 
I am coming from a perspective of why I, as a content creator, don't consider myself a part of this space and don't want to be. Because I do think most of the people in this space are incredibly toxic and bad faith and they're just dumb. I think they're dumb. I can pick fights today. I'm feeling spicy, guys. I just think you're dumb. And if you're willing to call me a cult leader, I think I can call you dumb. You know what I mean? And with peace and love, I don't mean Kyla and I don't mean Tom. I don't mean Wick. I mean very specific kinds of people in this space that are just so chronically in their own head that they project all of their trauma into everyone else and make all of their problems other people's problems. And they keep saying things like, oh, well, I wouldn't do this if this was me. It's not about you, queen. It's not about you. See how they don't want to get to know the consciousness? They only want to pigeonhole the consciousness in a way that makes them able to process it. Right? So watch this. I wrote down my timestamps, okay? I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Okay. Imagine being so narcissistic that you think you have the answer for 8 billion people. And then, you know what I mean? Mm. Recharge Britney is dangerous. Oh, I'm ready, girl. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this video. We're going to go over it. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, fucking ready. This is on Tom Fullery's stream. Parts of the audio isn't perfect. His mic goes in and out a couple of times, but I'll, I'll, I got you. Okay. So check this out, okay? So I've got my categories down in the middle, okay? We're going to talk about categories. What shades of blue is everyone talking about as they're having this conversation? See how I wear blue today? See how I wear blue today? <laughs> I'm such a gay queen. Okay, right? Which category? Which category of blue is everyone yelling at Tom for? So this, this starts off at... Um, like six hours and 11 minutes into his stream. Now, and for record, okay, again, I am not Tom's personal friend. So I'm not coming from this like a personal friend perspective, but I love observing people and patterns. And I'm a pattern queen. I don't care what anyone says. I'm better at patterns than all of you. And literally I've been listening to Tom for at least 12 months straight, almost every stream he does, because I don't know why. I just like the way he does his streams and I find myself gravitating towards them. My husband's always like, oh, are you talking to Tom Tom? Or, to, or to, uh, listening to Tom Tom? I was like, yep, I'm listening to Tom. Like, he's always like, oh, you're like listening to Tom again. Like, I listen to Tom's streams. He has a lot of good people coming on, a little interesting. But I've noticed so many patterns in Tom that I want you to pay attention to how much people don't listen to Tom, don't watch Tom, and then say, well, I saw this 20 second clip of you. Okay, well, Brittany is a neurodivergent bitch who spends all her time listening to streams on podcasts. And I've seen most of his streams for the last year. That's why when Zonia came for Tom and said, Tom, you've changed. I'm like, no. I look at patterns. Tom hasn't changed. His pattern is the same. Zonia's changed. Just because things have changed doesn't mean Tom has changed. His pattern has been so consistent over the last year that Tom has his faults or things I don't really like about like his particular category. But for the most part, Tom's pattern has been the same. Okay, so watch this. This is six hours and 11 minutes in. And what are they talking about? They're talking about lying. Okay, so look at the way Jay Stock, who's insane, by the way. Jay Stock is such a bad faith. He's absolutely blocked. No interest in talking to that human. He lies. He twists things. He's uh, in this show. So this whole video is just Jay Stock. Obviously, he's crazy. Like, I don't know what his neurology is. I don't know what his category is yet. But he lies for the thrill of lying. But then he's so funny the way he accuses Tom of lying. Watch. Oh, it's so good. OK, then Stardust is in the panel and then some guy in the blue shirt. I don't know who that is. So Tom, I think his name. I don't know what this guy's name is, but he's another guy who's going after Tom. And then Star's there. I don't know why. I love Star, but God bless you. Like sometimes I swear she just likes to be on a panel to show up for no reason. I don't know why. Very weird category, Stardust. So sweet, but like a weird category. I don't understand her. And then why? Well, anyways. OK, so then there's Kyla who did really good during this conversation, right? Uh, is there anything else that I'm missing? I just want to make sure I like have all sure. the details. There's also like the history of him talking about how he's been a pathological liar before. It's like a whole bunch of stuff. With her. Tom, Tom's audio is really low here. So then he fixes it later, but it's not important what he's saying. Pay attention to how Jay Stock starts the framing. So Kyla, who's this third party, is trying to come in and figure out what the drama was. And Jay Stock comes in and Jay Stock says, Oh, Tom has talked about how he's a pathological liar. Look at the way he's saying that. 
right? And as a neurodivergent kid growing up, which Tom is, do you know lying and neurodivergency coincide? But do you also know that according to recent studies, and I pulled the one up just from Wisconsin, 71% of people argue that or say that they lie once to two times a day. Lying is so prevalent in culture that a pathological liar isn't what Tom is. And, and Tom even uses it wrong. Guys, uh, well, pathological liar isn't the assumption of what we think it is. It's saying you have a pattern of behavior consistent and chronic. But when you and I often think of pathological liars, we're actually thinking of who the fuck did I marry? You know, the series, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? She calls him a pathological narcissistic liar, which sounds like it's malicious, which sounds like it's insane, which sounds like he's gaslighting her. Tom is a person who lies, but all people lie. So if Tom's a pathological liar, then all of us are pathological liars because everybody lies, right? Even I'm pro-lying for survival reasons. I'm pro-lying. Don't tell your boss what you did the night before, girl. Go into work and pretend you had a migraine or your period. Don't tell me you drank all night. You lie, girl, okay? So Tom calling himself a pathological liar is probably not what it means in a sense of narcissistic pathological liar of like, oh my gosh, you know, he could just be saying literally like, oh, a, a girl asked me like, what was I doing last night? And I was playing video games all night, all night and masturbating, but I told her I was at church. That's a lie. If he does that every day, he's not a pathological liar. So again, I feel like this is a miscategorization, but possible. Ooh, compulsive liar. Okay, compulsive liar is different from pathological liar in my mind. It, okay, all shades of blue the shades of lying, right, is different from um, fear-based liars. It's different than growing, a, growing up in a home in which every time you told the truth, you were punished, so you learn how to lie, right? All of that is different. Plenty of good people just have trauma from growing up in a religious home and, like, end up lying because they don't want any backlash from people they're not close to. Ever hear about people who, like, you need to break down their walls for them to tell you the truth? So, again, which category is Tom is the question. So here's let's, – let's watch. Yeah, an interview with you. Yeah. Talking um, with Tom's audio is low. With you. With you, Erudite. That he's told you he's a pathological liar before. Okay, so they go, it's with you, Kyla. They talk, He talked to you, and he said to you he was a pathological liar. Tom's audio is low. His audience is going to tell him to up it. Well, I think he said used to be. Was that, did you talk about that when you were... When you were in addiction? Yes. So Tom says, yes, when I was in addiction. He's his audio. Okay. He was talking about how he was lying to his Wait, boss. Did he not talk about how fun it was to set to play the game and lie to people? So Jay Stock, didn't he say how fun it was to lie and play the game and da 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 Okay. Manipulate them. I thought this was a whole thing. Yes, that's what on my about. stream? Yep. I believe that we I what I remember, obviously it's been a while, so I don't fully remember. My remembrance of the stream is that when we talked about it, he was talking specifically about his experience as an addict. And like, mm -hmm. I don't think he was saying it as a, I could be wrong. And so Jay, if you have like a clip of like me being a fucking dumbass and him being like, no, I still think that this is awesome. My understanding. Remember too, like a lot of parents will have like a, like kind of like that story we covered the other day. We'll have a trans or gay kid and they'll be like, you've always been a liar. You've always lied to me. Well, yeah, I'm going to lie to you about being gay, bro. If like the consequence of telling the truth is that I get punished and parents will use that against their children and say, see how you've lied. You lied all the time when you were a kid. It's like, whoa, I lied because if I told you the truth, I would have gotten beat or punished or sent to bed without dinner. You know what I mean? So again, like remember every like category of lying, people try to like, like, oh, you're such a little liar. But like, why am I even lying in the first place? I've never like, even watched the stream, so uh, I don't have any clips. I did watch oh, it. The, was, okay. the cool. part that he's See, I didn't even watch it. I didn't even watch the full context of the screen. These are people who are willing to tell Tom, I have an accusation against you, but I've never watched the full context. I just think you're a liar, and I think this is what I – this is so dis disrespectful and bad faith. This is bad. When people aren't willing to do the research – this is what I'm saying. And watch the way Jay Stock through this whole drama literally like snakes his way out of it and in it again and then doubles down but like refuses to do it. Look how he does it. Oh, well, I just didn't even watch it. I just didn't even watch it. But he's accusing Tom of like the worst things. That's why I'm saying stop talking to these people. They're just bad people according to Britney's values because they're not willing to engage in any form of good faith and they're not worth the communication. But let's pay attention to how the conversation goes. Like I've to, seen, I've seen like, let's, let's hear uh, I just I've seen like a 20 second clip here. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Uh, the part a that he's referring clip. to is when you two are talking, he starts talking about a job that he had and his boss asked him a question and he lied to his boss. And then when he was thinking about it, he's like, 
wait, why the hell did I just lie about that? There was no reason for me to lie. And then he goes on to tell you that. By the way, that's a phenomenon I see on TikTok all the time. Like when I lie about a perfectly reasonable or unreasonable thing that like someone asked me, why did I feel a need to lie? This is why I say so many things are trauma or there's a reason and the why can be answered. So Tom's going to answer it. He has a really good answer for it. Kyla has a really good answer for it. But look at the way that they don't even care about the answer. They're trying to use this to prove that Tom is somehow like this like malicious, like mischievous, like horrible little like chronic 4D chess player liar in the community when it's literally the opposite. Tom isn't perfect, but he's not the one trying to play 4D chess. He's a pathological liar and sometimes he likes to see how far he can go with a lie or something to that effect. But the part was about the, the... The, talking to his boss was definitely yeah. one of the yeah. things. Yeah, so that the main hard. the main thing I, that I'm I having a hard time remembering it. with this situation is that if he had said I'm a pathological liar and like I kinda like enjoy the thrill of it and then it ended there, I think that would have like put us some <laughs> really, really, really massive red flags to like, really dislike lying. I just want to make it understand, did he talk about it in a past tense state while yeah. he was actively addicted and saying that that was something he did? And now in recovery, he doesn't do this thing? I don't, I don't know if it had to do with the addiction part of it. I don't know what it had to because you fuckers didn't watch the clip. You're so excited to take people down. This is what I'm saying, red flag. People who are excited to take people down off a 20 second clip. How malicious is that, huh? How malicious is that to only watch clip content and then to completely take someone out of context? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that fucking so they're telling on themselves? They're literally confessing. Do not engage with these people. They are literally confessing to being bad people. Do not engage. A portion of the thing, I think this was separate, but I could be wrong. I literally have um, the clip right here. I can. I watched I it a while ago. So, yeah, okay, so just, I watched it a, lot, a while ago. It was like a 20 second clip. I watched it like a while ago. Wait until you see the fucking clip. Wait until you guys see the fucking clip. To be clear, um, if it was just while he was in addiction, um, I want to be really cautious. I'm super not comfortable smearing people's character just based on what they like do in the midst of their addiction alone and to say that that like Amen. perpetuates into their sobriety it can sometimes so i'm not dismissing it as like a source i just want to be like you know, oh there's the also his in major props to kyla she did really really good during this discussion saying I heist stories that seem to change constantly i mean honestly why he went to prison tom were you doing grand theft like a uh, grand larceny when you went to prison stealing people's so jstock starts the sentence off with "Ooh," and the lies he told the stories he's told and then look at the way he's doing it he's twisting just like he did in the conversation with me for five seconds he tried to do that jstock has tried to twist my words so many times i'm like oh you're one of those people you do the twist do the twist oh okay okay you're a twister I get it. He does it every time he talks to people and he's super bad faith about it. People shouldn't. This man is obviously trying to clout chart, guys. Stop talking to him. Ignore him. Stop talking to him. Jewelry and stuff. It was, I, was, I wouldn't call it grand larceny, but it, yes, I was stealing jewelry from houses. Yes. Okay. Is I, that why you went to prison? It, it, that's one of the times I got arrested. I, that's not the time that I... Uh, went to prison but the um the, yes the clip that they're talking about literally they show me so talking about like when i was 18 this is fucking 17 years ago where i'm talking about like improving like 17 years ago he is talking to kyla about the person the consciousness he was 17 years ago having to change aspects of my life being an addict for a long time going to prison then getting out and having to like relearn how to be a normal person and having to change like a lot of bad patterns mm -hmm. that i learned and which we all have to do all of us should have a story about our life in which we learned to stop bad patterns and if you don't then you're not doing any work on yourself which tells me you're the problem and i'm yes and i'm talking to you about like how it is that i had to change these things mm -hmm. and that i was just kind of like a compulsive liar that i would just lie about things that i didn't need to mm -hmm. and then i had to relearn like how to not do that shit anymore but they literally take that clip and each time say see he literally admits that mm -hmm. he's a pathological liar how did nobody notice this at the time he admits that he's a pathological liar every single time yep. somebody plays the clip instead of saying oh this is a clip so instead of tom and this is one of the things i hate about this space or that space ah, ah, 
that space, this space, that space, but not our space. Our space is different. Our space is good. That space is that they don't want to know about the consciousness. They don't want to hear about change. So here's Kyla trying to have really important, in-depth conversations about a person's consciousness. Tom is being vulnerable. He's sharing a part of his life. And then here are these people who are taking that vulnerability and twisting it in the ugliest way because they don't believe him and don't like him. That's a very specific category of person. It takes a very specific category of person to one, not have empathy, but two, to take somebody who's talking about a past version of themselves that has learned something and to literally say that's how they are now. To say like, oh yeah, like and say I only watched a 20 second clip of it, so. Oh, I didn't see the full context, so. For him talking about like himself from 17 years ago, maybe he's still doing this. That's never what they say. They always say, look, he okay. literally admits to this. Mm -hmm. um, am I able to share into your Discord? So Jay just sent me a clip. Um, do you mind if we just watch the full context? So oh, wait until you see the full context. Because I don't fully remember this conversation. Yeah, you can, sure. um, can I share into your into this call? Is that possible? Yeah, I just want to ask Tom, uh, point blank. Did you actually imitate SWAT to r rip off other drug dealers? Yes. Okay. Was this while you were actively addicted? Yes. Okay. And selling at the time, yeah. Look, there are spectrums. So when Tom talks about his relationship with drugs, addiction, um, jail, that's a specific shade of blue. What regular society who has no relationship with, with this thinks when they think about addiction is they have a vision in their head. So when people talk about addiction or prison or something, they have a thing in their head that pops up and that's what they think it is. And if Tom isn't like that, he's lying. But you guys know there's a spectrum to people who go to prison. There's a spectrum to people who are addicts. There's a spectrum to being homeless. There's a spe spectrum, 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 okay? So again, which shade of blue are you, right? Is Tom the light blue shade talking about prison and addiction? Or is he the dark shade blue? And then is it the other dark shade blue? It's like, okay, which ones? And then that's the problem. It's like nobody understands that we're, there's like so many, being addicted is not a monolith. There's so many different kinds of addicts. There's so many different kinds of relationships you can have with addiction. There's so many different kinds of people who go to prison. There's so many different kinds of people who are felons. There's so there's the really, really toxic kind that like don't recover and go into cycles and use it against people and actually are willing to harm people for it. There's the kind of people who happen to have addictions that will sell their children into sex slavery for drugs. Okay, Tom is one of the more, and I don't mean to downplay his struggle, one of the better off kinds. Tom got a very good hand in terms of his addiction relationship. Like Tom is probably a better off addict than other people. But then the problem is, is like if you don't, if you downplay or make sure that you're not one of the extreme cases, then people go, oh, then you weren't really even addicted. Ugh, you didn't even struggle. It's the same thing with like with mental health, oh, well, you can't be autistic unless you are like level three or you can't be borderline unless you're the worst kind. It's like, no, you can be all kinds of variations of all things and all of them are still the same. Well, not really though, because it doesn't fit my box or my narrative that tells me what you are. But there are different kinds of people of different kinds of, that's why we're always discounting people. Now, I try to give a reason why I'm discounting people's experiences, but I'm not discounting it so much as putting you in the proper category that I think you apply to, but other people don't even have other categories. Like they say, Brittany, blue is blue. Blue is not blue. Addicts are not addicts. Everyone's having a different relationship with addiction. Everybody. So you can't say like, oh, well, it's like different categories of addiction. The, pro the thing is like Tom falls into a very specific category of addiction, right? That's why when people hear him talk about it, they either don't believe him or he maybe he sensationalizes it sometimes or maybe he downplays it sometimes because each community hears it different. That's my life, right? Should I play up the fact that I'm a sex worker or just like be honest about it and say like, yeah, dude, I do new work. I always have. I love nudity. I do it for free, but who cares? It's like, or should I play it up and be like, oh, I'm a sex worker and like it's so difficult and like the system's against me. It's like, I'm a privileged sex worker, bitch. I'm not going to pretend I'm like the kind of sex worker that's in real life sex work, in real life sex work and it's battling a completely different version of sex work, right? And then some people would say, well, Brittany's not really a sex worker because all she does is post nudes online. That's not sex work. Exactly. We're all talking about different shades of blue. Um, okay, I'm going to write this down. Okay, hold on. Let me get the 
Humble's not scared. I go live. Okay, they're setting up can tech. See this? Yep. Um, and if so, let's make sure you guys can hear it. Wow, it looks so cute. Can you guys all see it? Can you hear it? Some mm -hmm. of the most important changes. Yes, 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 yes. We're good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Changes that you made right up the Fuck hop. Me, I can't. Oh my gosh. Brianne says you make me feel emotionally heard. That's let's go. I love that. I was like a compulsive liar for, for sure. Like literally. Okay. So not pathological. He identifies as a compulsive liar. Very different in my mind, but okay. But just do it without thinking. Like, Lots of people do that. There's a whole TikTok trend talking about it. Oh my God. Like, why did I compulsively lie? Like, why did I say that? Like some people, like there's a whole thing on how I met your mother where Robin starts off his, her first date with Ted saying, I think she doesn't like olives or pickles or one of those. And like for the whole series, she just keeps this lie up because she doesn't know how to unlie. Lots of people have those stories, guys. I hate to tell it to you, but. Like on yeah. accident, like um, sometimes. And so when Hold I. Hold on. I, my, my stream I can't hear working... it. I'm so sorry. Um, give me like one second and then I'm going to back it up and then we'll go. It from is kind of quiet on here. I don't know if you can turn up the video. I probably. Teching. They're doing tech stuff. Tech stuff. Okay. Let's try 240. I'm blue. Uh, da, blue dee, da. Like, right out the hop. I was like a compulsive liar for, for sure. Like literally would just do it without thinking like on yeah. accident, like, um, sometimes. And so when I, I, I was working, um, I think at a subway at the time I was running a subway. I remember like mm -hmm. actually telling my boss something and seconds later being like, shit, dude, I don't know why I just lied about that. That was stupid. Like I, I literally just made that up. Hold on. I want to hear that again. I remember like mm -hmm. actually telling my boss something and seconds later mm. being like, Shit. okay, so it doesn't specify the something. Ingrid says JSTOC is too stupid to understand the difference between the word compulsive and pathological. I'm not convinced he's stupid. I'm convinced he is purposely in the game to smear people and to lie about people, but he could just be stupid. I mean, he could be. If JSTOC is dumb, then like I totally get it, but I don't know if he's dumb or if he's doing it on, I think he's doing it on purpose, if I'm going to be honest. I think he might be malicious. I think he might be a malicious actor in this sphere. And I think he's trying to fuck people over in order to like make drama content. Because guys, there's got to be that category of person. There's always the category of person that predicates their whole time online to being like really, really toxic. Chud Logic, JSTOC, they're all kind of like together. If you're a drama, like a real drama streamer, like all you care about is like telling the worst lies about people or smearing people or tearing down then yeah, like you're, I just think like they fit into that category probably. It dude. I don't know why I just lied about that. That was stupid. Like I, I literally just made that up my bad. And, uh, them looking at me like I was the freaking weirdest person in the mm -hmm. world. <laughs> so embarrassing, dude. Would but... they be like small little white lies or was it everything? Like they would be both small little white lies and big lies to get out of like situations. Yeah. Sometimes it wasn't even like big lies to get out of situations. It would just why just like just for something interesting because i enjoyed the game so like when i was selling drugs and all of that there was just it it was part of the game is to like manipulate everybody else around you so we had a crew yeah it's called politics that's why people who are in politics i look at you suspiciously because that's what you're doing when i listen to youtubers behind the scenes or people in politics specifically political youtubers that's what they're doing they're absolutely manipulating everyone. They're lying. They're getting people on their side. They're emotionally manipulating. That's why I don't like that bubble. That's why I left politics. I'm not like you people. I just, my values don't like it. I don't want to play this game with you. I don't want to forge D chess you. I don't have to think about what you're tweeting or whatever. Oh my God, you're so anxiety inducing. No, but that's what these people are doing. And they think we're all doing it and we're not. And that's the problem. They think everyone is doing it because they're doing it. That's why I don't want to engage with these people because I'm not doing that. I'm literally not trying to play 40 chess. I'm not trying to DM people and get on other people's sides. I'm literally just trying to live my life. But we weren't like, we were always trying to get over on each other as well. And we were always trying to backstab each other. And um, we were also doing like different, um, I tell stories about like where there were other drug dealers that I was friends with that, I would get my girlfriend to tell them we broke up and see if she could go over to their house. And then she would go over and hang out with them. And then she would text me and be like, hey, their drugs are in this spot. And then we would pull up in SUVs and like SWAT uniforms and break in and take all their drugs. And 
uh, and leave like we were the police and um, crap like that. And so, yeah, we were always like trying to get over on one another as well. And so it just became normal to always lie to one another, to always try to uh, get over on one another. And eventually you were just like streaming. Ripley says, Brittany, I think there's a shade of blue of politics that you engage with. Yes. So I engage with like activism, donations. I engage lightly in like researching for my own. Vo I'm a voter. So of course I engage in politics as a voter, but I don't engage in politics, meaning like playing politics with people. I don't do that. But that's a game I used to be in and I just couldn't handle it. It was too toxic, way too bad. Nobody was interested in getting better. It was very ugly, like lots of ugliness, just ugliness from people. The worst side of people comes out in politics when you play political games. Um, but the way I engage is as a voter, of course I engage in politics. I'm a voter, right? Like I vote. Webs that weren't even connected to something in hopes that they would be connected to something way later down the line that would help yeah. you. And so, yeah, you just ended up lying for, for no reason sometimes just thinking it might yeah, be Yeah, I can't imagine. Some... Okay. I'm guessing that's the end of the clip, right? Mm -hmm. That was the clip. He's telling a very normal story. I think we've all had stories about our teenagehood or our life. Everybody I know had like a chronic lying teenage phase because like, you know, you just like lie to adults, you lie to authority, like who the fuck cares? Okay, you go through your life, you do your thing. Everyone's got a lie they've told, right? He just told a very normal story about a person in a position in which it makes sense. And like 17 years ago, 18 years ago, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, 10 years ago, just like a different part of who you are, right? Uh, there's the whole thing about him doing the SWAT stuff as well, which was, unless that was in That's there. That's what I just Again, talked about. CJ Sock goes, what about all this, the SWAT stuff? And he goes, I just talked about that. Quite, I'm not really following all, all along that much. I've seen he it. Goes, I'm, not, I'm not really following along as much. Like, JSOC is just like the worst category of person. Everybody I meet who falls into JSOC category, Chud Logic category, like a very specific category. I'm like, oh, you, you're the cesspool. You're like the virus. And all of the already traumatized communities that go in and make it 10 times worse for everybody. Before, though, so. Okay, okay. So um, I feel like, I, so basically, just so you know what I saw, Jay, he basically, um, he mentioned the SWAT stuff there, how he would, like, call SWAT on his bros and his and whatnot um, and, like, pretend that there's, like, a drug bust so that they could, like, reach in and, like, get the drugs. We used to dress up as SWAT and break in, like, fuck with. I bet it was also, like, I don't know if you guys grew up, like, like you do things, but then it depends on like what version of the thing you're doing again. What shade of blue are you engaging in? Cognitive dissonance. You said, do you, did you have a boyfriend from Canada? No. Did you? No. Where did that come from? Why did you think that? Is that to me? Are you talking to me or somebody else? That's so random. I have not dated anyone from Canada. That would be fun though. I hear Canadians are great, but I'm married. So never mind. That would not be fun. With them, I think that was, we used to dress up as SWAT. That's what I heard. Is that the SWAT stuff you're referring to, Jay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay. Um, what's the purpose in this clip? Maybe you can explain uh, this to me. I'm not to understanding. To point this. out that he's making up stories that are so unbelievable that literally nobody believes him. Literally nobody believes him. Nobody thinks okay. that actually happened. Literally nobody thinks that actually happened. This is completely made you, up. You don't believe that drug dealing addicts were pretending to be SWAT to break into steal each other's stuff. Yeah, I'm just like I don't believe he was a cat burglar who stole a bunch of jewelry from people. He doesn't believe anything about Tom's life, but instead of just saying that, he spreads rumors, he gets people against him, he puts on trials. Why are we even having this conversation? People aren't, like they're allowed to not believe you guys. Just ignore them. But see, JSTOG doesn't do this. People in the space don't do that. They do like trials. They're like little witch hunters. These people are like literally the worst kind of people. Like, why didn't you just say, in my opinion, I don't think Tom is telling the truth. Okay, cool. Bye. But he doesn't. He puts on like crucifixions. He like tries to like paint Tom in a light that's like not accurate. It's like he, that's what I'm saying. That's not normal. Not, let me rephrase. It's pretty normal. It's not healthy. Healthy people do not like, Without evidence, smear people. Even the evidence that Jay talked, he's Amber Heard. He's Amber Heard, bro. He's literally Amber Heard. The same evidence like Amber kept trying to use just like solidified Johnny's like innocence in a way, because I know it's a spectrum, in so many ways. It reminds me literally, this reminds me of like a very specific category of people where they their evidence proves Tom is right. 
It literally, literally exonerates Tom. But JSTOC is like, well, I just don't believe him then. Well, then just say you don't believe him. Don't say there's evidence. Don't say there's tons of people. It's all a lie. Aside um, from his parents. So as somebody with who's worked in the addiction field, I'm not going to lie. None of this is like really shocking to me. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if it's true. Um, I've definitely been experienced to my clients doing significantly more extreme things. Uh, sure. Then this. Let's let's go yeah. beyond the addiction stuff then. Um, Tom, can you tell me about your work? Oh, that's not working anymore. So let's do something else. Once you get down to it, there is nothing actually to paint Tom as anything other than like a normal person who's just having normal people problems. He's a rhetoric coach. Okay. This is other my other favorite part of the construct. So you know jobs are made up. So I'm just going to preface this. He's going to make the claim that Tom lied about being something he's not. Okay. Do you guys know the meme on TikTok where it's like, how do you have a different title for um, like your job to make it sound better? You know how people do that? Okay, I did this when I came into YouTube. I asked my priest friend, I was like, I need a job title for my job because I don't really know what it is and people want a name for it. So we made up a job title, professional conversationalist. I've moved away from that now because I just want to do a YouTuber stuff. But people want me to have a title. They're like, hey, what's your title? People really like titles because they like categories, even though they don't actually acknowledge they like categories the way my brain does, right? So Tom comes up with like a way to explain what he does that sounds better than probably what it is, but also pretty normal stuff. But look, look at the way JSTOC is like, did you make up a job? Hey, JSTOC, all jobs are made up. I don't know if people know that things are constructs. They didn't exist until we decided to make them a thing. And that's what people don't want to talk about. Which shade of blue are we talking about? Jobs are made up. They are made up ideas. Some of them have rules associated with them, like doctors, right? But in general, like jobs are made up. What's the difference from a nanny and a babysitter? In my bubble, huge difference. And other people's bubbles, no difference, right? In my bubble, oh my God, a nanny is complete. A nanny is a salaried worker. And a babysitter is someone who might show up once a month to babysit your kids on a date night. But in other people's bubbles, they're the same thing, right? It, there is no job called a rhetoric coach. A rhetoric coach is a label that I made up for fucking streaming where I was going over debates and coaching people on rhetoric. Yeah, because people want you to have a fancier title instead of just calling yourself a YouTuber because they don't think YouTuber is a job. And then you can like, that's what like people do is they branch out into different, that's why I'm like, just stick to YouTuber. Yes. The, okay, the, you never intimated anywhere that you were paid to be a rhetoric coach? No. The job that I worked was in linguistic marketing for franchisees that owned a bunch of different restaurants. And in that, yes, that's like the the job, the only job that you could uh, refer to. But no, I did not get paid. Um, hold on. Da, da, da. K says JSTOC speaks with such confidence, then confidently admits his ignorance in the situation and people still listen to him. That's what I mean. The people that watch this guy and are consistently watching him and consistently collabing with him. I'm looking at you with a raised eyebrow. I am. That's why I say it takes two to be in a toxic relationship. If you're willing to engage with JSTOC, there is a part of you that either hasn't learned or is new to his content or is just as toxic as he is. I blocked him, by the way. He's blocked. I don't want to engage with him. Oh, I should block him on Twitter too. I'll block him on Twitter. I'll remember. Okay, I already blocked him on YouTube. I'm going to block him on Twitter. I don't want to engage with you. Okay, because I already know what kind of category of person this is. And nope, the rule is do not engage with these types of people, right? Do not engage. They are insane. They're a version of insane because they're willing to go this far. Natalie says, is this literally a panel on Tom's character or something? Well, it started off with a private conversation on stream between Erudite and Tom. And then it turned into this, um, which is fine. Like, that's fine. You know, so here we are. To be a rhetoric coach. I coach so people. You don't think you misled people politics. about your qualifications and your job titles when realistically you were basically assigned to teach new Pizza Hut employees how to upsell combos? Not new Pizza Hut employees. And not oh, it was Domino's. Sorry. Not... It, it, First off, is this something recent? Sorry, is, the rhetoric coach stuff, is this something that you've promoted? Just because I have no context for any of this. So what, Jay, are you talking about something that he's promoted like since starting streaming and stuff? Like, is it a service yes. or what's the rhetoric? Okay, so yeah. since he started streaming, he probably uses a stream to promote the service as well as like a rhetoric coach 
Um, and oh, what no, is he? This was him saying he had experience as a rhetoric coach. That, oh, in the past, basically he misled people on his qualifications. Okay, to- people misleading you on purpose, and then people not knowing what they're doing, kind of figuring it out, misspeaking, using different words, totally different. J Stock misleads people on purpose for views and clicks. But he wouldn't see himself that way, even though that's absolutely what he's doing, right? He's misleading this whole conversation around Tom. So we think he knows something we don't know. But every time he's proven wrong, he goes, okay, but what about this? And then every time he's proven wrong, he's like, what about this? And every time he's proven wrong, it's like, well, what about this? He doesn't have anything. So he misleads the conversation, right? Derails it, doubles down, recontextualizes, right? So again, like he's saying Tom misleads people. Okay, all people on some spectrum have misspoken, misled, confused, spoken incorrectly. All of it, all of, we've all made mistakes. There's a difference between being a person who consistently has a pattern of misleading people, which Jay Stock exhibits, and a person like Tom, who like tends to fall into a very normie bubble of like, you know, casual lying or lying for like protecting your like personality or privacy or parts about yourself, like is very normal, right? Like Tom falls into a very like normal pattern of human behavior to me. Jay Stock is the one who actually stands out and projects that onto other people. So people don't think he's the one perpetrating the the issue, but he is the misleading character. So Jay Stock is that category of person who is the misleader, but his misleading is to convince you other people are the misleaders. But he's actually the one exhibiting the pattern. To do oh certain goodness. things and be like uh, his professional qualifications, the titles he's held in order to make himself seem better. This is just okay. not, and yeah, so, this just isn't true. So, I've always been very clear. I don't have qualifications. I don't have a degree. I would never call myself a linguist because I don't have a degree. I literally had this conversation with Kyla on stream when we were talking about the differences in, in how she was kind of uh, getting in trouble for like degrees and shit like that. And I talked about the fact that like, yes, I don't have a degree and I've never claimed to be any sort of authority, but I have a job where I bring it up. And because it sounds super official, people mm-hmm. start putting some sort of like idea that I'm. That's very normal. Everyone does that. They, th- This is going to come up later in the conversation where people will hear a label and think it's much more important. Oh, you're someone's friend. Oh, you're someone's boyfriend. Oh, you're someone's partner. Oh, you're someone's lover. They put a lot of responsibility on those words, which in other bubbles, they don't. So that's going to come up later with Tom where people like labels means a lot of assuming this, this part of the internet is so bad at just assuming. They're making an ass out of them and you, them and me, whatever, however the saying goes, because they are so assuming. They never get real clarification because they're just too dumb. I'm telling you, this space is just filled with the dumbest people I've ever seen in my life. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. I just don't think you have the information you have. You are obviously unread. Like I do not believe any of you have any life experience, right? There's no way, by the way you talk, you tell me you have no life experience. I don't believe any of you. Minus Tom and Kyla and the people I like, like Wick and everybody else. But everybody else in this space, okay? Don't think I'm talking about you, but I might be talking about you. Okay, that's another thing in this space. People hear me say that and think, oh, she's talking about me. I'm probably not talking about you, but I could be talking about you. Okay? I might be talking about you, but I'm probably not talking about But I could be. Okay? I know what I'm talking about, but even if you go like, I have it even on the, I have a bunch of clips of it. I have a, on the, the, like the doc about gender where literally at the beginning it says like, I'm not a linguist. I don't, uh, I don't mm-hmm. have a degree in linguistics, but I've just worked a job that makes, gives me an interest in language. Like that's how I've always explained it. But you've definitely brought up multiple times on stream that you were a rhetoric coach and um, not went on to clarify. Okay, could okay, you actually am that, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Label. I actually just Okay, even if he brought it up ten times in his like years of streaming, I don't care. This is a non issue for me. Most bubbles have made up jobs. You know most of the controversies that are happening in the modern world aren't real. Like they're they're not real until now. Like example, in a lot of religious bubbles, lots of religious pastors or community members or counselors are counselors, but they're not medical counselors. Even the word therapist, you guys popped a bubble for me. I always thought, this is a bubble, I thought therapy meant you had to have some sort of licensing. It doesn't. Do you know you can just call yourself a therapist? 
So if rhetoric coach is a BS title, every job is anyways. Guys, it's a construct. He can call himself a rhetoric coach and make up a job title. You're allowed to do that. You can call yourself a titty coach and say, oh yeah, I'm a titty coach. I look at titties and tell you if they're good or bad. You're allowed to do that. This is America. Red, white, and blue, baby. You can do whatever you want, baby. Okay? So again, like, yes, in a lot of bubbles, most of us are just creating jobs. So we have a title to put on something and you're figuring out how to make a job. Dog walker? You think dog walker was a job before it was a job? Don't be fucking dumb with me right now. I will spank the fuck out of you, chat. Do not be dumb with me right now. Do you think jobs aren't things we made up? Jobs are literally things we make up. Okay? And unless somebody is abusing their title in order to scam people unethically, there's not a problem with making up a job and putting a title on it. Okay? We are allowed to create jobs. Everyone's so worried about the job market? Create the job. Right? What are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Just, oh, I hear you. I just want to actually hear. And so the issue is that I'm trying to figure out is, is it reasonable to conclude that your audience would have thought that you had certain levels of education, that you leaned into it for some level of authority that you maybe shouldn't have? Like these are going to be like the main things obviously that matter. So my question is, M, since you were a yeah. viewer at the time, um, when he talked about being a rhetoric coach, do you remember how, like, did he bring it up as just like a past yeah. experience? Did he bring it up as like, no, trust me guys. Like, It doesn't I matter. It doesn't matter. He's allowed to do this. He is allowed to coach people. He's allowed to make a thing out of it. He can even sell a course. If you have a problem with that model of jobs, cool. Everyone's got a problem with some model of everything. I, this is a non-issue. It is a non-issue to create a job and to make money off that job. As long as you are not maliciously hurting your clients, as long as you are not like lying to them, as long as you are, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. This is a non-issue. I know yeah. what's what, like, okay. He would the use ladder? it as an argument defeater sometimes when there was like a stalemate and people were arguing about definitions or something like that. He'd be like, guys, I was a rhetoric coach. I understand. This is how language works. And then try to proceed from there. Yeah, but like, so? So? Who cares? Who cares? What is he impersonating? What? So? So, as an okay. appeal to authority is the way that I saw it being used. Cool. He can do that. He can appeal to the authority of his own version of what he thinks is good. If you don't like it, cool. Right? Just like, who cares? Yeah, it sounds like an appeal. To the would you agree, Tom? Or would you say like, that's a vast misrepresentation of the situation? Yeah. So the few times I can think of one time that I did it. And afterwards, I said, like, that was cringe. I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was stupid. There's other times where I did it where people like there's a specific debate that I'm thinking of where people kept like yeah Natalie says if he was claiming to have degrees or something that'd be different yeah if he was claiming to be like certified or gone to college or if he says like oh he's a master's degree or yeah like a PhD Kayla said that would be different if he was if it, oh my god I keep blowing out my own mic if he said if he was appealing to authority by saying he had like an educated background that'd be so different pushing me on like you you haven't read Chomsky you haven't read this person you don't know anything about this and we were arguing over how we come to definitions and so I kept saying like guys I know what I'm talking and by the way I disagree with Tom on like rhetoric and, and terminology the way we come to Tom terminology is cultural I think it is so specific to the bubble right so like in my opinion right like Tom and I would disagree on how rhetoric is used because he's we're talking about different shades of blue right? Bing says it's called beefing up the resume, which by the way, you're coached to do often. About like, I, I've studied this shit for a long time. I've done this. I've done that. I promise just go look it up. It's like, I'm right. You can look it up. I promise. Like it was more so to try to get them to engage with me. But I think overall in general, maybe not each and every single time I've said these sorts of things, I, I give a big long clarification, but I think in general, I've been very honest with my audience that I am not a and any sort of authority on these things. Okay. Um, and so, M. Dave, would you, do you agree that he's also done, like, the qualifications? Like, has he done both of these things, or has he really... I, I don't really catch a lot of the qualifications. It might have been more of a point before I came around the community. Uh, maybe he talked about it more then, but since I was part of the community, I didn't catch a lot of that. In the last year is all I care about, because people's content changes so much. My content changes all the time. I want to know if there's anything Tom has done in the last 12 months that people have issues with that have nothing to do with their own personal values. Because if they don't, then they need to shut the fuck up. Gotcha. I, okay. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not part of you're not the sole, yeah, you're not the sole yeah. witness. I'm just trying to get a feel how like the audience might have perceived these sort of things. Um, and do you remember, Dave, what were your, what was your thoughts about like the pathological lying stuff, like the clip that we just watched? I, uh, I, Kyla did it. Pathological liar. He said chronic, he said compuls, compulsive liar. He's not a pathological liar. And even if he was, that doesn't mean what people think it means. Like people are like, oh my God, a pathological liar. It doesn't mean that unless you're talking about that and you agree on that definition. But compulsive liar is different and very common in people around the world, at especially young ages, but it's just very common. People tend to do it. They don't even do it. They don't even think about it. They're not even thinking about it. I feel like I, I half wrote down your quote and it's pretty sure that I don't like pretty sure I, I, I'm pretty sure I was pretty accurate in what came up on there. I covered pretty much everything I said about it. Uh, it just him saying that he was a pathological liar and he likes the game, basically. He Not enjoys that I playing am the game. A pathological liar. That I was, was 17 sorry. years ago, yes. Well, See, Tom shouldn't have given that into that since he, he said compulsive, but he was a long time ago. But that's not even, I don't know if that's a. And it didn't say in the clip when he was using. So I didn't equate it with using. And I don't necessarily equate dealing with. Because he's stupid. He's a dumb person. Tom is doing an interview with Kyla about his drug use. And Dave, whoever this guy is, is the dumbest fucking piece of shit ever, literally went on and goes, oh, I didn't really associate it with your addiction. Hey, dummy. He's literally doing an interview with Kyla, which I watched, about his life story. You're so fucked up. That's such a fucked up thing to do. These people owe Tom a huge apology, but they're not going to do it because they're just like little content creators doing debate bro stuff. So <laughs> with using, I know plenty of dealers who don't use. I know that Tom is a recover, recovering pat, former user, but um, I didn't equate that with what he was saying. I don't think that had anything to do with what he was stating, in my opinion, from what I saw. Yeah, gotcha. Just, you know, I'm not, I'm just trying to get all the pieces together because I'm trying to put all of this. I'm just trying to make sense. Kyla can be a good cop. I'll be the bad cop. I'll be the baddie cop. I just want to make sure that I'm like quoting people correctly when I'm taking little notes on everything. Um, okay. Just like, just going back to the stuff. So the Sassafras, uh, the rhetoric coach stuff, I feel like I need to flesh that out a little bit more. So he's saying he leaned on the authority a couple of times and that was cringe and bad, uh, but that he actually has gone out of his way to also clarify that he doesn't have qualifications. And it sounds like you're being like, bull fucking shit. Can you, now that I don't have bull fucking shit, I said no, that uh, sorry, I'm people being had the impression from him in the past that he had these qualifications and maybe since he's been criticized on that, he started going out of his way to say, no, I, I like, listen, it doesn't actually mean what I, what I previously intimated. Which is um, fine. So when you, yeah, so when you say a bunch of people thought that he had these qualifications, were sorry, they a bunch like- of people, At least Chud and a couple other people from back then who Chud is reference. Chud, Chud, the least honest, the worst bad faith, the spiller of secrets on the internet that a lot of us aren't allowed to talk about. Chud, that Chud. Chud, really? Really? You're going to the tabloids for facts, bro? Now, don't get me wrong. Chud is smart. He adds in a few truths with the lies so he can't be taken apart. That's what good liars do, bro. Good drama channels, good liars. They add in just enough truth with just enough lies. So like, what? prove me wrong, prove me wrong. And then as you're un trying to untangle the web of bullshit, you can't help but get bullshit on your hands. So now you look guilty because there's bullshit on your hands that they put there. Referenced. I'm just leaning on Chud for that. Um, yeah. I can go open up the stream and try to find the timestamp for when he references it. But the next thing I'd go on to is probably the sock puppet accounts and then his excuses for those sock puppet accounts, the Reddit accounts. Okay, this is the weirdest conversation. The sock puppet accounts. Tom has multiple Reddit accounts. Oh my God, I wouldn't do this. Like this must mean something. Um, yeah, let's, are you I'm familiar just, with this one? I don't know. I don't actually follow drama in the space very well, so you're gonna have to catch me all up on it. The fact, and then that's a, something too. Like Kylie doesn't follow a lot of content creators, including J Stock and this Dave guy. Admit they don't watch Tom. They're not really watching him. They don't even know the full context of the clips they're accusing him of doing. I am a chronically neurodivergent online person who spends all her time researching all day. So if anything, I'm probably more in the know, but not totally in the know. But I have been following Tom. So I know everything probably related to Tom-ish. If I don't, you guys will fill me in. But literally, these people are like, oh, I just don't know. Oh, I wasn't really listening. Oh, I don't know the full context. Then why the fuck are you opening your big fat mouth? Shut the fuck up. Oh, I know, because probably most people who do follow drama wouldn't be sweeping for Tom here. Just real quick, on the Reddit accounts, there were two accounts that were kind of put up by Clayman that were said to be mine. My sister came out pretty quickly and just said, hey, that's my account. A couple weeks later, maybe three weeks later, I got a video from the other person saying, hey, this is this is me. I'm an event. I'm the person who did the Reddit stuff, not Tom. But I just didn't put it out because I didn't. So Tom had two Reddit accounts, right, that allegedly were posting pro-Tom stuff on Reddit, which, by the way, people are allowed to do, Okay. 
I have cringe friends that do that. It's hilarious. They like literally talk to themselves on Instagram to promote their products. Or like if you see those comments in my videos that are like mod, like spams, not mod, spams, they're talking to themselves. Like, yeah, it's just a cringe tactic that people use. Now, Tom is saying it is not his. He didn't do the comments. His roommate did and his sister and or his sister did. And they're both saying, yep, it was us. It wasn't Tom. So I have no reason not to believe them. But look at the way they have a conversation around this story. Didn't want to drum everything up again. I kind of kept it behind the scenes. People who had questions, I sent it to them, showed it to them. It's got his face in it and everything. Kind of my sister got harassed over the, the Reddit accounts, got banned from Reddit. Like it, they took a bunch of screenshots of her like prayer groups and were posting. And by the way, it was a drama channel that promoted this narrative that Tom was posting his own positive Tom comments. But by the way, even if he did do that, who the fuck cares? I know a certain category of people that tend to do this. Who cares? over Twitter saying, hey, this is Tom. So I kind of regretted ever including people from my real life in my community and didn't want them getting harassed over this. So for the most part, I just kept everything behind the scenes and talked to people about it behind that had any questions about it. But uh, that's. OK, OK, Twitter. Thank you to bring this up. Um, do you mind, Jay, if I send this just to <laughs> just to uh, Tom as well, just so that everyone has all, all yeah, the sure. seats? It's a Queeman thread. He knows about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured he did. I just want to make sure that. So Queeman, I don't know who this is, but apparently he's like the biggest drama dick sucking bitch in the community. I don't know. But like from what I've heard, Kyla hates him. So I hate him. But like also by his reputation sounds like he is just, oh, wait, who is that? <gasps> is that that other? No. Am I confusing him? Wait. Am I saying his name wrong? Wait. Is it that small drama channel that talked about me too? Because I have their name in my head starting with a K. Is Queeman with a K or a Q? Because the way they're saying the name sounds like a Q to me. Is that the K username? Oh my God, this is going to sound so dumb for people who aren't in the space. There is a drama channel with a K that's just like the, like they're not, they're not good faith people. I definitely was thinking about talking to them for a second, but is that Queeman? Is that the same name? Can somebody text me what name is she saying? It is that person, Queeman. Oh, I hear Q when I hear, but it's a K. So it is them. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, I know who that is. Um, I didn't want to talk to them because I noticed that they had a hate bone for people in the space. And I don't like people who have hate bones for people because I don't trust them. Because even though I disagree with people in this space, I don't have a hate bone for anybody. So it, it muddles the water. If you hang out with people who have hate bones for people, then you become associated with that, which I think is really, really toxic. Okay, yeah, I don't want to talk to this person either. They're just like, they're like a cess, cess content. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they have a hate bone for people in this space that I already have issues with, but my issues are on principle. Their issues are on hate boning. And they wanted to like try to associate me with them, like blah, blah, blah. But like I... I don't have a hate bone for people in this space for the record. It's a principled matter. It's not a hate bone. Yeah, Discord says he's horrible trying out, uh, truly out to get Destiny or try, truly out to Destiny people. Well, Destiny, he has a hate bone for Destiny, which is why I won't talk to him because I don't have a hate bone for Destiny. I'll just say it. I don't know why I'm trying to like go around it. I don't have a hate bone for Steven. I have a principled disagreement with Steven in which he does not want to continue the conversation or talk to me, which is fine. But I also think that's like very interesting. Like people don't want to further the conversation because it's a like it's a prince. Okay. So I personally don't like this cumin, whatever, cumin, cumin, common, because they have a hay bone for destiny and I don't get it. Like, why are you doing that? It's not a principled matter. If you have a principled issue with someone, that's respect like respectable. But if you don't have a principled like dis like disagreement with someone, then like what are you doing? You know what I mean? So that's why I don't like this, like that, those, those people, those drama channels. Because it's not a principled disagreement. I have a principled value-related disagreement that I'm happy to like agree to disagree on. But that's the difference. And so that's why I don't trust him. I don't trust anybody with a hate bone. No ma'am, no hate bone in here. Everyone has the active receipt that we're looking at. Um, and I'll probably just post it in the chat as well, just so people can grab it. So come in, you're getting some, some extra views on your tweet. I hope X is good too. Good night, guys. Oh, okay. Streamer Destiny, streamer and Destiny orbiter Tom Foolery has been caught red-handed using stock account to post positive things about himself on subreddits. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, yes. I so I remember seeing a tweet and I remember thinking like, so who cares? But also, it, I don't even think it's true. I was familiar with this situation. This was like months ago, right? Yeah, Goodbye. this was a while ago. ago. Okay. I thought this was more recent. Proof is shown below and this thread will detail some of the more amusing things. Fuck's sakes. So uh, that's what they keep doing. This is proof. This is proof. This is proof. None of it is proof. 
None of it is proof. They keep, being, they keep saying, oh, look, it's a dark blue. It's a dark blue, but it's a light blue. It's still blue, but it's not a dark blue. So they're like, it's blue, it's blue, it's blue. But it's like, okay, but you're saying it's dark blue when it's literally light blue. But because it's blue, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm trying to give you guys the example of colors as the categories if you're looking at screen right now. They'll say it's true, here's proof. But like, that's not proof. That's just you sharing screenshots that you think are proof. Ah, oh, Wick TV in the chat. Let's go, Wick. One of my favorite people in the space. See, Wick, I like Wick. Wick gets Britney approved. Brittany approved, Wick. Wick TV, Brittany approved. I'm being very saucy today, Wick. I'm cutting bridges with all the toxic bitches. But you're Brittany approved, so we're okay. Uh, in one post, our Destiny user asked people for opinions on Tom. This was without broadly negative, other than Tom and is all describing himself as one of the smartest people in space and that he's only disliked for not being terminally online and too normal. Um, in another, and so the evidence was that Tom pulled up Reddit on stream and he was still logged into miserable AD. Is that correct? Am mm -hmm. I remembering this correctly now? Yeah. That's like the evidence yeah, of how he owns He's account. logged into the accounts that we're talking about. What awesome is Tom? Okay, so Tom was logged into the Reddit accounts. This is this is the worst they have on him, by the way, is that he's a little cringe. Oh no, is Tom a little quince? We're all cringe. But okay, this I don't even think this is true. Tom was logged in onto the Reddit account that was making the positive comments about him, which is why they're saying, ew, Tom's being so cringe. He's making those comments. Okay, right? Renox says, Brittany, didn't you have a problem with Wick over the Merc the Perk thing? Yes, and then Wick and I talked about it and we ended up being okay because Wick and I are reasonable adults. Wick and I are reasonable fucking adults. That is why I like Wick because he's a reasonable fucking adult. We can disagree and still be completely fine with each other and change our minds a little, see where the other person is looking at. Yes, Wick and I did have a disagreement and yet we survived. Good job, Wick. Good job, Brittany. We did it. We adulted. <laughs> and, and I said, as I pulled him up, like, hey, I don't have a Reddit account. This is somebody else's. I'm just using this to do the R play stuff. And yeah. by the way, I say I don't have a Reddit account either, but I obviously have a Reddit account because I use the am I the asshole things for content sometimes. I just don't use the account. They made me a fake account. It's not even a name. I even know it's like cowboy something or dusty or something. They make you an account when you log into Reddit. So I have a Reddit account, but I don't have a Reddit account. Like I'm not on Reddit. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a Redditor, but I have a Reddit account because I use it for content. But I, I don't know how to, like, I don't know what karma is. I think it's when people upvote you. I don't even know. I'm not on Reddit, but like I have an account. I just, you know what I'm saying? The difference, shades of blue. Remember, which kind of Redditor are you? I'm not in Redditor because I have a Reddit account that I don't use except for content, which is different than being a Redditor. Like I am on Twitter, okay? But I don't like tweet at people and fight with people on Twitter right? I'm on so-and-so website, but like, how do you use the site? The shades of blue put you in different categories. So which category are you in, right? Tom is saying he doesn't have a Reddit account, right? I believe him. He's saying I'm not a Redditor. I don't have an account, but I'm logged into an account. So let's learn why he's logged into an account. I was pretty clear from the beginning that it wasn't my account. Not his okay. account. Um, so you still maintain that it's not your account? Correct, yes. He has also entertained many hypotheticals about what it would mean if it was his account. Um, okay. Law, while only you, Miserable AD, has been proven to be Tom, there's another account, you, Marilove, that is suspected to also be Tom due to talking about their faith similarly to Tom and regularly promoting Tom's content, often being I the OP I believe that would be post. Tom's sister. Marilove? Might be on Mary. Okay. So Mary's his sister. Mary, okay. Um, so I'm just going to look at this evidence super quickly. So it's a Reddit slash face. Um, it definitely looks like you're logged in. Are you saying that that was your, is your claim that that was your editor? It was my roommate. He did editing for me as well. So he had a roommate who edited for him, but it wasn't his editor. And Tom's tries to specify this many times, listen for it, and people keep associating the two. My brother sometimes edited my stuff to see if he would like it. He was never my editor. Like I only had one editor and I paid him and he was a very good editor and we had a good relationship, but he was my only editor. Even though my brother edited things for me to see if he would like editing, he was never my editor. So for me, this is a very different thing. So Tom had a roommate who sometimes edited things for him, like for online social stuff, but he wasn't his like Redditor, his, I'm sorry, Redditor, his editor. And it, like people don't know the difference, but like this is a very specific nuanced difference, but I, okay, no big deal. But yeah, he was living with me for a while and then wasn't living with me at the time. Why was he, why were you logged? If he wasn't living with you at the time, why were you logged into his Reddit? I don't use Reddit. So it's not like I would go onto Reddit and log out. So there wasn't like a, yeah, there wasn't like a time for me to go and log out of his account. Uh, and then at this time, okay. it was especially beneficial because I didn't have a Reddit account that I could use it to do the art. What is it called? Art place, I think. Art place. 
Alex says, what's the, even the point of this? Uh, they're even, wait, what is even the point they're even trying to get at? What is the end goal of this conversation? It's just the dumbest, dumbest brain rot I've ever seen on the internet. And I'm just trying to make the point that I don't think you should engage with these brain rot losers who are just out to misrepresent you. Okay, I'm not talking about Kyla and I'm not talking about Tom. But JSOC and this Dave guy, I don't know who Dave is, but JSOC definitely trash, okay? So, okay, like... This is my point is like, look at the way these people keep like, like trying to make it out bigger than it is. It is not a big deal. They did this to, they do this to so many people in the space. It's not as big as you're making it. Okay. And also like, maybe there's some room for criticism, but none of this is associated with that room. Yeah. Our slash place. Yeah. Our slash place. Mm -hmm. um, and this was because the, the roommate in question shared the computer with the same windows account that you used? The same windows account. No, he literally used my computer. Yeah, sorry. When you log into Windows, you could have like your own account. Oh, yeah, I guess. Like on, on Chrome or Firefox, you'll have like your uh, also, Not that, on Windows, 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 Windows. Yeah, like on Windows overall. Like, okay, you know, listen to this. This is the funniest part for me. Like, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So on your computer, there's like t Tom and then roommate mm -hmm. as like possible logins. That's what you're saying? No. no. And you were logged? No. No? Sorry. Okay. I was saying that like that would be obviously what you'd want to do if you were sharing a computer with somebody. But Tom no, didn't that it wouldn't be obviously what you'd want to do. Listen to JSOC. This is manipulation. Oh, well, this is what obviously you would do. Like when Vosh got leaked, obviously you wouldn't want, to have, wouldn't want to have your porn on your computer. Why not? You would think so, but I still have all my porn on my computer, like all my pictures of my stuff for OnlyFans. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have it on this computer in case it gets leaked. But also like, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, I'm not getting two computers. I don't want two usernames. I'm exhausted by even the idea. So JSTOCK is prefacing this with, yes, a normal person would want to have two accounts if you have someone editing on your computer. Why? I never did that when my brother was helping me edit. Why would I do that? I don't do that. My husband and I, like, my, why? Just use my account. Why would I make another account for you? But JSTOC does this thing where he's like, the normal thing to do is this. Why, JSTOC? Why do you think that's the normal thing to do? That's not my lived experience. Wick says it's a common occurrence. I won't speak about this event. I haven't seen anything here yet. But I can confirm that people um, gin things all the time to be mountains when they're molehills. Literally. Literally. That you might have a hay boner for JSTOC. Stop it. Don't flirt with me right now. He wishes. He wished I was obsessed with him. I'm just fascinated at his category of person, but this is probably the last time I'll actually have a centered content around him. Maybe. I don't want to promise that, actually. He's a good example of a bad person. But let's watch because this is fascinating to me. I was just fascinated with this. I have separate Chrome profiles, apparently. Just let the guy use his browser and his Windows account. I have no idea why. He yeah, claimed to use him. different browsers. Wait, if they, if he claimed they use different browsers, how would this even happen? Yeah, do we? I'm super curious, and maybe we don't have this. Do we have a quote of Tom mentioning the lack of Reddit account or the use of a Reddit account, or has anyone like found his Reddit account and found like posting at the time? Because I'd be super curious, like if we could find a, an account of Tom and him posting like same day, for example, um, that would be like a clear. And we might not like it. It's possible that we just don't have. See, that. What, who matters? Who cares? Who cares? Who fucking cares? Like who? cares if tom was cringe posting about tom is really good faith and i like him so much who cares his greatest crime is that he tw allegedly which by the way they have no proof of allegedly his worst crime is that he read it positive posted about himself oh my god who cares about pedophiles when we really have real problems to face tom positively posting about himself under a different username which by the way never happened it wasn't even proven they're not even going to be able to prove it in this call who cares i'm just curious if we do have that evidence as far as i know nobody's ever come up with anything else so those two accounts no came evidence. On to argue with me about it said pretty quickly okay i don't i don't think that you are your sister or that your sister is you that's fine <laughs> this other account i believe it's you there wasn't like a way for me to prove that it wasn't me outside of did you do we go through the actual posts and do we believe that like a roommate of tom would make these posts and See, do we believe a roommate if Tom would make these posts? Why not? Who cares? Even if Tom did it, who fucking cares? God says I'm going to go Reddit positive post about Britney. Guys, everybody go do it and then sign the posts. Love, Britney Simon. Make me go viral for bullshit I didn't even do. Please. Uh, maybe. <laughs> not Tom. Because I believe uh, not really super. I'm just trying to clarify if we have any evidence of Tom talking about it. They're trying to make a pattern that Tom is a chronic liar still. But like, this is all so stupid. <gasps> Cam Cam says, I'm going to negatively post about Britney. Cam Cam, I already got enough haters, girl. But sign it, Britney Simon. Talk shit. Be like, Britney Simon is so F, like blah, 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 blah. Sign Britney Simon.
account or like any evidence of that just because i'm just trying to like make sure that i get all the i's and t's crossed because oh, if it's possible like no if, if Queeman, because i know he's a digger if he's found tom's reddit account and he can find tom posting within like a close day before he's on stream that would be pretty concrete proof that it's probably his ult right mm -hmm. and if we don't have it we don't have it i'm just curious if because i know Queeman is like the god of receipts so i'm just wondering if he like has found anything like that and maybe he hasn't also feel free to upload gifts of me on tenor and tag them with Brittany Simon and then slap or something or Brittany Simon, whatever. I just made one last night. I just posted it on the Discord. I'm making my own gifts now. Guys, I want gifts of me on Discord, please. If you want, if you're bored, if you really are one of those viewers and you're bored, make gifts of me to post. You can make them funny, cringe, hilarious. I just, I'm excited. Again, from what he said, I was logged into that account after the sub account was discovered. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So yeah, I do know, like, just that after the posts are being made, they're mostly, they're almost entirely being made about him and the Destiny subreddit, that it is his, like, it's logged into his browser, and it's on his stream. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, and you're stating to this day that it's not your account. Absolutely Correct. not. It's not yes. your fault. And I can show you the video um, of the guy, like, claiming... Can you share your screen and open Reddit right now? This is the weirdest thing ever. Could you, like, open Reddit right now? Because Erudite wants to see if there's, like, log into different accounts, and if there... By the way, there's nothing. There's literally nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like, even Kyla, who cares? Who cares? I don't know. Yeah. I fail to understand what this would prove. Yeah. Because if you switch accounts and he has like the switch accounts like right there, um, I just have, want to see if it's there. I'm assuming it's, it might still be logged in on another browser, like depending have on. Have you unlogged browser. your editor after this debacle? I do think I eventually. Uh, it was his roommate, roommate, not his editor. Wait, 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 hold on. Have you Listen to this. Listen to what Kyla says, which is a mistake she makes. Logged your roommate since then. What do you. I did eventually so, log out of it, yes. So after Queeman pointed this, did you immediately, because my response if somebody was saying that this is an ult, and it's, I'm serious that it's not, is I'd be like, fuck, I need to like log out of this account, right? Because Kyla, and this is my only criticism of Kyla, is doing the same mistake everyone else makes. This is the only time I'm, I, I got a little annoyed. Otherwise, she did great in this conversation. She goes, oh, if that happened to me, nobody cares what you would do. We care what Tom would do. Because I wouldn't log out of the account. I would never even think to log out of the account. So now, who's more reasonable? Brittany, who'd be like, why would I log out of the account? Or Kyla, who says, oh, I would just log out of the account right away if this was an accusation that wasn't true. If it wasn't true, why would I log out of the account? Do you get what I'm saying? Why would I log out of a Reddit account if it was unnecessary? My friends and I share logins for things. Do you guys not share a Netflix account with people? Like, the thing that people do that really annoys my brain is they go, well, I would do this. So are you the arbiter of what everyone should do? Why would Tom log out of the Reddit account? I wouldn't even think to do that. But Kyla says, like, that's what I would do. Okay. Cool. She just said a minute ago that she currently sees the account logged in. No, we haven't even gotten to that point of the stream yet. She sees a account logged in, which is not the account logged in. I know so this never happens again. Did you log out of the uh, editor's account? Not immediately, no. I, I, I didn't know have, how Have you since out. then? Uh, yes, I have logged out since You have logged out since then. Okay. Yes. Can you... He is logged into a Reddit account, but it's the automatic Reddit account Reddit makes for you. Like I said, Reddit made me an account. It's not up to me. They go, do you want to make an account? And then they log you in, right? I'm super curious to see if you can just like pull up your Reddit. Hold on. And by the way, this proves nothing. So Even if he was doing this, who cares? Yeah, go to Reddit. I just want to see the account that's logged in for now. It's, it's not logged into anything. And then press login. Don't worry. Kyla's going to yell at JSTOC later. It's really cathartic. Kay says they keep engaging in his foolishness instead of calling him out. Oh, don't worry. They're going to call out JSTOC. I don't know if I want to do that with all the accounts. <laughs> all there. Yeah, there we go. See, they laugh like this indicates something malicious on Tom's end. Like nobody, Tom needs to stop doing this. Nobody is owed your private information, including what Reddit accounts are yours. That's the thing that I'm annoyed with. Tom does this thing where people ask him questions. And again, I don't give a fuck what you all think about me. You're not owed anything private about my life or my usernames or what I do, or anything about my life. You're not owed an explanation. If you want to believe bullshit things about me because it like, like works within your worldview, you can do that. But the amount of times Tom gives in to these people is so interesting to me. And I think obviously it's like, I'm assuming like a desire to like, Make sure your reputation is clear, which is fair. I just think like if people really cared about you, they would be doing this in private. But also you can't trust anybody in this space because they're all fucking drama, cloud hungry whores.
So that's a new Reddit account. I don't think he's ever been logged into this. Before. I think it's just one this. karma. Um, how do we check like the date that it was made? Do you know, Jay, or does somebody oh, know? How no, to I'm just saying it? that probably was just made right now. Probably yeah, on a profile. I'm it. assuming. So when you when you log in with a Google account, it just creates a Reddit account. Yeah, December eighteenth, twenty twenty three. So okay. back then, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so that's when the account was made. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah. It says there's one post. Uh, What's the post? There's nothing there. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. No one post. No one post karma. Oh, one post. Karma. Which means you probably commented on something and got an upvote. And so you're claiming that your editor was logged in. Does your editor have a computer? Again, roommate. But, no, Listen to this. Have a computer. Listen to this. Listen to this. Does your roommate have a computer? And Tom goes, he doesn't have a computer. Right? No. He edits for you as well. He did, he did like shorts and stuff like that for me. He helped with the- Okay, so he did shorts. He did some editing. He did have a computer. And then on the account as well, he was a mod in my chat. Yeah. And he has no computer of his own. He didn't at the time though. He was living with me because he was out of pocket. Okay. And like no laptop or anything? No. You privileged bitch. Not Kyla just the sentence it's very privileged to have a computer they're very fucking expensive with an editing software on it these things cost money like i said when my brother wanted to see if he wanted to edit for me he would edit on my computer because obviously he didn't have a computer that could run my editing software he didn't have the kind of computer that could do anything he had like a little one of those little like notebook things he didn't even have a real computer at the time so this idea of like his roommate would have his own computer he'd have his own editing software he'd have his own everything like ma'am not Kyla, just the premise, like the idea, the, the seed they're trying to plant here. Like, oh, that's weird. Your roommate doesn't have these things. Oh, I'm sorry. People are poor. Oh, I I'm sorry. People don't have access to shit you have access to, bro. Or phone. He had a phone. Yeah. He had my okay. old phone. Okay. So just he had Tom's old phone. Okay. If he had like a phone or some other medium, like why he's using your computer. To why wouldn't he use Tom's computer? That is very fucking common at least in my world, that we all use computers. I grew up with all these siblings. You think we got all computers? Or did we grow up with one fucking computer? Like, what are we talking about? Why would his friend have a computer if his roommate was literally living with him and was having a hard time with money? Why would he have a computer? I'll log in. He was using my computers regularly for, like, editing and whatever he wanted while I was at work. Okay. Okay, so Tom trusted him enough to not have to make him a secondary account on the computer, which is great, same. And he could use his computer while he was at work to do things. Wonderful. I love that. Um, okay, gotcha. Um, any... Also, th this was an arrangement they had and he didn't make the guy's own account in Windows and he didn't make his own account. In Why would he make him his own account in Windows? I've never done that for anyone. Why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just let you use my computer? I trust you. Like, I trust you. Chrome. Which I, again, strains all credulity for everybody who's ever operated on the internet, but... Hey. Yeah. My family also we, uses it's definitely my weird. My roommates that I No, see, Kyla said it's definitely weird. It's not weird. Don't let them gaslight in, you into this, Tom. It's not weird. You obviously have no problem trusting your friends to be on your computer and to do shit for you, as do I. I trust, if I'm going to let you into my life like that, I obviously trust you. You know what I mean? Like, why would I make you, I've never made a secondary account for anybody. Why would I do that? Why would I make you a secondary account when you could just use my account? I trust you. If you're already editing for me and you're already on my computer, I just, if I'm already that far, like, okay, don't let them gaslight you, Tom. Okay, this is their bubble. Everyone's bubble is different. Okay. Everyone has a different, like, relationship. And also, I'm not even logged in to my main Microsoft account and it pisses off my husband every time he sees it because he's like, why aren't you logged into your stuff? I was like, I don't know how to do it and I'm too boomer and I don't care. But nothing's weird. Nothing's weird, bro. Nothing is here is weird. I've used my computer. I haven't made accounts for any can i just be point blank is there any because i don't even care if you have alt accounts to be honest i don't give a fuck but do you have alt accounts like I have any other accounts. most people do most yes. people have alt accounts at least to like troll through and see 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 i don't have alt accounts so when she says most people have alt accounts to like see what other people are doing i don't have alt accounts i have my regular accounts i've never made an well no no let me take that back of course i've made alt accounts but currently, this Brittany, she doesn't have like alt accounts. I just have different accounts for different things that I use for different things. Like I have a spam email. I have an email that I sign up for like 15% off clothing websites. I have an email I use for work. And then I have email for I use for calls. And I have an email. Like I have all different accounts for different things. But I don't actually have an alt account where I use it. I mean, unless you count my Reddit account. But I don't, I just use that to get into, to find like, you know, stuff for work. So again, like I don't have alt accounts. But it's fine if you have an alt account. I'm just saying like it's, I don't, do most people have alt accounts? Do we, I don't have time for it, you know? See what people are saying now? They're like, they're, people block them and stuff. Do you yeah, have, alt I have account? other accounts, but at least the people around me. Yeah, if people block me, I don't try to get around it. I'm lazy. But also I have multiple accounts. I could just use one of those. 
But I don't have alt accounts. I have multiple accounts. Do you see how they're different? Do you see how they're different? Caitlin says they're telling on themselves. That's what I'm saying. I don't have alt accounts. I have multiple accounts. And I think this is different. Do they know it's different? Knew that those were my accounts like at least people close to me knew like this is my name this is my account stuff like that yeah okay gotcha but not on Reddit. um no. but there's no arrangement of this guy having like his own separate like windows or anything he just does everything on your computer yeah at right. a time okay um anything else because i know we've got the rhetoric coach we've got um this like alt account maybe not alt account uh situation is there anything else in like the pattern of lying that's going on um what else Tommy, okay so jstock is trying to come up with lies to catch tom in ready did you spend months the, in solitary confinement? You said you spent months in solitary confinement. So now he's questioning his prison time. Okay. So now JSTOC is deciding that he's lying about his solitary confinement experience in prison. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long were you in jail for? So it was, I think a total of 13 months um, between jail and state. Uh, so it's, yeah, I think it's 13 and a half months between jail and prison. And why were you in solitary? In solitary, I got attacked by guards. It depends on which time. So when I was in county, I was in solitary a couple of times. When I was in state, I got attacked by guards. My kneecap got uh, shattered. I went to solitary confinement, I want to say, for maybe. So his, knees, his knee got shattered. He had an altercation with the guards in prison. He was in and out of prison and jail. Okay. After that. Um, what, and what, what did they write on your – what was it their – Citation. For what? Um, for why they were putting you in solitary. Because usually that would be like, if they assaulted you, I... Also, I, I do think it's interesting the way they're like asking a lot of questions. But if Tom said like, I don't want to answer that, people would be like, you're lying. And I'm like, you're also asking about things that are super fucking personal. So even though someone tells a story, like I'm willing to tell the story that I got assaulted. I'm even willing to tell sort of the story, but I'm not actually willing to tell the internet the whole story. It's none of your fucking business. It's no one's business. Nobody knows the full story because it's fucking difficult to talk about. It triggers my fucking PTSD. It's fucking dip walks at my therapist, but that's when my therapist diagnosed me with PTSD. <laughs> so like, it's very fucking hard to tell that story, right? I don't tell the internet my rape story. I tell you kind of the story in order to get through it quickly to understand, but I don't tell you the story. It's none of your fucking business. But if you would like to doubt it, that's your own personal business. Keep it out of my chat. Right? Like, who the fuck are you to doubt my personal experience because, like, what, you're bored? That's what they're doing to Tom. They're doubting his personal experience because they're fucking bored. Imagine they must have at least claimed that you assaulted them. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was something like that. Tom does sort of assume guilt by going along with a pseudo trial. I think Tom, okay, this is my personal opinion, falls into, falls into a very similar category as many people on this internet on the internet does which is like needing validation from the community they want to be seen as a good community member they want to be approved of and he's just like in a very toxic workspace versus like i don't i don't consider myself a part of this space because i don't want to be associated with the way that it operates my space feels much safer like the collaborations i have coming up with different sides of youtube are more the direction I want to go in, right? Like very wholesome spaces with well intentions who believe people's stories and are trying to actually only bring like nuanced and optimistic learning to people, give people tools, help them be better, you know, and if you're going to be toxic and cesspooly and drag people down, like you do that over here, girl. And I'll visit once in a while. I'll hop into the bubble on occasion. But like, I do not want to live in this space. And like, this is not something that like I tried for once to go on the JSTOC panel with Erudite. And the way JSTOC twisted everything I said, I was like, oh, my God, I, I, this is so negative. This is not good. Like, they don't want to hear your story. They want to catch you in something so they can trim you down and then post it. I'm not interested. So again, like Tom consenting to be a part of this is a mistake in my opinion if he does it in the future. If he talks to JSTOC ever again, I think that's just like a mistake. But no problem. You do you, right? Like no judgment. But if I think Kyla, it says something about her. I think it says something about everybody in this space if they talk to JSTOC. And I think it could mean that they're, well, not everybody, but like in the way they talk, because you would talk about them casually. Like if you, if you're a JSTOC casual, but yeah, I like when I heard, um, uh, Relly, I love Relly. I love Irrelevant. But he was talking so positively about JSTOC. I was like, ooh, red flag. Why does Relly like JSTOC? 
really has been saying very positive things about JSTOC. And that tells me like that's a very bad sign in my opinion. Why are you saying good things about a guy who consistently twists things out of context and does this to like gaslight people on a consistent basis? Same thing with Lav, same thing with Mr. Girl, same thing with people in this space. Why are you doing it? You know what I mean? So like, again, you do you, peace and love. You, nobody cares what Brittany thinks. I'm just letting my audience know what I think because this is how I categorize people. I would say, oh, every time you show up, you lie about people and you make people feel bad about themselves. And every time you get pinned into a corner and proven you're wrong, you move the goalpost. Mm, I don't like you. I won't associate with you because it's not good, right? There's no good faith. So again, you can engage with them. I refuse to. So JSTOC, don't even try, girl. Don't even fucking try, girl. Uh-uh, girl. It was, it was that I was like using threatening uh, motions towards them or something, if I remember. Okay, gotcha. And so how long did you spend in solitary? Two months? I think it was about two months, yeah. Jay, is that what you remember? Or when you say months in solitary, do you mean like more than two months? Like, I believe on this stream you just said months. So okay. two months, that is technically months. <laughs> yeah, but when you heard him talk about it, did you get the implication that he was like being like, it was- I get the implication months. from when all you say months, stories no, that he brought months. up. No, 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 no. I get the implication from all of these stories that he's brought up that they're all tall tales meant to make him seem, you know, more interesting yeah. or more like he's had all of these crazy- So Jay Stock is making a huge accusation, which by the way, it's the internet. So everyone sensationalizes their life here, but he's saying Tom isn't even sensationalizing. He's straight up lying. The things that have happened, and I don't really believe any of it, but again, for people hey, I just, and I'm just going to keep bringing all of them up so to drugs, show that they all stream crazy stories. Like the, uh, okay. uh, it, the numbers or a bunch of other addicts and drug addicts have come onto my stream to tell crazy stories as well. Like this just isn't, these aren't uh, that fucking wild. Okay. Um, okay. Gotcha. 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 Anything. So in your mind, when I look at this list, obviously I, I see a potential pattern. I'm curious just like what pattern you would say you see. Like how does he tend to lie in your mind? I see no pattern. I, no, no. I see a pattern. I don't agree with Kyla's assessment of the pattern. In the end, she'll give her assessment. Hold on. Where are we? We're at 642. Okay. We're almost, well, we're kind of done-ish. We're oh, not really. We have like a half an hour more, but we're almost through it. Uh, I think he tends to exaggerate it. basically everything he does. Okay. So the accusation is that Tom exaggerates everything he does. Welcome to the internet dumb fuck that's what i'm saying this is so bad faith to be like oh he exaggerates everything he does have you heard of kai sinet like what are you talking about bro exaggerates everything he does um and with like the and by the way it doesn't it's not that he exaggerates he's gonna accuse tom of fully lying and then kyla's gonna yell at him which he deserves lying between like interpersonal stuff does it seem to you like he lies in such a way like because that would be exaggerations that probably like lying by omission or like lying by details to, like make himself not look so bad would that be how you kind of phrase the interpersonal lie stuff sure yeah so exaggerates everything he does and downplays and downplays his responsibility. Like a lot of these stories just seem to completely yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, again, there are people uh, asking why I don't know. Again, this is like 15 years ago, 16, 17. Memory is a very faulty thing. So we don't actually remember things. That's why I have to keep a calendar of my period because I don't remember when I last had my period. I have to look at a calendar, even though it happened 30 days ago and even though it happens every month, I don't remember when I have my period. I need to look at my phone. I keep notes of everything. I keep little journal entries. I keep like little like, oh, this happened this day. Like I have to remember things because memory is very fickle. And yes, we remember things differently over time. And this is a story from years ago. Even when I retell my stories, there's like new details I remember or details I leave out. Everyone hears, you guys know I tell the same stories like all the time. They're probably gonna sound different in different streams. I am willing to look at people and say, this is how people tell stories. That is a normal way to tell stories for this category of person. If you don't know that about people, you're judging people incorrectly because lots of people tell stories that way. Years ago for me, like this is all from when I was fucking like 18, 19, I'm 35 now. But yes, I don't remember each little detail, but yes, the ways that I tell these things is how exactly how I remember it. And from talking to my friends about these things and other people who were there. And, and by the way, think about how many times you've gone to your parents and you're like, this happened, they're like, no, it didn't. How many, if you grew up with siblings, all of my siblings and I have different recounts of memories. We, we agree basically, but then we'll all disagree on certain details. It's because we all remember the same thing differently. How many of you and your friends have been in a circumstance where you retell the story differently? Again, maybe someone's lying, maybe someone's being malicious, or maybe someone just sees it that way. And that's why I'm saying you got to know which shade of blue is happening. Are they the category of misrepresenting the memory to make themselves look better? Nope, this is actually how they remember it. It could be wrong, but it's also how they remember it. Or actually, they're both saying exactly what happened, but it's the different perspective. Like Zeneb and Cole in Love is Blind, 
Zeneb said verbatim what Cole said, but because she shifted the tone, it completely changed the context of the memory. But she was quoting him verbatim. But the way she heard his tone changed the perception of the memory. You know what I mean? And that is how, that is how, why it is so important to pay attention to your own trauma, your own brain, how you hear information. Remember, it, like tone, how you remember tone will change how you remember a memory. And that's why you have to be very careful. That's why when I hear, like if I hear my husband say something and I'm like, that doesn't sound like you. Hold on. Am I hearing things? Am I tired? Oh, when I'm tired, I hear people negatively. They've done studies. People who are sleep deprived or just tired or hungry see people uglier and hear their tones more aggressive than they actually are. And that happens to my husband and I because when I'm hangry and he always knows it, he's like, when have you eaten last? I was like, oh, good point, girl. Oh, good point, girl. Okay. He can tell when I'm mishearing his tone because I'm hungry. I don't mean to be malicious. He doesn't mean to be malicious. But that's why we have a wonderful marriage where we just communicate and say, hey, I love you. I think you're hearing me wrong. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Say it again. You're right. I did hear you wrong. Now, obviously, we are not punishing each other for being wrong. This is the point I really want to hit home on. My husband and I do not punish each other for being wrong. I do not punish my siblings for being wrong. I do not punish my parents for being wrong. I don't want to punish you for being wrong. In this space, they punish you for being wrong. They punish you and it's disgusting. It's not that you're trying to get better. It's not that you're trying to, you know, if you, if you show any chance of recovery, any chance of getting better, they will bring up bullshit you did 10 months ago, even though you haven't repeated a pattern, right? And again, they want like perfection when they themselves aren't even perfect. Okay, so not the people I like in the space. I'm not talking about people I like. I'm talking about all the people I'm coming out for today, okay? So again, I do not want to punish you for being wrong. I just want to ask you if you would like to recontextualize this so we can move on and be more right together or agree to disagree. But I'm not going to punish you for getting triggered. I'm not going to punish you for being wrong. I'm not going to punish you for mishearing. I'm not going to punish you. I just want to understand where you're coming from. This space does not do that. They are trying to punish Tom right now for something he didn't do or the little things he might have done, barely even an issue. They're hardly an issue, okay? But people want to punish people because they feel like it's righteous. And this is why punishment doesn't work. It doesn't work in therapy work. It doesn't work in jails. It doesn't work in disciplining your children. Punishment doesn't work. It doesn't actually help people. It only makes the punisher feel justified, which isn't even real justice. Kind of like getting details from them and talking about it over and over, like reminiscing on this shit. Like this is just, yes, this is how it is. Uh, this is how I remember all of this. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I guess I'm curious to know, because this pattern definitely looks such a way to me. Um, ooh, sorry, I'm just getting some DMs about the linguist stuff. I'm a linguist by trade. I've worked in linguistics. Okay. That is apparently from another. I just got linked that clip and I started listening to it and I'm not sure that that proves anything. But. Oh, so he didn't know the full context of the clip. So he linked it to Kyla to use it against Tom. But now he's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure it proves anything because JSTOC has nothing against Tom. Okay, well, gotcha. That's what, like, that's what I'm saying the way that I normally refer to these things. Oh, is with that, the, yeah, I'm so a linguist by trade thing. It's actually someone else saying that. Oh, but they're, they're saying I'm also a linguist by trade because you said you have a focus on linguistics, I think. Um, there's some uh, links that I can... Then. Why is Stardust in this conversation with peace and love? Why is she fucking here with peace and love? Why are you on this panel? What does this have to do with you? Why are you here? Why are you here? Um, with specific timestamps, or one of them at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, can I, I clarify the apology stuff? Me is like the the preferred. Uh, like way to say it and when i said like yes I, I like saying linguist by trade is something that i'll only like say on the internet it's like it's uh there's like a, a a fear that i would have like a degree or some sort of uh like special knowledge on a topic instead of just having experience in an area and so yeah linguist by trade is like the preferred way to refer to it these are not mine by the way of somebody else who sent these so okay yeah posh redneck said i'm a linguist by trade i'm gonna go back 45 okay 
So there's a point where like Ky Kyla pauses for a long Tom. time. He's responding to Tom. If you go up, but I, I literally like listened okay. to it and I was like, I don't have any reason to share this because it's Tom saying okay. he has like a focus on linguistics or something. I don't, I don't think it really. Oh, you mean the thing that you accused him of you couldn't find proof for? Oh, oh, oh. Wick says it kind of involved my panel as I understood it and she was on the open. She was in on the open of my stuff would be my guess. Okay, yeah, maybe. But I don't know. It all comes back to me in the end. Yes, Wick, it's all about you. <laughs> proves anything okay gotcha uh i just so wanted to point out though that this is all just on the tom lies thing and we still have to go through all of the um the sex best stuff we haven't really gotten to any of it yes exactly um so pathological liar blah blah blah, blah. um that's what i wanted to get to the apology stuff so oh, to me, me most of for the apology thing yeah the most important know. thing this is the part two that again nobody wants the realness like i don't trust kelly jean i don't trust jstock i don't trust anybody that that doesn't have a consistent set of values that is clear to me. I want you to have a real set of values, a consistency I can expect of you in terms of behavior, a thing that makes sense to me. So with peace and love, again, I don't see that from these creators. I Every time I hear them in stream, they're always changing the goalposts. They're always changing how they feel about things. They're always, it's always like, it's like working with a child who doesn't know what they wanna eat for a snack. And I'm just like, uh, no, okay, no. Like you're an adult. Just like figure out what you want. And I'm trying to meet every individual where they're at. So my judgment of JSTOC is different than my judgment of Kelly Jean. And my judgment of like anybody is always going to be specific to their consciousness. Not like I don't want to generalize like my judgment to each like everybody. So when Brittany's making a decision about what category everyone's in, I'm, I'm like picking like, okay, this is why I don't trust Kelly Jean. This is why I don't talk to Cherry. This is why this happens. This is why people because their actions like I could write up resumes on everyone's actions. And as they're trying to write up Tom's, they keep falling short of actually having proof. Now, again, Tom is imperfect. Tom and I have our disagreements. There are things Tom does in his stream that isn't my favorite, but who the fuck cares what I think? It's in my opinion, and Tom doesn't need to change his life around my opinion. Thing to me is you keep saying that you have apologized and that you tried to apologize. Did you try to apologize to Kelly? in the initial stream that you had when you jumped on just licks after you made those like inappropriate comments yeah i think that's what i just sent you that's what they said uh so something tom does that is a pattern which makes people not believe him and he does this i think uh this is the one thing i'll say about tom he he has doubtful language every time he says things so and it's because if he is too strong in his language they'll catch him in a lie but because he does it so often He's not doing it in a way that says humility. It sounds like he's doing it in the way to weasel out of getting caught. I don't think he's actually doing that for though. If I look at Tom and I have been watching him consistently for a year, I think if I had to categorize him correctly, I would say that he's in the category of person that is afraid of being seen as the bad guy, who is haunted by his past with addiction and crime, that is frustrated that he belonged to like not the greatest white supremacist groups or adjacent white supremacist groups, that he grew up Christian and has moved away from that bubble, that he grew up being a person for most of his life that didn't even feel like the real him. And now that he's the real him, he's also running into parts of the internet that don't want to see the real him. So he might be reliving some sort of like accusatory, like you're part of this group and this group and this group. Like he's made enough mistakes in his life to know that he – probably doesn't want to make another one. But the dilemma is that he'll say things like, yeah, I think that's what I said. I think that's the talk where it happened. Oh, I don't have the memory of it. But the dilemma is that if you're going to let people tear you apart like this, you should come in with the facts and no doubts. You should come in with Britney tone. Don't fucking say that. You know it's not fucking true and you're not freaking right. But Tom doesn't do that. And since Tom's not a girl, so sexism is playing a role here. Since Tom isn't a girl, Tom can't just be like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just, I can't remember. And even JSTOC tries to play that game too. The thing is, is like, he shouldn't be put on trial without a good defense lawyer. And Tom right now is a bad defense lawyer for himself. He should have had me on the panel. The dilemma is that nobody gives a fuck about the fact that like your opinions don't matter about Tom's life. Okay? Your opinions are probably deranged. Like all of the content I've seen from half these people. Okay? So again, with peace and love, his, 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 the way he talks does set a red flag in people's brains of like, are you lying to me, bro? And I think he he should stop doing that. But he probably can't because a lot of people do it out of like a desire to like not be caught. 
But that's why I hate this space. It's always just trying to catch you speaking wrong. Catch you. And I'm like, oh, girl. I mm -mm. believe that's what that is. But um, Okay, so what I want to understand is when you were talking to Kelly and just like, did you try to apologize? Just like, yes. in your, do you believe that you tried to apologize? And yes. she said, I don't want. He tried to apologize with Kelly Jean on the same panel I was on, on Wix channel. And I, that's why I said this is made up drama. This isn't real because every girl basically keeps switching their stories depending on who they're talking to. And in some circumstances, they're like, I don't even care about this. So then why is Tom apologizing? I cared about this. Okay, well, he's saying sorry. Well, I don't really care about your apology. I don't believe any of the fucking women in this like conversation. I'm so sorry. Not because you're women, of course, but because of the category of woman you are. You're doing bullshit things. And you're not owning up to it. So Tom's taking all the bullshit for your bullshit. Right? And it's just a pattern. Tom needs to stop talking to women. Okay? Who fall into this category. He needs to literally stop doing it. The only girl that I heard from that I'm kind of like sympathetic to is Seven. Because she was answering my questions in a way that I'm like, okay, fine. Right? So like peace and love to her. You know what I mean? But the fact that like Sass won't message him back, but she'll go and talk to other people, which I don't know is true. And Tom's been very good. He's been a better friend to her than she's been to him. And I don't know Sass, but the fact that Sass won't answer his DMs and clarify with him and the fact that he keeps telling people, I don't know, I haven't heard that from Sass, so I don't believe any of you, is a much better friend to her than she's being to him. Even if the friendship's over, like, I'm sorry, like I don't trust the person who's ended the communication, but is allowing people on the internet to go around saying they can speak for her. Sassafras, listen to Auntie Brittany. Don't let people on the internet speak for you. And if you're going to do that, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you letting these people speak for you, girl? Don't do that. Especially not against a guy you said was your friend. A guy that you told him to, what, wasn't it Sass who told Tom to talk to me? What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what? What is that? Something is sussy. Something is suspicious that doesn't make fucking sense. Now, again, I don't know any of these people very closely. I don't know Sass. I don't know Seven. I don't know Kelly Jean. But from what I've seen of people, something isn't right here. And it's falling on the shoulders of these women. And something isn't, something isn't right here. Now, again, Tom also comes from a bubble. And this is why I say not truly a sex positive bubble, right? Like, oh, never mind. Is Seven... Is seven, oh, wait, is seven not good? Inf Infallible says, I don't know about that one. Seven went on j Shock's stream to bury him after the stream ended, after all the she doesn't want to talk about it stuff. Uh-oh, never mind. I take back what I said about seven then. You're on my list too, bitch. They're all on my list, okay? Everybody's on my list. Okay, fine. Everyone's on my list. So again, Tom has a habit of getting along with everybody, which is great. But the problems, right, that are coming up is that all the responsibility is falling on Tom and none of these women. None of these women are taking any responsibility and I think that's bullshit. And I don't trust any of them because none of them will talk. None of them will talk honestly. Okay? So I don't trust none of them. Tom is the only one coming out and the receipts are not receding. You guys do not have enough receipts against this man to paint him as anything more than a boy. A man who's like been as clear as he can be and maybe not as perfect with language, but I don't trust it. Uh -oh. Dude, I just got out of the room. No, no, she's there, yeah, I, cut out. I cut out. She froze. She's okay. out. Um, I'm trying to understand when you went on Just Lick's thing, right after posting the comments about showing her tits on stream, she's an ethos celebrity, stuff like that. When they brought up your comments, I'm, it sounds like you did not even attempt to apologize in that. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, Tom and in Jay? the first one, no. So you doubled no, down no. and you remember that the same, Jay? Yes, we know. We don't care anymore. He doubled down with Kelly Jean, blah, 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 blah. They fought about it. Then he apologized. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then the next question is, when do you claim you made the apology? Um, and by the way, this is how I would act if this was my siblings and they were coming to me as the older sister and said, Brittany, we need a, somebody's lying. I'm like, Ch -ch -ch, which one of you is lying, bitch? And I would do this with my siblings. I would do this with any of one in my life. Some one of you is lying, either on purpose or on accident. Let's figure out what's happening, right? So I don't know what's going on, but something is going on. And it's the people that aren't talking that I'm most suspicious of in a lot of ways. Why, why aren't you talking? I want to know. You know, on, the, on this link you just sent me. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send it to Jay and I'll post it in the side chat as well. So then we should also be clear that after this, he went on stream and said, I'm not actually apologizing for anything. Right. Right. Yeah. So after this wick thing, 
You apologize. And then you did the stream. No, Why did you do see, that? JSTOC is fucking up. I watched that stream, the one Tom made, where he came out the next day. He's like, I'm not apologizing for anything. So obviously there's a difference. Okay, this is where Tom gets fucked. This is genuinely where Tom gets fucked. This is why I tell you my work is better than all your works because it is absolutely bubbles and value differences. So Tom, I watch this stream live. Tom comes on the next day and he goes, I'm not apologizing for anything, which is not to say that he's not apologizing for things he's already apologized for, which is not to say that he's not apologizing for offending Kelly Jean so much as like apologizing for the action. All these things are nuanced, but let's see. Do that. So I, there was like a 10, 15 different things that I was fighting against at this point. So I had already made those apologies. I felt like those stood by themselves. So when I say later, I apologize for nothing. I didn't feel like I was taking those away or taking them back. Exactly. He wasn't. I was watching that stream and it was not about taking things away. Either JSTOC is so fucking autistic. He needs a, like he's a caretaker or he is so bad faith and malicious. He might as well be a narcissist. I'm telling you right the fuck now. I watched that stream live. When Tom said, I'm not apologizing for anything, he did not literally mean anything. You take him out of context and you twist his goddamn words and it pisses me the fuck off because that is so bad faith. This, you, okay, I'm gonna spank you all. In any way, I already said him, said him very publicly in front of everybody, like that, yes, stood by itself. And I'm pretty sure even on that stream, I reiterate an apology. Um, so I, yeah, like, the, uh, towards Kelly and that stuff. So yes, I wasn't mm -hmm. like taking it back on that same stream. I, I reiterate the apology. Okay. Um, also, again, I'll just say that this was like a month ago. I'm kind of dying here. I don't really remember when. Things. Chrissy says, what are they accusing Tom of? Of nothing. They have nothing, girl. Zero receipts. They have nothing on him. They're just making a bullshit and they're taking it apart. It's bullshit. Sorry, I don't remember the first stream very well. So any, category, any characterizations I have on it are just going to be if I think something's wildly different from how Tom recalls it, I'll point it out. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, I don't have like a great memory of all of this at this point. That's super fair. Uh, I'm just going to listen to this apology. So Kelly says that you made an initial apology, which says, I'm sorry you feel that way, which I agree is not an apology. JSTOCs in the light, the light box, you guys are asking. Kyla's up top in the middle. Stardust is on the right-hand side. Tom is on the bottom left and the big screen. And Dave is the guy in the blue shirt. Not an apology. Um, <laughs> at all. <laughs> I, I, from what I saw, I, I did go back and forth from I apologize you feel that way for I apologize for making you feel that way. And it wasn't. Okay. Fun. Could you understand why most people, if you oscillate between those? Good Path says, why do you think JSTOC is determined obsessed with, to assassinate Tom's character? Oh, literally, I just think he's bored. I think he's trying to uh, get clout. I think that Tom's an easy target because Tom, Tom, uh, Tom is an easy target. For a lot of reasons, actually. Ooh, this could be a whole thing. Why is Tom an easy target? Um, in some ways, because Tom lets himself be. You know what I mean? And in other ways, because Tom... Tom has his own level of toxicity by wanting to engage with these people. I think... That's why I say it takes two to be toxic. I think Tom has just enough toxicity to keep talking to Lav. And just enough toxicity to talk to Mr. Girl. And just enough toxicity to talk to JSTOC in the future. Just enough toxicity to keep people like this in his life. And if he stopped keeping people in this life, I'd be like, oh, okay. Okay. But the fact that he's willing to do it mm, says to me like, mm, God says Tom seems like a pushover. I think so too. I think Tom is slightly a pushover. I do. I see him as one. I see him as a pushover. Just a little bit, though. Not a lot of it. Just enough. And especially because he wants to be, uh, I think, good to women. I think good in reputation. But I think he he doesn't, um, I think he's 10% a pushover. Yeah. And I'm not saying this exempts him. But I'm saying, like, I wish he wasn't. I'm waiting for him to say, nope, no more. Peace and love. No. Right? Not to be reactionary and say, I'm not going to talk to any girls on my stream because some of them were crazy, but to say, I'm the guy who kept talking to these women. And I, though I wanted to believe they understood the boundaries, I think he knew better. I think I could have guessed that all the girls would have reacted the way they did by the way that I understand their tropes. Sorry. Unless you're being introspective, you're a fucking walking trope. And you have your own ideas and beliefs and we're all tropes walking around. But let's be real. Some of these people, too predictable. It's no offense. Like some of these people, too predictable. And they're predictable because they're fulfilling like a trope and expectation based off their own fears and traumas. So with like peace and love, like I, if they had 10 minutes or 20 minutes, again, I will ask the questions and I guarantee you will barely have the answers. And that's what I'm looking for in people. 
close to enough are not going to feel like it's an apology. Yes, of course. Yeah. And okay. I've talked about this so, a number of times since is that, yeah, that wasn't the, that wasn't a good way to do it. Yeah. And Most also people aren't blunt. Like people aren't blunt enough to say like, I'm never going to fuck you. And I need that to be clear. But people are like, maybe if the right chances, maybe if I hang out with him enough, maybe I talk to him enough, maybe I'll be the exception. Because sometimes you hear a story like that. Oh, I was hanging out with a guy and he said we were just friends, but after a while he fell in love with me. Sure. But that's not your story, girl. That might be some people's story, but it's not yours. And that's the thing, right? That's the thing. Discord said Tom wants to do everything right, but doesn't quite know how. He seems sensitive, but also it seems like he feels like he can't show that. I also think his Coomer bullshit is a huge mask to seem less sensitive. I wonder about that. Important to me. Do you think what you did by posting those things and doubling down, do you think it was like incorrect? The the stuff in chat, yes. You're, you're talking about the okay. chat message. Yeah, yes. yeah, the stuff in chat specifically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so then later on you make the stream because in your mind you're fighting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I suspect you're probably not surprised. How do you, did you talk about the Kelly situation as well on the stream labeled I'm not sorry? It wasn't labeled I'm not sorry. I, Where did this title I'm not sorry come out? That's just like, a, I was going over like a ton of different things in this stream. Um, it, the, there was the leak like the day before, there was other problems with other things that I was mostly addressing in that stream. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think at the beginning I said, like, I want to start off by saying, I apologize for nothing. And like, I was in the midst of a whole other thing at that time. So it was, it wasn't, uh, but yes, in that stream, I believe I reiterate, like, yes, I've apologized for this. I've apologized for that. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, okay, okay. It's about to get good. It's about to get good. Okay, what is your grand ass assessment of the situation now? Just like, do you still think he's a sex pest? And do you still think, um, do you still think everything? He, uh, intentional liar? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then the. So Jay Stock is saying, yes, absolutely. Tom is a sex pest and a liar. The, um, the sex pest stuff is mostly around, I didn't realize he'd built this entire community around pulling up women's uh, pictures. Sorry, not just women, but women and men's pictures, apparently. And then soliciting chat for like lewd comments consistently. When you say soliciting okay. chat. See, 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 he said, oh, and soliciting chat for lewd comments. Okay. So Tom quickly, thank God, goes, what do you mean by that? For lewd comments. What does that mean? Sorry. You know what? I'll, I'll take that back. I won't say. Oh, something. I'll take it back. JSTOC fucking does this. He'll say something really condemning. And then if nobody says anything about it, he'll be like, he got a win in. But Tom goes, wait, what do you mean by that? And JSTOC goes, I take it back. He's a liar, bro. Soliciting chat. I would say, I would say building a community, which you admitted, that does post very lewd comments and sexual comments. Okay, I've been in Tom communities for a year, for the last 12 months. I agree, not my favorite part of Tom's stream is when he pulls up people to look at in an objectifying manner. Not my favorite part, but not related to him pulling up Instagram posts of women. Two different things. I don't care if Tom pulls up people's Instagrams and looks at them. We do the same thing. We're all like, we're sex positive. That's good. The only part about Tom's stream I don't personally like, and I usually sign off when he's doing it, is when he's watching videos of men and women being on purpose sexual for a sexual objectification, and him and his audience are looking at it. Not my favorite thing in the world. Not a crime. And most of the people being featured would probably want to be featured. Not my favorite thing, but it doesn't matter. He's not doing anything unethical. This is public posts. These people definitely want to be watched. That's why I don't like, it's not my favorite. Okay, separate, that is separate, than him looking up people's Instagrams. Those are not the same thing. They're two different categories. It's about these women or men that are on stream and, yeah. and perpetuating that culture. And, and he doesn't, his chat's fine. In general, to actually, you know when I first started collabing with Tom, I would say his chat was so toxic. His chat is so much better now. Holy crap, when I first started collabing with Tom, his chat was so fucking toxic. His chat now is like a completely different chat to me. It's so nice. It's very considerate. Even when I come on, there's like criticism, but it's much better. Tom even used to say like, Brittany's chat's being so nice to me and my chat's being so mean to her. I don't feel that way about his chat anymore. I do not. I no longer feel like Tom's chat is specifically very mean to me. It used to be. Whoever was his audience just a year ago has completely like, there's definitely been a huge growth. I've definitely seen it myself as a content creator who used to hate his chat. Now I love being in his chat. You guys see me there often. I'm always posting emojis. So I really like his chatters now. I really like whoever is watching Tom's live streams. I usually get along with them in chat now. Very proud of that culture. Okay. Um, would you agree? Yeah. Okay. So you agree that you like encourage Kumar culture in your chat? 100% yes. Yeah, I think it's kind of boyish and silly. And it's not my favorite, but like it's not the worst. It's not my favorite though. Okay. Like we um, just had like an awards thing or like Pop Coomer and like 
You know? Yeah, he's like being funny, but like eh, it's not really in style now. I think that thing used to be more popular. I think Kylie even brings up Philip DeFranco. Like Philip DeFranco used to have like a a sexy. I think Kyla brings it up here, so maybe she'll mention it. But like a sexy girl of the day or whatever. I remember that he doesn't do it anymore. It's just not what people do in 2024. It's like Tom is still living on the internet five years ago. He's got to stop that section. As much as it's not immoral, it's not brandable is the problem. It comes off sleazy like Howard Stern. And Howard Stern is only, it's, very, it's a very specific audience, Howard Stern. So he can keep doing it. But it's not that it's immoral. It's just that it's like not brandable. Stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. It seems like there's been a number of things that to be honest, it seems like at times, I don't know if you always have uh, the best relationship with truth from everything I'm seeing. It seems like sometimes you'll definitely lean on downplaying certain things. For example, when you were talking to me and just- Everybody does that. And if Kyla's going to call it Tom- I hope she calls out other people because that's the thing. It's like Tom's not doing anything different than anyone else in this space who like, okay, you want to talk about downplaying? Every time I have that criticism for people, they're like, oh, what? Okay. Like that's what's happening though. They're downplaying it so they don't come off as villainous as they might be, which is not even that villainous. I'm just saying own up to the mistake. Everyone downplays because oh, everyone up plays. So they're trying to meet in the middle. So the audience – makes everything worse than it is. And the content creator tries to downplay it. So there's some sort of balance because we can't just say it honestly because people don't have the brain to like actually, 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 actually just say, oh yeah, I did this. I'm going to make um, some sort of penance for it and move the fuck on. So the content creator feels pressured to like downplay it because the audience is going to upplay it. There's no actual like desire to actually have the real conversation and so to be fair to tom a lot of content creators do this it's just very part of the pattern me um i had basically all the receipts from the beginning i just kind of wanted to see how you were going to explain it and i do think that your first description of the situation to me definitely downplayed your responsibility and the things that people were actually upset about right it took me like prompting a i don't think people had any right to be upset with tom i haven't seen anyone yet who had any right to be upset with tom they can be they can have the right to have their feelings but I don't think any, anyone has given me anything that says Tom, they have the right to be upset with Tom. Like, I, I just don't think like Tom's responsible for your feelings in that regard. So I'm a little confused and I haven't heard the full story from everyone else. So maybe I'm missing some context. A fair bit for you to even bring up the comments about mm -hmm. you and Kelly, that you made about Kelly and stuff. And so I do think that there's the, probably this tendency, probably because you're being defensive, to probably under or omit certain little details that probably paint you in a worse way than you sure. are. Sure. Um, the issue Everyone is that, that, number one, I think Spicy has been clip chipping you, if I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. I think it's really gross that people are trying to use you talking about your addiction as anything other than you talking about Kyla is about to get so sexy. Everybody get ready. Ooh, Kyla's about to go off. About your addiction. I really, really, really fucking hate it. I think it's fucked up. I, it sounds like you have not the healthiest relationship with women broadly. Um, I'm not going to get in. That, that, I wrote a note on that and said, whoa, that's a claim. That's a claim. I would say, there's some truth to that, but the way she worded it is wrong. So I would say Kyla, I would argue that Kyla said he's like a mid shade of blue. And I would say, oh, he's more of a light shade of blue, but it is blue. I think Kyla is almost there. She's almost, but she missed it. I think the way she phrased it is not accurate. So it feels like wrong, but it's not wrong. It's just not the right shade of blue. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say Kyla's wrong. I'm going to say Kyla isn't correct yet. It's not fully the accurate, it's not as accurate as, you know what I'm saying? Into it because these, all these women would ask me not to, but in the private information that I've been given, I think that you need to be much more clear and explicit with women about the nature of your relationship with them, what you're comfortable with, but I don't actually believe that you're like egregiously in a- Okay. I think Kyla's making a lot of jumps here because we do not know that Tom hasn't been and then he has the DMs. So, so I think, I think- I think the dilemma is like, I think Tom is probably being as clear as he can be with these people in DMs, though I have not seen any of them. Tom and I are not personal friends. We are work friends. So again, I'm coming from a content creator perspective on purpose. So I'm not throwing bias around of like, whose team am I on? Okay. And from my understanding, unless I see those DMs, I'm going to say, by the way, Tom tells the story, he's probably telling more of the truth than the DM girls are claiming. But he says he has the DMs to prove he's he's correct. I have a feeling he communicated to the best of his ability. And people still, because you know why I think this is because of Zonia. The way Zonia did her manifesto tells me Tom is probably more likely to tell the truth 
Kazonia was unhinged, inappropriate. Her and Sass were definitely talking together. And it tells me that the way that they decided to do what they did is they're probably more in the wrong than Thomas. And Sass won't return Tom's text messages from my understanding, which tells me Sass burned the bridge and won't communicate, which tells me she's probably in the wrong. I could be wrong, obviously. And again, I've never seen any of the proof of this. I'm just going off of the evidence I've seen and what I know about people and their categorization. Tom is less likely to be lying than Sassafras and Zonia because I already know Zonia's lying. Un unintentionally, Zonia's just really, really twisted, right? So she doesn't even know she's doing it, but she is lying about Tom because she's being incredibly inappropriate. Stardust, assuming that Tom and Mantis owed Stardust any information on their relationship, super inappropriate. The way this whole space assumes that Tom owes them any explanation, super inappropriate, right? Especially in a space where people are allowed to, quote, block and burn bridges all the time without any explanation, so inappropriate. So in terms of consent, no, everyone is so inappropriate in this space with what they think they assume they should know about people. But also you got to respect people's consent. So we got to respect Sassafras's consent and not wanting to talk to Tom. That is important. But Sass has to understand people are talking on her behalf, which I think indicates she could be lying because she's not willing to do it herself. But she could also be suffering from the pressure that people are putting on her. So to be fair, we got to respect her consent and say she does not obligate it to talk herself. But Tom, being the good friend he is, is also not assuming Sassafras is saying any of those things because he hasn't heard it from her herself. As far as Tom is concerned, even though it's kind of changed now, they ended on kind of good terms. But now he's aware that she might be mad at him, but she, he doesn't actually know why. And I think Sassafras probably did misunderstand their relationship because Zonia did. Like Zonia misunderstood appropriate boundaries with Tom by making claims that he's changed and as his close friend she would know but your close friends don't always know when you've changed they can also be biased like I don't know how you don't know that your close friends also have their own bullshit to deal with your close friends are also a subjective concept I don't even know how close Zonia and Tom are does Zonia know his family do they know their inner workings do they know like you know what I mean I don't know that Mantis says she's obligated after leaking shit behind the scenes. Did did she leak things behind the scenes? Is that true? You know what I mean? I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen any of the sass leaks, so I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Appropriate with women. Um, can I, I'm sorry. Always I, and broadly. That's that's a bit of a statement. I Can I get okay. some sort of justification for that? That seems... Uh, I My understanding is that... Good for Tom for standing up for himself. You are... In flirtatious relationships with women, it's not always clear to them the like nature and the dynamics. I don't want to go into it, but just to be clear, I don't think you're a sex pest. Okay, I, I think that that is a very big assumption on Kyla's part, to which is fair, to assume that Tom is like inappropriate flirting or hasn't laid down the grounds or hasn't put down appropriate boundaries. I know one person example. that people have said this about. I have a, a whole host of DMs proving that that is just not the case. Well, well wouldn't one example be, be Mantis? Mantis. Mantis says she leaked Tom in, in um, Tom's DMs. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, my God, Discord. That's a good gift you made of me. This is a lie. This is inaccurate. Oh, girl. Discord be making good gifts. I love you, Discord. Thank you. That's so good. I love it. Um, I want to see the DMs. I didn't get the leak. Somebody, did the leak prove anything? Because Tom, if Tom is sitting on a bunch of leaks, I don't think he should leak them. But I think that, you know, I probably believe that he is. You know what I mean? Um... Okay, let's, uh, hold on. Oh, listen to what Stardust just brings up now, which I think is also fucked up. Calling you. Of DMs proving that that is just not the case. Well, wouldn't would one example be Mantis? Mantis calling you her boyfriend? Like, wouldn't that be one example of this where that is not clear? And then you on the next day on stream saying, no, don't call her my girlfriend. Well, um, I, I, I was saying, I don't have a problem with her calling me her boyfriend. I'm talking about the ways that this, like, uh, projects a specific type of relationship on a stream. She, If she calls me that, that's fine. But it's like, the problem that I had was that people kept, like, projecting this intimacy and this, like, long-term relationship that just wasn't actual. This is what this space does. That is, I've never had any other space do this because it's like a very inappropriate thing to do. And what they do is they project a lot of importance on a label that is inappropriate. Oh, you're their friend, Brittany. Their friend. Tom has a girlfriend. You know, Tom and Mantis have a personal relationship that could end tomorrow and it wouldn't mean anything. Just because they're boyfriend and girlfriend or just because they're lovers doesn't mean anything about their closeness.
Y'all have never had a casual hookup and it shows. But like literally they could be the closest or they could have an, uh, maybe they're getting to know each other. Why are you making so many assumptions about their relationship? It sounds to me they're in a newish relationship that is slowly moving towards a direction. If that direction is a breakup, none of our business. If that direction is marriage, none of our fucking business. But we are literally putting so much, I heard they were like doing something together and I went, okay, cool. Adults, intimate, none of my business. Are either of them married? Do either of them have children? Do any of them have spouses they're cheating on? Don't care. Do any of them have responsibility? Don't care. Are any of them? Don't care. You're a fucking adult. You're allowed to engage. Tom and Mantis are adults. Okay. If they are boyfriend, girlfriend, great. That doesn't mean anything. It's just a title. It doesn't mean anything. I'm so sorry. We're not in high school anymore. It doesn't mean anything. We're lovers. So? Like, so? Even being married to people, what kind of marriage? Maybe it's just for a green card. So I want to know what the detail, what category of boyfriend, girlfriend are you? What category of intimate are you? What category of married are you? Plenty of married people be out here cheating left and right. Obviously, they're not very close to their spouse. How are you going to say I'm close to my spouse? I care about them, but also I'm going to cheat on them. Girl, shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Okay. So again, okay. I'm very close. They mean every... Okay. Mantis says we're adults, but out. Literally, none of my business. But the way Stardust is saying, the way that I remember hearing this, how Tom's like, she's not my girlfriend. But he didn't mean it like I'm not with Mantis. He meant it more like you're you're giving me a pressure that I didn't ask for. for. And that's what this space does. Stardust is doing it right now. She's adding on a pressure because she's misunderstanding that Tom isn't saying Mantis isn't something specific to me. He's saying that you're adding context to these words that don't feel appropriate for the category we're talking about. So Stardust is saying, but you guys are blue. You're dark blue. And, and Tom's trying to say, no, we're light blue, but also we're still blue. And they're arguing about the shade of fucking blue. Like wasn't reality. And so, yeah, I didn't like the, the ways that people used labels to kind of like add this, uh, this like grander but, relationship than what was actually there. Sure, but she's the one who used that, that, um, that label for it, right? It seems that she was under the impression that your relationship was that way. I, I, from what I understand, that's the way that everybody else was referring to her. That's just the way that she referred to herself. But that's, uh, it's not like a, a huge problem for her to say that. Sure. Wasn't so maybe to clarify. Her and I, because I can promise you, her and I have had the. I fucked it up. That there is not confusion. Okay. So I trust Tom here. Mantis is in my chat. If Mantis wants to give a thumbs up that you and Tom have talked and you're on the same page, I trust you. I also think it's okay for you guys to have a messy breakup in the future or a positive one. Because if you guys break up, it's probably going to be drama filled because breakups are hard. But also it could be really normal or they can get married or they can have 10 kids to get. It's not up to us. But Tom is saying him and Mantis have talked about it. I believe this. Now, whether or not Mantis and him have a good relationship or a toxic relationship or a good, it's none of our business. It could go either way, right? Keep in mind, Tom is being held to a very specific standard that I'm not sure you would hold many other people in the space to. Why are they holding Tom to this specific standard? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Between either one of us. Sure. So when I say that, like, um, you don't have the best. Mantis gives a thumb up in chat. There. We're done. Everyone shut the fuck up now about whether or not Mantis is on the same page. Relationship with women. I think that that probably implies a lot more than I'm trying to say. So I apologize if that seems like really, really strong. Well, it was more I so do not think the, you're a sex pest. The labeling of the relationships or that, like, I could lead people to believe something. Whereas, like, I promised it. if I don't chance, know if I that's true. I don't that know if that's true. not the case. Like, yes. I don't right. want to leak things. For me. So because I don't yeah, no, want to leak things, it. but I'm happy to send people things behind the scenes. So the reason that I'm saying this is when I... Oh, send them to me, Tommy. Send them to me, I want to see. Do you like a consistent pattern of confusion about these types of dynamics? It suggests to me that like probably more explicit conversation is going to be needed. And it's possible that your burden as a streamer means that you have to have more autistically explicit conversations with women. But the fact that there's been like a number of individuals that have been like, that seem to be somewhat confused about the nature of the dynamic probably just means that you need to clarify that a little bit more. But I disagree. I blame the type of people he's picking. More than his communication style, I blame the kind of people he's picking. I do. I think he's, I think he's trying to give people a chance, but I think if he categorized people, he would see a pattern in the people he's choosing, more or less. But also, maybe it's his communication style, but I'm not sure. Right? Because lots of people think you're just friends and then someone's secretly harboring, that's the thing. Was Tom leading what's her name? Sassafras on? Or is Sassafras a friend-zoned person who was hoping one day Tom would love her? 
We don't know. I don't know. Was Tom leading Sassafras on? Was Tom leading anyone on? Or was Sassafras confused and hoping one day he would pick her? I don't know, because Zonia was super inappropriate. And if Zonia and Sass are on the same team, then I don't trust neither of them. Because again, the ways Zonia came for Tom was inappropriate. To be clear, I've never been made to feel uncomfortable around you. Uh, that doesn't mean other women haven't, but I certainly... I have never been made uncomfortable by Tom. He's only been professional. You haven't. And it also seems like you have really good relationships with specific women. Um, I also think what's happened is there's been an absolute aggressive kind of like confirmation bias. Slap. Keep in mind, Kyla and I are considered healthier types of women. So just to throw that out there, Kyla and I are the healthier spectrum of friends Tom has, internet friends Tom has. Keep that in mind. Smear campaign from individuals that are being absolutely unfair to you. Sure. Um, I think uh, bringing up the pathological liar clip, even the way that De Imp Dave has talked about it, he keeps talking about it in present tense when the mm -hmm. entire clip you were talking in past tense and it is obvious exactly. if you watch even 30 seconds that you are not glorifying this behavior and you don't think it's good. It is possible that just because you are recovered now that you might still have a behavior pattern left over where you might slip into being like sometimes a little bit tenuous with the truth, which is why I'm saying that might legitimately be a little bit of an issue. I'm not super sure. However, I think that people painting you as this like sexual predator pariah is just so beyond the line not okay and way more egregious than is re realistic. And I think it is actually so wrong that people are using things like, well, he said that they're lying and they said that they're lying, but we don't really know. Um, I want to make sure that when you talk about like nature's relationships, obviously you need to make sure that everyone's on the same page and it's possible that maybe you're missing like subtle cues. Um, Why is the responsibility on Tom? Right? The only, see again, I agree that he's the singular part of the three trio, but Tom, I think is picking, again, if everyone around you is crazy, turn a mirror around. If all your friends are toxic, turn the mirror around. Right? So that's my take issues with that. See, I feel like I am very good at this. Like, I feel like I am very good at it. And it, like, I feel like I make sure that people understand that I consistently have conversations with people that like, these are things that I worry about a lot. And I, yeah, I like, I, that's the only reason that, yes, that I would want to keep pushing on this is because, yes, I, I feel like in any case where people would bring this up, I feel like I can be there, like, prove that yeah. this is just not Yeah. Place. So when I'm saying this, I guess I want to put it in the couch of, I am not confident that if we, like, hyper, hyper artistically analyze everyone's dynamics in this space, that we wouldn't always find issues to exist within there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they would be the same nature. However, I really do believe that people were drumming up a lot more content than was necessary, and I think you were really bad at PR. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sure. Fucking horrible at PR, and you should have never said those things about Kelly. Ever. <laughs> just... It, Again, Tom is being held to a higher response, uh, a higher uh, threshold than Kelly is. Kelly says shit that is far worse, far more than Tom does. So again, th I think there's a little sexism at play. I'm going to call it. I think there's sexism at play. I do. I think they're going after Tom more because he's a man. And I think um, they're going after Kelly Jean a lot because she's a woman, but for different reasons. They're holding Tom to a higher standard, which is very interesting because Tom is probably one of the most uh good faith people in the space interesting why is kyla doing that why is anyone doing that why are they holding because probably actually probably because he knows better yeah probably that probably because they're holding everyone to a lower standard because they're meeting them where they're at and they're holding tom to a higher standard because i think tom might be worth that standard but tom is being held to a much higher standard which is either kyla insulting everyone else in this space or kyla being super unfair to tom you know what I mean? Hmm. It doesn't matter if she does like sexy stuff online. If she says she's not comfortable with it, rather she's not comfortable with it. Well, it's kind of the end of the conversation. No, uh, it's not the end of the conversation. He doesn't have to maintain a relationship with Kelly Jean. I think his mistake is wanting to maintain relationships with everybody. He should start burning bridges. He should start putting down boundaries for himself, not other people. You know what I mean? I know Tom and I disagree on like what boundaries are, but like, okay. Um, I think people saying that the high stories are a lie. We have no way to know. I think people being shocked about you imitating drug dealers, and, sorry, swap people to fuck over other drug dealers and not believing you have no idea about addiction. I just don't even know what to say to that. Um, and I also think that smearing you based on like your past that you've tried to overcome is really, really, really fucked up. Just to be super clear. Um, I do believe that Justlik has engaged in a fair bit of confirmation bias, but he's also picked up on like, mm, this seems a little bit sussy with uh, the truth. I think Queeman has done what Queeman does, which is like trying to drum up as much controversy as possible um, because uh, that's I think his entire Queeman's content. narrative overlaps entirely with mine. I don't believe any okay. of the stories. I don't believe the SWAT story. And I, I understand that you are retarded might do and that. you don't know anything okay. about addiction. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, he's I, I don't know the same pattern with like a dozen other stories that all strain credulity, but this one apparently has to be true. So it's the not issue is that. that other thing. See what he said? So this one apparently has to be true, even though the other ones weren't. Which other ones weren't true? Like, see? So, okay. Jay Stock is already saying, like, he doesn't think anything Tom says is true. That's crazy. 
Sorry. What do you mean he's done this with a whole bunch of other stories? You've like, the problem for you me is that you'll, so hold accounts. on. The stock puppet counts is the main one where I, I agree that's going on. But again, that's in the pattern of, I think he tends to omit information to protect his responsibility. And Wick says, I understand Tom not wanting to burn bridges. I get it. In the same way, I'm in, I'm the same way, but it is a sad fact that sometimes you just have to cut people off entirely. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do it, bro. Sometimes like if they're never going to treat you in good faith, like never treat you like a person for your own sanity and for your own reputation as a brand, I do think you have to cut people off. I do. And we, we believe in that consent variation. Like I do think you have the right to consent to certain things. But again, like it's a very fine line between like what's appropriate and not. If people are acting inappropriate with you, don't talk to them. You know what I mean? And I think that he tends to like sometimes like uh, uh, do things to like prop himself up. Having an alt account to like make yourself seem awesome isn't even that big of a deal. I, if he's lying about it or not, I don't actually care that much. Who the fuck cares if he's like making a cringe alt account to like promote himself? I literally do not care unless he's lying about it. But to be honest, why the fuck would he lie about it? He and also who the fuck cares? Months in solitary confidement. Um, that is two saying two months football career in solitary too. confinement is completely plausible. You do realize That's that, right? Even out of the uh, I don't think it's possible for this person based on the way they engage with the truth at all times. Based on what? Uh, especially when you're talking about his addiction. It sounds like when he was in the midst of his addiction, Wait, he did a he lot was, of bullshit. Is he addicted when he was in prison? I, he was I, coming. What a fucking brain dead person j Stock is. Was he addicted when he was in prison? What do you think was happening during that era of Tom's life? That's what I mean. He does not give a fuck about the truth. He's literally so bored and just here to make money. He's literally farming Tom for views. And if Tom wants to keep farming him for views, fine. But then, you know what I'm saying? It's one thing to review J Stock. It's another thing to talk to J Stock. I am happy to review anyone, but I will not talk to you. Because again, platforming people is different to me. Again, you can do it. No judgment. We all platform people that some other people wouldn't platform. I'm not trying to be like, oh, better than you. I'm not. I'm just saying my boundaries are different from your boundaries, but it's okay to have boundaries. Right? And Jay Stock is literally just somebody that I just don't think is reasonable to engage with. I just don't. But if you want to, a literally no judgment girl. I mean, he was in, he was charged over like criminal and like addiction related charges, were you not? Obviously, he wasn't was addicted there. Was, how was he, how was he addicted really after mean. the first month in solitary? I don't understand. Wait, I'm sorry. Get him, Kyla. I'm going to be really good. Get him, Kyla. You do understand. What were you abusing? Oh, are you? Oh, are you, you going to say that you're always an addict? Like, that's fine. No, I'm not going to say you're always an addict. I'm going to say that it's important to understand that if people have been addicted since they were like 12 to 14, it typically takes a minimum of two months for them to even start acting normally. And just because he's in, in jail, it doesn't mean he's in recovery because the pattern of behavior that's making him criminological and drug addicted isn't going to change just because he's in jail and because he's not actively addicted to the substance. What we're recovery doing, is, yeah. isn't just sobriety, but it's looking at your past behaviors and all of your flaws and all the fucked up shit you did and going, how the fuck did I end up here? And how the fuck do I stop doing this? And so it's fair that you don't know this about addiction, but I'm being super hard on here. Do not use his past addiction and the things that he's done is it to try to smear his character now it is Wait, so beyond fucked up and inappropriate he wasn't addicted when he told this story right he's telling the story about being in solitary years after he got out of prison no yeah but you're saying that you think he's lying about the story yes right why you just don't think he was in solitary for two months no that's why? not even an ir irregular thing dude that's not even out it's of the order. really not that's not why do you think yeah my cousin was put in solitary it's often because of fights break out or things happen which by the way sucks by the way he wasn't in solitary for two months because whenever he tells stories that he's the only one who, who knows the answer, or he thinks he's the only one who knows the answer, he misleads and lies by omission oh the entire time. Just like nope. he did with you when he That's what JSTOC does. JSTOC is using his method of manipulation and blaming uh, Tom for it. But JSTOC is doing that right now. You didn't have the receipts for this entire, um, this entire debacle. Isn't that crazy? Like, you come up with a life story. Like, look, some people are definitely lying online about their life story, but Tom's been pretty consistent about his life story. JSTOC, who doesn't even listen to the story, hasn't watched the full video is the one making up bullshit. Just but like, but the way that he lied, he just I does it consistently. I have a different conversation with her. I wanted to have like a philosophical conversation with her about like women in this space and what it is that like we can do to make things inappropriate. And the, literally the reason I didn't want to get into those details is oh, also, I didn't want all he, of you guys jumping on to have this fucking- He got attacked by guards. Clearly he could provide documentation for that, right? That was now he wants him to prove his prison stories. Does no one see how inappropriate this is? This is so inappropriate. This is what I'm saying. What an inappropriate thing. This is so inappropriate. If you think he's lying, just move on. He's just a content creator. What are you doing? How, this is so inappropriate, bro, to be like, hey, I need proof you were in prison. Like, no. Hey, I need proof you were raped. No. This is so inappropriate. No one's accusing anyone. Tom, it'd be different if Tom was coming out accusing people of something. Like, if you're going to accuse people of something, then you have to have receipts. If you're just telling your own story, that's no one's business. Even if you're lying about it, what does Tom lying about going to prison matter? It doesn't even matter. So the fact that he's making it come off like it matters tells me something is super, super fucked up about Jay's stock, right? He's just in this category of like, 
Ooh, it's so bad faith, bro. Technical. Are you fucking kidding me? What is wrong with you? Why the fuck Sorry. do you have documentation from the warden who put him in solitary confinement after the guards injured him? They claimed Kyla. that he assaulted him. Do you have a medical him. report from being in prison? He might have a medical report about his I... knee, but that wouldn't prove whether he was in solitary or whether or not it was the guards that caused his injury. Do you have a medical, medical report about your knee? And they don't have any of those things. I, like, they don't give you medical reports when you're in jail. But that doesn't, that's not a thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Th pretty sure they have to thing. document putting you in solitary. If sure, I, but they don't I, get that I have to a me. friend who's a prison guard. Let me ask. They would have to document that he's in solitary. I'm not sure in the states if the solitary, since it's a private corporation, do they have to release public records of how long prison mates had to spend in solitary? Is that a thing in the states? I'm I not sure. Compelled to release it. I have no so idea. Much, I really Look at JSTOC. JSTOC's like, I want proof. I want proof. I want proof. Shut the fuck up. Who is JSTOC to think he's entitled to this personal of information? What? What? Shadow B says, okay, to be fair, I completely disbelieve like 80% of what Leo Skeppy says. So I understand someone doubting someone else's life story. No, no, no. There's no problem with doubting it. Tom doesn't even care if he doubts it. It's the fact that he's saying you have to prove it or you're this thing. You don't have to prove it. I have opinions about Leo Skeppy and I'm pretty sure he's lying too. I'm not demanding Leo, like I'm saying, give us the receipts. If you want me to be a fan of yours. Not if you, not in general. Like I don't want to like, Jstock does this. He does a t what is this tiki torch? Like he like he does a mob thing. Jstock does the mob thing. It's one thing to have an opinion. I have strong I always say that to Leo Skeppy. Where's the receipts, Leo Skeppy? But it's like I'm not literally getting a mob to go against Leo Skeppy. These drama channels, they do this mob thing that's crazy. That's my issue. You know what I mean? Bing says, thanks for doing this, Brittany. I thought I was going crazy with this whole thing. Bro, I thought I was going, I was in my kitchen today and every time my husband came up to me, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, bro, I'm taking down all these notes. These people are fucking liars, bro. It's just JSTOC. He's so disingenuous, bro. Block, JSTOC. You're fucking blocked. Oh my God, blocked, like canceled. Absolutely not. Again, Tom isn't a saint, but nobody is. Nobody is. Again, it's one thing for a content creator just to say like receipts, girl. It's another thing to literally go on and on and on. It's like, bro, move on. Like literally move on, you know? So again, again, with peace and love, this is so inappropriate. I do, yeah, I do know that he wouldn't no, have his knee busted completely and not have any treatment and not get any report on it. At oh, all. you do? Do you know that? Oh, do you know that? Look at this bitch. He's like, I, I know that. I know you don't know shit, bitch. Your bubble's so bubble. You don't know shit, bitch. You don't even know you're dumb as fuck. Where do you think he would be getting these ideas about prison? Like, like, where do you where do you think that he's pulling these ideas from? Is he just like trying to make himself um, seem more hard? Addiction. Yeah. Okay. Where are you getting your ideas about addiction in prison from? Where's where's your like experience or knowledge on these things? I'm not understanding. Because if I'm maybe you know a lot about this shit and I'm fucking dumb. Mm, I, what claims? Great question, Kyla. Kyla killing it right now. Great question. Isn't it funny? He doesn't believe Tom. But why does he believe himself? Why does he even believe himself, bro? Great question, Kyla. Killing it, girl. Am I making about addiction in prison? You I'm said saying, it's ridiculous saying, to imagine that he's in solitaire for two months. It's ridiculous to imagine that he yes, were smart to fuck with other drug dealers. I would have done anything that gets him put in solitary, unless it's... Bro. Literally to protect him from other inmates? I have no idea. I was in solitary I'm saying, times, I'm saying that I don't believe anything time. he said about his past. Pretty much everything right. he said about his past, I'm positive he's lying about, because anytime he has all of the facts and people are asking him for, for any sort of indication of what actually happened, he misleads everyone. All the nope. time. Nope. Constantly. You, nope. Yeah, but you're, like, your evidence for nope. misleading all the time is, I'll grant you, he does omit certain bits of information that make him look a little bit more responsible. That has nothing to do with him lying about his past addiction behaviors. Are you kidding me? I've already granted you that I think he does lie by omission. I think that he does try to somewhat underplay his responsibility at times, probably because he Most people lie by omission. Go ahead and ask streamers like who they're fucking and see if any of them want to answer. You know what I mean? Like that's just people have people have they don't owe you their information. OK, tell people to fuck off if you don't want to answer a question. Sorry, I blow up my own mic. Tell people to fuck off if you don't answer a question, bro. This is so inappropriate. He's being defensive, right? I've already agreed to that. I'm trying to figure out why you think that this somehow would translate to him just lying about his addictive past making shit and like the things Wait, that occurred. What, what am I? Sorry, his addictive past. I'm talking about when he was in prison. I'm talking about that is like, part of while he was he's so dumb. J Stock might be is he dumb or malicious? Is he dumb, stupid, or dumb? Literally. He's like, I'm not talking about his addiction. I'm talking about when he was in prison. What was he in prison for or around? Not that it was specifically for, but what was it around? His heroin addiction. You dumb fuck. Jesus, these people. That's what I mean. I love bubbles, bro. Don't you just love bubbles, bro? We can only see what we can see. We only understand what we understand, myself included. Listening to the stream, bro regularly doing drugs and in and out of jail yeah. as a result of being no. criminological and drug related what uh, okay you know what uh all right you I, if you believe all of this that's fine 
I, I don't. And I'm but gonna maintain it. There's I don't. other people who have met my friends and who, who have talked to them and who like have verified these things. Like this isn't like a, a a rare thing. And I'm happy to have other people talk to them off stream behind the scenes, people who I trust that aren't gonna record shit and go pass it around. But yeah, like I have no problem with people talking to my friends who were there for these things, who know about this shit, uh talking to like my family members who had to deal with my fucking uh busted knee and all the being in the okay. hole and all I'm this just shit. gonna offer one more thing and in good faith i think a lot of people don't understand what addiction looks like because why the fuck would you and all yep. the people in addiction always act like everyone knows about it nobody really understands the field and so just you're like, being you can tell me to... by somebody who is an addict i think you're just I think being... you're... did you hear that did you hear that you're being manipulated by but nobody really understands the field and so just you're like, being you can tell me to... by somebody... you're being manipulated by an addict what she is literally a counselor for addiction tom is in recovery years now he has a very appropriate relationship with his past. And here's Jay Sock now throwing Kyla under the bus. Kyla is being manipulated by the addict. Yo, talk about pathological. Jay Sock. Pathological, bro. Somebody who is an addict. I think you're, just I think being, you're being manipulated by Queeman, who has an active interest in constantly smearing people for content. That's what it's true. Queeman does. Queeman does. It's true. It's true. These little drama channels, I don't believe any of them. Bullshit, you know? I think it's going on that for might you. Be true, and but- Ooh, Maiden says, does he have trauma with the addicts? Do you think he's doing, is a trauma response from JSTOC? My I issue asked him for some of the timestamps, and he said, no, I'm too tired. Fuck off. So he didn't even care enough to come and like try to skewer Tom here at all. He just sure. like, probably because it's a month old. Wix says conspiracy brained. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a part of like conspiracy brain or malicious something. Like I said, I really hate nobody in this space, but there are bitches I don't trust. I don't trust JSTOC. No hate. I don't trust anything that comes out of this man's face. And it's not a benefit to any, him anymore. But th- this aside, this doesn't mean that you haven't engaged in confirmation bias with Queeman. So I need you to understand, you keep saying in jail, he wasn't addicted to substances anymore. And it's possible that you just don't understand this. I'm not saying once an addict, always an addict. I'm saying typically when young- Love the nuance. That's a very specific nuance Kyla's giving. That's great. Boys do lots of crime stuff and it's drug related. They will get thrown in jail pretty periodically. As somebody who has worked with those boys in jail and in mandatory lockups for drug, uh, like drug, decompr- drug detox, mm-hmm. just because the substances are out of their system and they've fully withdrawn the criminological and antisocial behavior that they're often inclined mm-hmm. to do, which is facilitated by both the drug addiction and the criminological lifestyle, mm-hmm. still occurs, which is why recovery typically requires people to move out of the city that they were a part of, and they have to not just stop using substances, but particularly if they're relapse prone and criminological, they have to change every single thing about their lifestyle. And so it is absolutely possible that he got into a fight with the guards. I think he said he was being sassy, which wouldn't surprise me at all. The guards went in and kind of fucked him up, and they probably did a little bit more than they planned to, and then they threw him in, in solitary because it definitely doesn't look good for your guards to beat people up. And this does happen, and it's established. It is possible that he's lying by omission and is making it seem like the guards were just crazy. When in fact, he was like slinging shit at them and doing way worse things. That is possible within Tom's pattern of how he talks about these things. But I don't believe that he's just full on lying about his addictive past because of the nature of how addiction works. And I'm not like super mad at you about this. Just like I'm just saying all of these things. He's- I am. Kyla's so nice to j I'm mad at you, bitch. Liar. He's describing that he could have possibly done the SWAT dressing up all completely makes sense. I'm not shocked to hear any of that shit yep. because of the shit that I've heard my clients have done. Yep. Insane shit that people do when they're in the mix of addiction and criminological lifestyles. It's- it, my audience is full of like addicts and people who have been to prison because I share my stories about these things because yep. I talk about this openly who all know that this stuff aligns completely. There's not like a bunch of prisoners and addicts running around being like, this guy I'm, doesn't listen. know what he's talking about. This sounds outrageous. This sounds like he's making it up. Like they all know that this is just kind This of- is why I hate uneducated people talking about their only, only their experience with things because it is so much more nuanced normal shit when you're in what i think is actually happening market. here and i'll just i'll just lay it out i'm pretty sure that erudite is taking her clients and projecting how they were they were weak and they were taken advantage of on god the- what is this mi- guys what is this pattern so okay so mr girl has a pattern of telling people what they're actually saying but it's really wrong so mr girl is wrong in a different way than jstock is wrong in a different way that chud is wrong so chud even queeman and all these are four different categories i don't think they're all the same but they definitely all have overlap. Max, I think, does it because he actually thinks he's like self-righteous and correct when he's not. I think Queeman does it for the views, but probably for like the clout. Jstock, does Jstock do it for the clout alone? Or is he actually like fucking high off of the manipulation? Is he getting off right now? You know what I mean? What is he doing? What is he doing? And then who was the fourth one? Who did I say? Oh, Chud. Chud is just a... Chud is weird because sometimes he will say things that are true, but then like things that are not true. Like he's so weird. Like he's just like TMZ for YouTube, I think. But I think he just doesn't care about what's true. He cares about what he thinks is funny and salacious, right? What is this? Like what is JSTOC doing? See, he's trying to gaslight Kyla. See how he's trying to twist it and ruin Kyla's reputation? So interesting.
Tom. And I think Tom is a completely different breed of individual. Based on what? So, based on what? Based on what? Based on what? <laughs> based on all of these stories that are fake. I don't believe. I don't believe. See? Based on all these stories that are fake. All the, you mean the stories you think is fake. You mean the stories you think are fake. You see how he's saying it? Like, they're fake. I'm telling you they're fake. And I'm like, but you, you have no reason to think they're fake. They're pretty consistent. Like, they're pretty consistent, right? The reason Trisha and Leo Skeppy come off as inconsistent is because they're very inconsistent with receipts. But Tom, with receipts, hasn't been that inconsistent. Just normal inconsistent. People are inconsistent. But Trisha and Leo Skeppy, the reason they're known liars or we think they're lying is because the inconsistency is so extreme that it's like, oh my gosh, like, this can't be true. You just com you just said you committed a felony without a fe – you just said you had a murder-suicide plan. Like, like if this is true, then you're basically admitting to a crime that's like so bad. Like Tom is talking about a past thing he did in the past. You know what I'm saying? Wick says contort what's happening to fit the narrative that you already believe. It is very common thing that most people do in various degrees. Bro, I agree with that. And I want to give us the tools to not do that, even though we know we all have bias and prejudice. Let's try to fight our bias and prejudice because, oh, this is insane, bro. Mantis says when he JSTOC says this stuff, he's speaking to the audience. He's trying to put a narrative into the audience's minds. Agree. That's why I say he's manipulative. He's doing this for the audience to twist them against Kyla and Tom because he's losing ground because none of his receipts showed any proof. He even, he even had to take back his own receipts. Interesting. I'd be embarrassed. How do you sleep at night, bro? You that's don't have any proof that's that's I don't believe it. Hey, I, I do you think that it's any okay. ounce of proof that any of these stories is real? So, so like, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The record of him going to prison, we should, we should have hey. the record of him being in a major prison for 13 months, right? That's you bullshit. Probably Why would Tom have to share his prison record with the internet? Just to make, who's JSTOC? Who the fuck is JSTOC to say Tom has to prove this? What? No, and just to be clear, if you find resources that it turns out that Tom has none of these receipts, that would be really, really bad. It seems obvious that Tom has a good understanding of addiction. I'm curious your answer on this, just like, do you think that somebody is no longer an addict if, say, they get like detoxed forcefully in jail for like two to three months? Do you think that like all the behavior patterns and stuff goes away? No. Great. Yeah, just real quick. I'm happy with, I like, this sounds outrageous. Like, I just don't believe it. That, that's fine. It's the shit where people keep saying, he's lying. We know he's lying. And you just don't have any evidence. And you just keep saying that I'm lying. But if you want to say, hey, this sounds a little outrageous to where I don't believe it, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. Matthew, are you fucking trolling my chat right now? You said if you don't want to answer a question, tell people to fuck off. You can see how that would be inappropriate, for example, for a police officer to say to the public because of transparency. Matthew, are you 15? I will spank chat today. Matthew, see how we're having a conversation within context? Why would you? Matthew says, shouldn't the public have an equal level of interest in who influencers are based off their sway? No. Grow up. Get off the internet, you chronic virgins. Just kidding. I love you all. Virgins is actually a really valid way to be in life. And I think like sex is overrated. So if you want to be a virgin, I think that's really important. No. What are you, crazy? Oh my God. Get off the internet, bro. Tom doesn't owe you his fucking life. He's not a fucking politician. And even if he was, half your politicians are lying to you and get caught all the time. Quick says, yes, Tom, the police officer. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Jesus Christ. But people keep just, acting like we've proven the lies over and over. And that's the fucking shit. That I didn't say I've proven the lies. I've been they very said explicit. That you have a pattern very of explicit that it all strains credulity. And once I've heard like a dozen of these stories that make no fucking sense, I'm starting to go, okay, I don't believe any of it. Well, hold on. When you started this out, you said that he is explicitly and intentionally lied. You did say that to me. I wrote down the quote. And also, <laughs> if you just said to me that you think that just because somebody is not detox, that they're not an addict, why did you say that Tom wasn't an addict when he got put in jail? Like, why on earth did uh, you I'm, say that? So probably what I that? meant there, what I meant there, and, and after you, you meant? talked about it, I acknowledged, I said to you explicitly, hey, um, if, unless you mean that like, they're going to continue being an addict or that they're always an addict, that's fair. And you were talking about that concept, at least, that they maintain a lot of those behaviors. Now, that's fair. What I meant is he wasn't driven by physical addiction. Okay, but what what the, what does that have to do with anything? Nobody was yeah, ever claiming that he was being driven I'm by physical just, addiction. I'm literally just explaining what I meant. Hold on. So when I said, do you understand that just because somebody is forcefully detoxed, it doesn't mean that they're not an addict. You said he wasn't an addict when he was in jail. Why would he have done these things? Are you trying to tell me now that you were saying you understand addiction? Let no, me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Why won't you just let me oh, finish? Sorry, I'm saying wasn't an addict. I mean, he wasn't physically addicted when these things happened. So the drugs weren't okay. influencing his decision making. But obviously, anymore, or like his ability obviously. To the story. Okay. But obviously when I asked you that, I was aware that he wasn't physically addicted. And so were you. I was asking, do you believe that addictive patterns exist afterwards? And you said he wasn't an addict, which is to say, you don't believe I am explaining these things. When I'm saying he's not an addict, I mean the physical addiction but obviously some of the behaviors would persist i'm just not very i don't talk about this topic very often so that's super uh, fair be some clarification that has to happen so yeah and that's all fair that's all fair the issue is that when i say for example like that, that's super fair so then 
you know what, honestly, uh, I'll just give you that one. Sure. I'm and my, glad my that we clarified this He was no longer an addict. He was long clean when he was starting to recall these stories and tell them. And I think that's where he's lying. Okay. Yeah, so he's, okay. So Jstock, just to clear it. So in my words, Jstock is saying when Tom told the stories, he was sober and clean and therefore lying about stories Tom claims occurred when he was in prison and coming in and out of addiction. I'm going to assume Jstock is voting for Trump. I'm just kidding. <laughs> these things are not like these cool things that make me sound fucking amazing. These are, this is like the most embarrassing fucking shit from my entire life. That's fucked up what? my entire life that I've spent my entire life trying to recover from and trying to fix. And this is stream is the only place where people have found this shit interesting, where I can talk about it. And it sounds like an interesting story everywhere else in my fucking life. This is a detriment and it has fucked up everything for me. So this is, that's why I like stream. I come and talk to you guys about things. We're all looking for information about the, like the same things here. This is a much safer space to tell people about. I never tell people in real life like what I do or what I am unless they like are close to me. I don't tell randos that I'm a streamer. I just like keep that private. You know, my family and friends know obviously, but like I don't tell people like they're like, what do you do? Like I just tell people I review philosophy stuff and pop culture. But like, again, like, hello, hello. Like I understand feeling like stream is like a weird safe space. It is for me at least. Where I'm like, oh, this is like my people, my kinds of people gather in one spot and I'm so lucky. So I get that. Not like a thing. And like Tom has a bunch of um, former addicts or addicts in his audience because they, uh, you know, identify with him. I have a lot of neurodivergent borderlines. I love that for us. We're fucking awesome. Where it's like this awesome brag that I got my fucking ass kicked by some cops and that I was a fucking awesome guy who stole from everybody and stole from all my family members and all my friends and nobody trusted me. And I was this horrible liar. That was just this, oh, so, such a cool guy. Listen to me brag about how cool I was, everybody. That's, that sounds fucking insane, dude. This Obviously, content is a different way to tell your life story. That's why people go on podcasts, right? We don't do that in real life because like most people, it's like inappropriate to share. Stream, you get to tell your story in a different way. That's why people come to the internet to tell their story in a different way. Wick says, I have a huge, strong wall between personal life and stream life. It's weird when people don't to me, but hey, I'm same. This is horrible fucking shit from my life that I've spent the next 15 to 17 years trying to recover from and trying to fix. Mm -hmm. which, um, which jail did you go to, Tom? <gasps> Ooh, none of your business. Tom shouldn't answer him. I'm really upset for Tom for answering him. Tom keeps trying to think if I answer him, he'll believe me. He'll never believe you. He'll never believe you because his goal is not to believe you. His goal is to make you crazy so you lose your fucking mind. His goal, JSTOC's goal, is not to find the truth. This is literally not the goal. Tom doesn't owe JSTOC this information. I don't know. I don't care. I don't need to know what prison you went to. I don't need to see the receipts. I don't need to. You're telling your story. I'm here for it. You know? Matthew says, no, she was talking about influencers who have above average power. Matthew, get off the internet. Influencers do not have above average like power. He's a 3K subscriber, 50 person streamer. Jesus Christ, your local like priest has more clout. Jesus Christ, your local priest is preaching to people of 10,000s. Well, we are preaching to people of 100. Everybody relax. You know who has more power? Your local teachers. Your streamers do not have average or above power over an audience of grown adults who, if you can't handle a 15 person, like a 50, or a hundred person streamer, Jesus fucking fucking Christ. Jesus Christ, are you insane? Oh my God, Tom Fullery has so much power over us. Bro, your clerk at the local gas station has more power over you than Tom Fullery does. Jesus fucking Christ. It's Jesus called, uh, Christ. I've gone over this on stream. Oh, I don't, I literally don't know. Someone told me to ask. Okay. So I'm sure you didn't see the stream. Would you be willing to agree now, just like that when he was talking about the SWAT stuff, when he was talking about that stuff, he wasn't trying to make himself look cool and interesting. He was actively talking about bad things that he had done that were not no, good. He was I not didn't, glorifying. I, no, I, I, don't think, I don't think he's actually referring to events that occurred. That's the problem. I understand that you think ads could do that. I don't believe that those are events that actually occurred. Why would he tell me those things in a non-glorifying way? Because he is a pathological liar to, to this day. So he's accusing him of being, who the fuck did I marry? I have never got that impression about Tom. I don't think it's true. I don't think Tom is a pathological liar. I don't think Tom is in any way fibbing about his stories. I just like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? You know what I mean? What are we talking about here? Listen to Jay Stock. He's trying to make him out like the, the who the fuck did I marry guy. 
He's not, Tom is not like a little lying narcissist, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. What are you talking about? Wick says, I'm a golden god who pulls the strings and sets the scene, bringing both death and life in equal measure. <laughs> but I disagree with Brittany on this. I think we have more influence than she's saying. I think some people have more influence, but not smaller, like not to the scale that I think matters. I think if you're a very big streamer or if you're Taylor Swift, sure, obviously, right? But I also disagree. Like, I think people have different values and I don't think you're obligated to like do anything in regards to your influence um, personally, basically, with the exception of a couple of things. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I think we do disagree on this generally. Because because you don't actually have the facts, you can't go check any of the things he's talked about. So he's gonna uh, he's gonna upsell his story just like he upsold pizzas. The, the way he's just he described it to me in that conversation is the exact type of tone and response I would expect from a recovering addict who realizes that the behaviors that they would have glorified in the day and that they did think was cool was horrible. Yep. Absolutely, addicts that I have treated. You Tom took accountability. He's obviously a changed person. I didn't even know Tom had this past, but then again, like I'm impressed with his recovery, and I know a few like heroin addicts or drug addicts or recovering addicts and like some of them are so impressive you would never know that was their life and then some people are still in recovery so it's like oh a little bit more apparent because you know struggle is real but it's like yeah I think sometimes like people want to doubt people's struggle because they look like they recovered too well people do that to me they're like um Brittany either you never had borderline or you're hiding the fact that you're still fucked up and I was like you're being weird like you're being weird, dude. I'm just like a borderline who's like in remission, but like it's possible. Most people who have borderline personality disorder, most of them who go to therapy show an immense amount of recovery within three months of going to therapy. So again, just because y'all aren't getting therapy, you should look at the borderlines who get therapy. Therapy works. Not all therapists are good therapists, but if you find the right one, which is imperative, it can really change your life. You can always tell a difference. And honestly, in the capacity of an addictions counselor, there's a difference between when clients talk about their criminological stuff and they're still glorifying it versus clients who are aware of how fucking horrible it is, how they ruined other people's lives, how they're ruining their own life, and how basically no one really has a good reason to forgive them and the best they can do is try to pick up and go on anyways. The reality is that I don't know why he would lie when he's talking about it in the latter way. If he was talking about it in the former way of trying to make himself seem cool, I agree that he could make that shit up. I'm talking about when he's talking about the bad shit and he seems embarrassed. There's no reason to make up shit when you're actively trying to not glorify, but you're talking about what a piece of shit you used to be. Why would you make up extra stuff? Mm. I have a question. Can we rewatch that? Because yeah. I, I want to say that the way I'm remembering it, it looks like he's relishing in the retelling of this. Okay, again, that's as if to say, guys, have you never watched cool documentaries with people? They're like, oh man, he's the guy. Who did we watch? What's his name? What's his name? What's uh the uncle on um what's his name? Uh we watched his documentary on the VC guys, Mexican. He just had his like 30th sobriety or whatever, 20 years. He has a really cool story about how he was smoking dope with his uncle at 13. And if you watch his documentary, there are times he's laughing and saying like, oh my God, I remember this. I remember, now he's an actor. What's his name? What's his name? He's super famous. Come on, we know his name. He When he talks about his story, it's obviously like, oh, I remember when I smoked dope with my uncle at 13. It was crazy. And it's like an interesting way to tell the story. And there is going to be some like positive and negative. I don't want him to beat himself up for the rest of like life right? Just because he's having this relationship with his storytelling. So again, they're acting like they're holding Tom to a standard that is non-existent except in their heads. Again, don't let people tell you how to tell your own stories. You can tell your goddamn stories the way you want to tell your goddamn stories. Why are you letting people tell you how to tell your own stories? Yes, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo, exactly. Danny Trejo telling his stories, doing his documentaries. Obviously, fascinating story. Just like a fascinating story, right? Just so interesting, but literally, literally, like really fucked up, like such a fucked up life. But he really turned his life the fuck around. He really did. He really, really did. And yes, sometimes he smiles and have, has like a fond memory of smoking dope with his uncle. Also, he's like, man, I was fucked up. Yeah, dude. Don't let people tell you how to tell your own story. It is up to you how you want to tell your own story, okay?
That's the way it appears because he has a big smile on his face. You're talking about where, where I'm talking to Kyla? Where you're talking to Kyla. Yeah, yeah. This is embarrassing. That's what I'm talking about. I might be wrong. We'll just That's how I it when we'll I was watching it. We'll just 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 there are times where, yes, I'm telling a story that's fucking wild that people are going to find interesting. But in this scenario, no. Like, this is me, like, talking about me, how horrible of a person I was, that I was a liar, that I was, like, this piece of shit that nobody trusted. And I'm smiling in, like, a way that this is embarrassing. I, the, the entire... Laughing, smiling is a form of nervousness. My brother got in trouble in the military for doing this. He started a fit of laughter <coughs> at one of his like um, higher ups, got majorly in trouble. My siblings and I, we laugh when we get in trouble. It's like a nervous tick. It's like, oh, my God, we smile. It's like such a fucking annoying nervous tick, but it is a real phenomenon. Or he's also allowed to speak of his time warmly. Again, I don't want to tell people how to tell their stories. You know what I mean? Oh my God, I did spell categories incorrectly, didn't I? I knew I did, but my fucking dyslexia refuses to engage with it. I thought I spelled it wrong. Oh my God, did anyone tell anyone, did anyone tell Brittany she spelled it wrong? No one in this fucking chat told me because everyone's fucking dyslexic themselves, I swear to God. I thought I spelled it wrong. I swear I told myself, I think I spelled this wrong, but I was like, no, it looks right, right? I swear, I swear, that's so funny like conversation there was me talking about how i had to make such dramatic changes to who i was in my entire life that th this is uh your stream this isn't the, the let's clip. just watch it and let's see like, I'll, I'll get i hate this because like, we already know like we already like, know this isn't the clip. it doesn't matter oh, am i on the wrong thing uh no what you're sharing is he's allowed to tell the story like it's a crazy cool story he's allowed to tell that story the fact that you're telling him how to tell his story is annoying to me isn't the clip you're yeah. sharing the your stream yeah you're sharing okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's right. um, just like, are you good to watch or are you getting too tired yeah, and want to go to bed? Okay. Right checking in on spoons. I was like a compulsive liar for, for sure. Like literally would just do Compulsive, not pathological. Compulsive. Like, can we, hold on. Can we rewind from this and like actually go yeah. see the context from before? Like what I'm asking him and stuff? Yeah, because I just don't, like obviously it's, yeah. it's no, for time stamped sure. in such a way that I don't see any of the drug talk from before. Yeah, so I went. And by the way, it's it's going to be, it's going to make Tom look better. I'm back like a minute. Do you want me to go back more or how much? That should be, I think that should be good. If there's nothing okay. here, then we can go back further. Just tell me to go back more if you want. Yeah. Massive red flag to everybody else. Here, hold on. The, the worst women in the world, like what is going on? And I thought, well, I'm, I'm a freaking like massive red flag to everybody else. Like I've got, <laughs> I've got like a bunch of crimes. I've, you know, had a horrible history. So um, I was like, I got to like become the guy that the women that I want to date, that they would want to date. And yeah, like the way that I talk now is not how I talked back then. I was like very much a wigger and like, um, was very uh yeah very very different and so yeah how I did was you, like yeah what, like what were the steps that you took to change so like what were some of the most important changes that you made right out the hop i was like a compulsive liar for, for sure like literally would just do it without thinking compulsive very specific like yeah. on accident like um sometimes and so when i i i was working um i think at a subway at the time i was running a subway and i remember like actually telling my boss something and seconds later being like shit dude i don't know why i just renox i don't know who you are but you're being weird if you want people not to be rude to you in chat, we're all autistic here, so we're going to be rude. You seem weird. Your messages are off. Get your shit together or I'm going to block you. Lied about that. That was stupid. Like, I, I literally just made that up. My bad. And uh, them looking at me like I was the freaking weirdest person in the world. <laughs> so embarrassing, dude. Would they be like small little white lies or was it everything? Like, they would be both small little white lies and big lies to get out of big situations. Yeah, sometimes it wasn't even like big wise to get out of situations. It would just why just like just for something interesting because I enjoyed the game. So like when I was selling drugs and all that, there was just... It, it was part of the game is to like manipulate everybody else around you. So we had a crew, but we weren't like, we were always trying to get over on each other as well. Like and we were always here, trying to seem like he was... backstab each other. And um, we were also doing like different, um, I tell stories about like where there were other drug dealers that I was friends with that I would get my girlfriend to tell them we broke up and see if she could go over to their house. And then she would go over and hang out with them. The fact that he's sharing the stories, the fact that he knows it was wrong, the fact that he starts off with the sentence, I'm a red flag. He's literally taking accountability with, and he hasn't repeated the pattern. There is no repeating of this pattern in any of his current life. And then she would text me and be like, hey, their drugs are in this spot. And then we would pull up. And Amaris says, very annoying. The expectation to have receipts for each piece of your life story is so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so inappropriate. If you don't believe him, don't engage with him. It's just so inappropriate. And SUVs and like SWAT uniforms and break in and take all their drugs and uh, and leave like we were the police and um, crap like that. And so, yeah, we were always like just, we trying to get over on. I just want to be clear. We believe that they pulled up in SUVs in SWAT uniforms and tried to break into somebody's house. We didn't actually have like real SWAT uniforms, but as close as we could get in like black clothing and everything. Yeah. Okay. It's like JSOC has never left his bedroom. How hard would that be? I could do that. How hard is it to pretend to be SWAT? I feel like that's really easy. 
My brother's uh, just grab some camo uh, for some black. Grab some black boots. Show up in an SUV. Everybody's got an SUV. Fucking show up to your friends. And that's easy as fuck. Why is he acting like Jace talks like, is this even is he literally a 15 year old could do it? They do do it. What are you talking about? Do you want to go back just so we can be listening to it? Hey, yeah, no, no, no. Just the, like, the, the did, conversation uh, did you know the people is, you were breaking into? Uh, yes. And this that in the part that I'm talking about there. Yes, I did. it was another drug dealing. Um, but yeah, like this entire part, it, it, because she reminded and showed the context, we're talking about relationships and we're talking about the fact that I keep dating like really horrible women who keep cheating on me and treating mm -hmm. me horribly. And then I realize, oh, I'm the fucking problem. I'm like a, a piece of shit that nobody that I would want to date would be willing to date me. And so then I go down a list of like problems with Colleen says my husband was robbed that way when he was young. It's super common. Literally. It's like, it's just, how old is Jstock? Is he like 12? Maybe Jstock just doesn't leave his house. Literally everyone in my chat's like, yeah, bro. How hard is this? Like it, literally airsoft guns. It's like very easy. Again, I just feel like it's the difference between like adults who have like seen it or understood it or just watch a documentary on like, it's not that fucking hard. Like just get a LARPing community to do it with you. It's like, yeah, is it because JSTOG doesn't leave his bedroom? Is that the problem? Like what is happening here? Or is he just a pathological liar and he's accusing Tom of doing everything he's doing to like pretend he's not the one doing it? That's a good tactic. Ooh, that's a good gaslighting manipulative tactic. Ooh, that's interesting with myself and why no woman that I would want to date would ever want to date me. Like that's, this is literally me just talking about why the people that I want to date don't want to date me. This isn't self-glorification in any way. Leave like we were the police and um, crap like that. And so, yeah, we were always like trying to get over on one another as well. And so it just became normal to always lie to one another, to always try to uh, get over on one another. You guys are saying he's privileged. Is he? He might be. Maiden says, I seriously uh, think Jstock might be emotionally stunted developmentally. He might be, which is not uncommon for the space. To be fair, he actually might be. I actually do think that's a possibility, right? And so to be fair to him, to meet him where he's at, it happens. I think a lot of people that are stunted end up on the internet. I do. I think because you can't make it in like regular life, you make your life here, which is why I think it's really important that a lot of us do have lives off the internet. Like I'm chronically online because of my job, but I obviously have a whole life outside of it, right? I have friends and family and things I do, but I just like I separate them very clearly. So I, I always say I'm chronically online, but I don't mean it the way the internet says it. Like I don't, I'm not literally mo like my, you know what I mean? But technically, because my friends are in a different continent, but not literally because I have a whole life offline. Uh oh, my stream dropped. I'm still here though, right? Hold on. Okay, I'm connected. So is, is JSOC just like, is he stunted? Is he like a chronically online little rat? Like what is he doing? You know what I mean? Like what's happening? I'm not sure, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you guys. I think he might be. There might be some mental defect or something. Another and eventually you were just like streaming webs. Well, I think actually there would have to be a mental defect for him to even be reacting this way, right? Like something's wrong with him, right? That weren't even connected to something in hopes that they would be connected to something way later down the line that would help yeah. you. And so, yeah, you just ended up lying for, for no reason sometimes. So I guess my question is, is anyone who's like sussy of Tom, is anyone listening to this? So I'm trying to listen to this from the perspective of like, does any of this flag me as being deceptive or as being glorifying, for example, because I'm obviously of the bias that I don't think it is. Are you guys watching it for cues that would suggest truthfulness and non-glorification? Because the main things you two did is pause it to point out just two things that might confirm your bias, which I don't think is a fair way to engage with Tom, especially over such like serious things and especially bringing up such a very serious vulnerable history, which is his addiction history to use against him. Like I said, I didn't know that this was in context to addiction and... I still, even in watching back further, I still didn't see the, uh... BB says JSTOC is either redundant, redundant or evil. That has to be it. Well, it could be a lot of things, but I do think it's something. Like, it's, 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 this has to be, like, something mental health. Like, you can't just be the normal grounded people aren't like this. That's what I mean when I say, like, ooh, I'm sensing. That's what I'm saying, like, ooh, like, I'm sensing, right? Like, you can't be a normally adjusted person and treat people the way JSTOC does. You can't be a normally adjusted person and chronically cheat on people. You can't be a normally adjusted person and like beat people up just for the fun of it. You can't be a normally adjusted, like again, when we're looking for sort of more healthy than unhealthy, right? Healthier people are much more grounded and much more kind to people because they don't often feel like a need to be defensive and a need to be like, <gasps> like a need to be like, re you know what I'm saying? But JSTOC is like something is, is seriously wrong with him whether it's intentional or not, he is dysfunctional. And look, everyone's dysfunctional on a spectrum for sure. I'm dysfunctional on a spectrum. It's just like I'm closer to healthy than unhealthy. And you can tell because of the way I treat people and the way that relationships happen, JSTOC 
is willing to make false accusations with no receipts and when pushed into a corner, just makes up a new lie to distract from the original accusation. That's not normal, dude. Not, let me rephrase, not normal. That's not healthy, okay? I'll make the statement that it's not healthy. So what is wrong with him? If he's, you know, developmentally challenged, well, now we have a reason and we can be more lenient, right? If he's not developmentally challenged, that means he's doing it on purpose, which means he's like the evilest person. He's like evil. But an evil meaning furthest from joy, not evil meaning this character trope that we create in the media. Evil meaning furthest from joy. He's so lacking of joy, he can only spend his time destroying other people's reputations because he's so like without joy. That's what I mean, within his own consciousness, right? So a person who's willing to do that, again, I don't lie about people. It's a very wonderful thing I think I'm great about. I don't lie about people. I do not lie about people, okay? I'll lie about myself in the past, in the past. I do not lie about people. And JSTOC cannot say that. He lies about people all of the time, including myself. And so again, when I look at him, he can't say that. He can't say he doesn't lie about people. I actually like, maybe it's my neurodivergency. I never lie about people. So I can literally say that now. He can't say that. And that's what makes me look at him like, you're willing to lie about people. You're automatically suspicious to me. And you're not willing to say I lied. Tom has already admitted when he's lied and why he did it, which to be fair, makes sense. Lots of people lie. Why is he lying? Why is JSTOC lying? But JSTOC, if asked, would not say he's lying. He would say, oh, I misspoke. Oh, I misunderstood. Oh, he is literally doing exactly what he's accusing Tom of doing. That it had anything to do with addiction. I didn't know this conversation had to do with addiction. I was that talking about drug dealing. What I'm talking about. Yeah, you're talking about what is Dave talking about? This is what I'm saying. What the fuck is Dave in this conversation? What do you mean this conversation? You didn't know this conversation had to do with addiction. Tom's whole past has to do with addiction. Drug dealing. Uh, he talked about how he was a massive giant red flag because he was an Get addict to selling drugs. So I'm not really understanding what you missed. Uh, at the same time, he also apparently, oh, there was something with credit cards. Oh, he got caught and sent to prison because his girlfriend would use a credit card that he's stolen, right? Mm -hmm. So apparently he had a whole bunch of like schemes for taking credit cards and not getting caught using them, de using them yeah, debit cards as well. Super. Super. Kyla and he also was a cap burglar yes, who actually uh, yes, broke into people's houses. Tom says, I'm willing to send Kyla the proof, which is great. See, he has people he trusts, which I think is good. And again, don't send it to JSTOC because he obviously doesn't care about whether you're right or not. Yes. And you were to get their jewelry. I didn't send Kyla my records. It has piece. residential burglars Hold on. and uh, I just want to be clear. Card. Yeah, yeah. I so literally like in all of these stories seem crazy to me. That's fair. I just feel like you are super not aware of like what this industry is. Because I think part of what you're describing is like a whole list of like, how is it possible that he's like a junkie who's also doing like high heist cat burglary of jewelry and also doing credit card scams? Like, is that the thread you're pulling? Like, how are you like a junkie and dealing and drugs? Also and, working and doing all this shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also not getting caught for any of these things. So he yeah, did so, all these crimes yeah. and he got caught for none of them. Well, he got caught for some of them. That's what I'm saying. Did you hear what he just said out loud? How sheltered is this boy? He just said, so he did all these crimes and never got caught for any of them? What? What is JSTOC even saying? What does that even mean? You know what I mean? What does that even mean? What? Most people do a bunch of crimes and never get caught for it. You guys ever speed and not get caught for it? You ever smoke marijuana when you're not supposed to not get caught for it? What? What? Some of that. But am I understanding your dubiousness of being like, I don't really understand how you're both like a drug dealer junkie who's yeah, also yeah, doing I credit card fraud. Of like his, um, his arrest record or something, I would definitely- Yeah, is he playing dumb or is he sheltered? Yes, Maddox, that's what I want to know. Is he literally playing dumb or is he that fucking sheltered? What kind of question is that? That would go a long way to believing. Sure, that this so I will say, of my clients that are criminologically involved, almost all of them do credit card fraud. Most of them, obviously, a lot of them are women do prostitution. Kidnapping is also, if you're gang affiliated, the triad is typically kidnapping, um, assault, and drug trafficking. He's done a lot of drug trafficking, so credit card theft and drug trafficking are decently common. The only thing that I'm not sure about with the cat burglary is does he mean that he's like breaking into jewelry stores or like what or is he breaking into pawn shops? Because houses. Breaking into houses. So again, breaking into houses is- Tom isn't fully listening to what Kyla said. I think she just said something that wasn't true maybe. I don't know though. In my experience, decently typical addiction behavior when they're also criminologically involved. It's not all addicts, just to be clear, because there's a lot of addicts that don't do crime at the same time. But when you do crime and you have this addiction element and you're selling drugs, this lit in you, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm actually shocked to hear that there isn't. Do you have multiple assault charges? You must. Do you not? Assault charges? No, I don't have any yeah. assault. I don't have any, like, uh, violent crimes or anything. Okay. Did you assault people, though? I, like, I, I was in fights and shit like that pretty yeah, yeah. regularly. Okay. It's just like, it was like, it was like junkie on junkie violence, so nobody reported it to cops. Yeah, or like at parties yeah. where you get in the fights, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's like that. I mean, okay, lots so of people who drink go to parties and get into fights. Well, and then you hear that junkie and junkie crime, 
versus lots of people get drunk and get into fights at, at parties. Yeah. Do you know that's assault, dumbass? Do you know it is assault to get into a drunk fight with someone at a bar, you dumb fucks? Yes, someone can absolutely get you arrested for assault. They just often don't, but they can. Yes, those are all assault like charges waiting to be pended. They just don't happen because most people know the context is a little different. Lots of violence occurs. Lots of assault occurs. Do you know if you spit on someone, that is a form of arrestable assault? In Washington State, when I lived there, we had lawyers do classes in BDSM dungeons because they were sex education centers. And they would tell us, like, everything you're doing in BDSM is a form of assault if someone wants to press charges. And the only thing that sort of changes it is consent. But if somebody revokes consent and then makes goes after you, there's a chance you could get, 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 get convicted even if you're not guilty. Like, you have to remember, like, spitting on someone is a form of assault. You can get in trouble for it. So again, I don't know if like J like Jstock knows this, but he's literally, yes, talking to a literal drug counselor and a form, like a criminalized, like a former criminal who has a past of this. And he's literally like, mm, I think I know more than you both. And I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. There's also like I've not stories all of like us who... getting into physical fights with like other guys who were trying to rob us of our drugs and that like we were like that there were guns you, and shit. Like, wait, Tom, can you just tell me what you went to prison for 13 months for? Or is so, that too much information? Don't answer him don't give this man anything no it's a, it's a little complicated so i was locked up for burglaries i got out for two weeks then i was locked up again for uh debit card theft and debit card fraud and then uh and then i also had a probation violation from the burglaries before that and a probation violation from a weed charge as well yeah tom is like a little criminal he's like a light criminal but he's still a criminal he still has a record and he's still have to deal with that for the rest of his life uh there might even have been a third probation violation but i can't remember um but that, I think that was the fifth time I'd been locked up. And so I had all of those things stacked on top of each other with 10 years probation. And so I had to, uh, so that's, that, that was all of the things that I was in trouble for. Because it's, it's a bunch of violations and the, the charge of debit card theft and debit card fraud. Okay, so you, you weren't caught on trafficking ever? On trafficking? No. Like drug trafficking? No. Okay. What were you selling? Uh, tons of stuff. Mostly uh, Oxycontin. Uh, what kind time, of weight were you moving? Uh, nothing big. Like you were selling pills. Yeah, he's a small time criminal, guys. Small time, but bigger time than like someone who steals food, but he's a small time criminal. He's not like that big of a criminal, but like in this space, to people who never leave their room, it's like, whoa. But to somebody like me who has like cousins in prison, it's like, oh yeah, like he did the small baby crime, not the like big crime. And he's definitely not Bernie Madoff crime. You know what I mean? Probably out of time. Were you like a you were a junkie dealer, right? You were in like a right. dealer. So, so that's when he says- Yeah, he's a junkie dealer. It's not the same thing as being like, you know, fucking cartel in Mexico. Successfully dealing drugs. I was not successfully dealing drugs ever because I was using them. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't successfully dealing drugs. Nobody knows what category Tom is in. Tom is a very specific category of criminal and user. And so there are parts yeah, where using, like actually. our money's way up. Yeah, he's an unserious criminal. He's like, a, he's like a- He's a victim to his own addiction where he became a criminal to keep it going. We're all doing really well and we're selling really well. And then there's other parts where we literally have nothing and we're robbing everybody to try to get more money to, to sell again to support our habits. And so, yeah, it's kind of always back and forth. Yeah. So I am definitely sus that you lie by omission as far as like when current drama is going on and you don't want certain details to be known. You'll like soft pad over them. I am not convinced that you are like a chronic pathological liar who just like makes up shit about your past. Yeah, everyone lies by omission. Even me. Absolutely. I lie by omission, uh, especially to the public, because fuck these people. They don't owe sh oh, they're I'm not I'm not giving you anything. So if you mean like we leave details out or like we I don't know what that means actually. I don't know what Kyla's saying. Everyone does that. There's no one in the space who doesn't do that because why wouldn't you do that? You're talking to fucks on the internet. Again, I don't know why everyone thinks this is a safe space to tell your business to the internet when we know that's not true. Like, I don't know why everyone acts like everyone's closer than they are or like everyone knows things. Like, again, I'm not friends with Tom off the internet. I only know him from the internet. Okay. And I like Tom. But again, like, even when I make new YouTube friends, I always tell them, I like you. I don't want you to know anything about my life. You know, I don't want you to know anything about my husband or my family. Like, I'm willing to tell certain people certain things. I'm willing to get closer to certain people. But I'm not getting closer to like, no way, bro. Like, not, not right away. You know what I mean? Kayla uh, says, Kayla says, I think she means purposely misleads. Is that what she means? Okay, well, I guess that's different. I don't do that. Purposely misleads. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe? I mean, he definitely has admitted he's lied, which I think is, yeah, 
that's better than other people that are like, I don't lie. I never lie. Like, bro, just say you lied. You know what I mean? Alex says, if I didn't tell my partner every time I take a shit, am I lying by omission? No one needs to know everything about you. That's the question. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Renox says, Brittany, with peace and love, is someone who was robbed, who robbed somebody at gunpoint a light criminal? I don't know. Did he rob somebody at gunpoint? Are you saying he did that? Because I don't, is that true? And I don't know, maybe. It depends. Is the gun loaded? Is it a fake gun? Is it a real gun? I would say probably not if it's a real gun. But I don't know that, that Tom did that specifically. But also, he's still a light criminal. Because like there's a levels to criminality. Don't black and white this bitch. Look at my categories. Okay? Look at the categories. Right? Light blue to dark blue. Where is, you know, what kind of criminality? Okay, very different. You know what I mean? So like, it is a tiny criminal if you're comparing it to the biggest kind of criminal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't ask the dumb, don't ask dumb questions. I'll slap you. Okay? To be honest, just like, I don't know if the argument, I just believe he is, is sufficient, especially when you're talking about like standard junkie behavior. I will agree with you. I honestly don't know if I believe Tom that the alt account isn't his. I think it probably is. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's his. I only don't think it is his because I feel like he's already admitted to so many different lies. Why wouldn't you admit to that one? But also, maybe it is his. I just don't think it matters. The only reason I think maybe it isn't is I don't know why he'd lie at this point. Um, and uh, <clears> I don't <throat> like that he like lies by omission to avoid certain responsibilities, but I don't think that that is in line with any like the junkie history stuff. Okay, I think um, all of the, there's just so many, I, it strains credulity again, um, that there would be this huge pattern of all of these things. Influencers saying, hey, this guy, um, he misrepresented his qualifications to me. I'm positive we can find that, by the way, the misrepresenting of the being a linguist. And, yeah, I'd be curious to see that. But like, okay, so if we start seeing- But even if you do that, every business has an unhappy customer. Every business has a group of unhappy customers. I don't know what you're saying. That's not even proof of anything. So every business has a uh, some un unhappy customer. So? And connecting the dots on these and basically proving that he's lying. <clears throat> Are you going to start flipping on a bunch of the things you've said? Uh, I might flip on, on, I mean, I don't know if I, what I think about the rhetoric coach stuff. I just don't have receipts on it either way. Who cares? Um, I'm not saying Jesus. all allegations are dismissed. Um, it's totally possible that he lies about shit. It's not obvious to me that he's lying about the junkie past. He might be lying about like understanding, for example, that his relationship with this person was terminated. Not, I wouldn't be surprised if there was like maybe some padding. That's super possible. I'm saying specifically the addiction stuff does not strike me as a lie in any way. And I think you guys should genuinely stop trying to use it to smear him because it's kind of gross. Okay, but this is the first time I bring it up because you're asking about how he lied and I literally got timestamps from people with stuff, right? So I just Nope, out. nope, I don't believe Stock. Every proof he's brought has been like discounted. I don't trust him. I go through all of the examples that people have had for the entire time he's been on YouTube, yeah. I guess. And, and I also, any of what that's I'm crazy. This is crazy. This is a smear campaign. This is just like the most insane group of humans I've ever seen in my life. People change. They get better. They're sometimes worse. No one's perfect. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, this is so inappropriate. Saying comes across as me being... uh shaming him for his past when he was a junkie or anything. I definitely did not intend it that way. And uh, I know that he obviously had addiction issues. He's on Suboxone now. So, I mean, that obviously is proof that he had an addiction that he's working through, which I applaud you on. Get better. That's oh, awesome. I also totally believe he was an addict. I, yeah. that is nobody here, totally nobody here ever thought that he was lying about being an addict. Yeah. drugs too, because we've talked about that. Yeah. So. You guys think that he's mm -hmm. laying on, not you guys, I, say, I know Jay thinks that he's laying on like some extra stories to make himself seem cool. Um, I don't sure what, I'm not sure what you think about that. Who I'm cares? saying my, my oh. issue is please Let's stop just, using. Let's just real quick, the, the, the sock puppet accounts too. It's all, it's all comments saying how cool and awesome he is. So, but, like, of course. So, so his crime is cringe. This is the same bullshit Cherry did to Kyla. Cherry's only criticism of Kyla is that she was cringe. That was Cherry's biggest takeaway from Kyla. She made a whole fucking video on Kyla just saying Kyla's cringe at debating and then called Kyla like inauthentic and like made her out to be like a bad person because she's bad at debating. What a cesspool category of human beings. What a cesspool category of human beings. That's why you're all fucking blocked, bitch. Because you have the audacity to say you have dirt on people and the only dirt you have on them is that they're cringe? Oh my God, sit down. The world is literally suffering and you are just making up bullshit because you're so bored. You're so bored. 
like an editor might like say shit about him like that. Like that's not unreasonable. It's the problem is both of these answers are plausible. I think the fact that it's his editor seems a little bit less plausible to me. That's why I was trying to be like, is there any way we can get like any extra evidence about this stuff? Because this one I'm just like, I'm just not out on. Um, well, the thing is that they said that the editor follows this pattern of behavior that literally they had uh, the other account that said the same things, but that was my fucking sister. Like, the, so it's not this, this insane. Right, and people who are close to me who are helping me with my channel, who are trying to help promote my channel and who actually engage on Reddit would go and do these things to try to help my channel. Like, it's just not that wild. And I would send them links of my videos and say, hey, can you go post this yeah, somewhere? Obviously. Can you post this on Reddit for me? There's tons of other people in my community that I sent those to as well saying, hey, I don't have a Reddit account. Can you post this on Reddit? Mm -hmm. Like, that was a, a pretty common thing. Right. And I, I don't know. Um, I think Queeman finding you on the account specifically and like a story about the roommate, it's possible. Um, finding it meaning I was on stream on it for like months. Every single time I was on Reddit, that account was on. Well, yeah, but Queen and... still, Queen still like found it. Like when I'm saying finding it, I mean like Queen got the receipt. That's what I mean by finding it. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not saying that like you were like you went on it super quickly and then you like logged off. I'm mm -hmm. just not sure which is the more plausible answer. And I lean a little bit more towards like it's probably a stock puppet account. If I'm being yeah, honest. I disagree. I lean further away from it, but I just don't think it matters either way. Which I think Kyle and I agree on. It just doesn't even matter. Honest, I just don't know. I can't weigh in either way. Um, when it comes to like the nature of like relationships and sort of stuff, um. I honestly, in a balance of probabilities with enough pattern of people being like, you know what, this is my understanding of like our friendship or any sort of thing. And you're, and you say different things and they feel upset about that. It seems like there's been a bit of a pattern that's emerged. The what? Nope. I've dissected, uh -uh. I dissected Zonia's stream. I dissected all of these fucking people and I can't dissect SAS because I don't have the information on that. But there, if, if it's anything like Zonia, Zonia was a 1000% in the wrong. I refuse to believe that Zonia had any reason to be that inappropriate with their friendship and to manifesto to drop things on Tom to take this fake higher ground and make Tom out to be a bad guy when you're the one going crazy on the internet. Jesus. And it sounds like there's been a number of people that have like burnt relationship with you. So that cues to me that there is some- Burn him, Tom. Dump all these people. I'm telling you right now, save yourself. You're already losing all your hair. Get rid of them all. I'm telling you, block them all. Move the fuck on. Thing going on there. Um, I only obviously. know of one person where this has ever happened. I don't really have romantic relationships online. Or, I don't like, just mean romantic. So I mean like I, friendships as well. Yeah. Okay. I don't so, just mean romantic. Just to be clear. Oh, and so oh, hmm. Who else has a pattern of burning friendships and bridges and chronically admits to lying and cheating all the time and yet is not held to the same standard as Tom who doesn't even have a pattern yet but literally has people who are unhinged being so inappropriate with him. Hmm. It feels a little bit like once again – People will tell you who they are and you're not listening and you're going after people that are literally the least of your fucking problems. Again, with peace and love, none of this matters. You can all be exactly who you want to be. It's just interesting. Interesting that Tom gets, you know, on trial. Hmm. Okay. Block them all, Tom. They don't deserve you. So the reason why I assume that you are lying by mission to some degree is because you leaned on it until I gave you leading questions um, in the conversation. Yeah, that wasn't the conversation uh, I was trying to have. It, it, like, yeah, it was, I, I, I understand. Sure, but, yeah, but it looks like, some sort of way to me. By the way, I do like a bald man. So just FYI, Middle Eastern, I do love a bald man. Some this. sort of way to Jay. I guess right? it, I think it's I reasonable this, that Jay this is thinks you have a tenuous relationship later. with the truth. And so, yeah. No, I don't think it's reasonable that anyone has any of these thoughts if you are in any way a person who's had relationships and knows that things go wrong. Okay. Hunter says, hey, Brittany, can you at least acknowledge that you're missing the point of his lies being brought up? What lies? Which ones? The ones we've already gone over? Nice try, Hunter. Fired. I'm yeah. trying to, like, truly have a conversation with a woman that is not uh, asexual or, like, super sex negative that can actually talk about, like, the philosophical aspects of having, you know, uh, those sorts of things on your stream or, like, the cooming stuff that everybody says is, like, uh, you know, super degenerate shit. I don't think so. And so, yeah, that's, like, that's the stuff that I'm yeah. trying to talk about. And, yes, I right. was trying to avoid that conversation literally because Obviously. I don't want to do this. I, and I think it's fair. The issue is that I think if you have a pattern of that, Wait, and people have on, already... You just said I was trying to avoid the primary conversation about the cooming stuff? No, he was, he was saying that he's... Everybody jumping on and wanting to talk the, about it The again. litigation conversation. Yeah. Is what he was trying to avoid this type of conversation. Happen where oh, we sure. Anything. Yeah, I didn't want to have this conversation either. But I yeah, just no, nobody. I, to be honest, probably if anyone steered it, it's me. I'll just like take full responsibility. Yeah, I'm just saying that um, I, I can understand. Can you understand why Jay might mission, feel like but... you have a tenuous relationship with the truth on certain thing, and therefore that for him might cast a whole bunch of other stuff into suspicion? Because I can kind of understand that. I can understand that there are a bunch of things that I talk because I talk about my life, I talk about my experiences, mm -hmm. I talk about all the things from my past that most people don't talk about, and I just can't prove all of this fucking shit. That like if people start calling me a liar, and there's nothing, there's nothing that I can really do about it, that it's going to start to sound worse and worse over and over and over. So whether yeah. regardless of what it is, if there's somebody like Queeman, where no matter what I say, he's going to claim it's a lie and then blow it yeah, up. Yeah, and I, I, I don't either care. don't want to don't want to share yeah, the personal information or just don't have any way to prove it, then I'm just kind of fucked. Yeah. The reason that I'm saying this about just like um and this just like you might think that I'm just like glazing, I don't really care. This is just I, I hope you don't because I feel like I've been pretty hard on you as well. Um just like in a relationship as well. The reason why I'm saying this about just like I don't give a fuck about what Queenman thinks ever. He's just like a dumb British retard. Don't care. 
just like is really interesting to me in my read of him. Because stupid, Kyla. Stupid. Block him. He li- stupid. Bad opinion. <laughs> Bad opinion. You have a habit of clinging. No. No. Read my mind, Kyla. You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking. You have a pattern. What's your pattern? What's your pattern? You know what I'm thinking, girl. Read my mind. No. Not this one, too. No. I haven't been able to figure out where, how to understand him because he seems like somebody who is definitely engages in confirmation bias and sometimes is, is bad faith in like a classic drama fog. But then other times I see like him actively, 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 absolutely, especially for stuff that he thinks matters in this moment, trying to be good faith. I, literally I, I, said, this last night. Things. I literally said this last night on stream talking to Elder Drowsy where he was saying, uh, JCLK is literally Queenie. And I was like, no, he's not. I was like, no. JCLK is way more honest and like totally different than Queenie. So yeah, I, I agree with this. Yeah. <sighs> right. I no. do think in this case, just like I'm not super happy with the like, no. Um, the goalpost shifting that has occurred. Um, I think it makes me not know what to do with you sometimes. To be honest, I don't know what to think about when you rehash stories to me either. Um, but that's broadly. Do you have any last thoughts on any of this? Just like, I don't know if you're so. Why are they? No, I'm calling it right now. No. JSOC is not interesting. Why are people obsessed with him? See, he's got the charisma that people like, but he's such a little liar. He's going to fuck you up, girl. Just like everybody else. Given the opportunity, he's going to fuck you over. Watch for patterns. Watch for patterns. Uh, oh, I still want to go through like everything. So I want to go back to Tom's comments and basically oh his defenses God. of them. Um, I believe with the, she wants my dick. He said that was a self-deprecating comment. Mm-hmm. Could you explain that? Me? Yeah, Tom, could you explain the, the basically we could just pull up the screenshots and we could go yeah, through the defenses I, like, of those again. I, 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 yeah, that like it was obvious that she was calling me creepy and weird. And so I... I don't know how else to take it except for that it's obviously like i'm just saying like obviously she doesn't want my dick obviously she's not into me so i don't literally like what is the other possible implication that i'm i'm coming out with information i'm leaking information that she's obsessed with me and actually wants my dick or like what is the other what is the other narrative besides yeah we already settled this why are we bringing it up again being self-deprecating that you're trying to get to her in a sexual way because she's shown disgust for you trying what? to get to her in a sexual way by yeah you're trying to like her you're directing sexual like comments at her like you when um, you say get to her you mean needling well, right? i don't you know, know. Like, I, I wouldn't her. i probably wouldn't needle somebody by explicitly saying you're begging for my cock right that's probably not a way to what? needle somebody right uh oh so you think that he was sorry i just want to make sure i'm understanding you do you think that he was trying to head on kelly jean with that like, like yeah, he was trying to be sexually disgusting to her because she already explained that she was repulsed and so yeah. he was just leaning into that but not no. in a self-deprecating yeah. way i think he was just trying to gross her out as much as he could in a sex best way yeah to upset upset her using like sexual like explicit stuff no it's not even the same category it's literally not even the same category. It was meant to be yeah, like exactly. pestering her and, in a sexual and, way. But yeah, no, so it's, it's not in a sexual way. Like not for sexual gratification. It was a sexual joke for not gratifying. It was for it was a troll comment with sex as the topic, but not in a sexual way. It was like in my eyes, yeah, self-deprecating. Like obviously somebody. Right. It's not. He's not making a sexual joke. He's not like hello, like sitting up there talking about you just pulling up their Instagram and just saying like they uh they were engaging in cultural appropriation that I'm creepy and I'm weird that yeah like that was the idea is that yes this is like uh it's obvious this is not the case that she's not actually obsessed with me or my dick okay I, I don't understand what you say all the time there because I believe the the comparison you made before was you were like this is the same as telling somebody to suck my dick but I was saying it, in a, yes I was saying in a sense of like the fact that it's obviously not serious and so because it's not serious like that it doesn't have the same implication as if it was serious and you were actually telling somebody to suck your dick, then that would be like pretty. No, Hunter says, regardless of it being gratification or not, it's still sexual. No, it's not. It actually changes the context. It literally changes the context of the jokes. Again, first of, this is again, going back to the categories, right? Okay, we're going back to categories. Okay, telling someone to suck your dick Okay, it's like telling someone, fuck you, bro. Fuck me, fuck you. It's not the same thing. Tom making those jokes at Kelly Jean is like him trolling, not him being sexually a pest. Their contexts are so different. Like the contexts are not even the same. It changes the intent 1000%. And the fact that you guys are not paying attention to that tells me that you're thinking, oh, it's just blue. It's not just blue. It's a shade of blue right? He is allowed to make jokes at people, but the context is what matters. It can be a sexual joke or sexually have the context of sexuality without it being inappropriate, right? 
Like, again, you're like, oh, it's blue. It involves a sex joke. But not all sex jokes are sexual. Right? So these are very different things. Okay? These are very different things. Okay? Yeah. Fuck is a sexual word, too. When you're telling someone to go fuck themselves, you're sexually harassing them. Stop it, Shadow B. I assume you're being sarcastic. Obviously, it's totally, like, not, right? That's not what's happening. I assume Shadow B is being sarcastic. Okay? So, again... See, I wouldn't have apologized for that if I'm going to be real with you. If I had done it, it would have been within my values. Now, if I'd done it and it wasn't within my values, then I would have apologized. And that's what Tommy said to decide. Was it within his values to make that kind of a joke or is it not within his values? If it's not within his values, then he shouldn't have made the joke. But if it's within his values, then he should have made the joke. But then he has to make sure he's following me TOS and he has to make sure he keeps his job and he has to make sure a lot of things. You know what I mean? So a lot of this goes into it. Is the action you're taking the problem? Or is it the fact that the audience didn't, this audience didn't take it well and now they're twisting on it, twisting it to make you look worse than you were because they know that it's going to make you look bad because so everyone is so bad faith. I'm just saying in a different group, in a different bubble, they would have understand Tom's point. Bad sexual harassment. But if you're okay. not actually telling somebody to suck your dick, then I wouldn't. Renix says with peace and love, Bernie, is there a reason why Tom gets an infinite, infinite, infinite charitability? Um, because the evidence points to his favor. Like, it just points to his favor, right? So, like, I know you're being weird in chat and you're trying to catch me because I can tell by the way you type because I know patterns. But he literally, the evidence points in his favor. And everyone is saying it doesn't. You do not know how to read the situation. You are not giving the right evidence. There is absolutely no receipts. All the evidence points in Tom's favor. And the only people who don't, you know, obviously the only people who are trying to bring up receipts are getting shot down. So you better bring up a better receipt. Okay, Hunter says the point is that in the context, Kelly expressing her discomfort of him gooning over her. He wasn't gooning over her. So you're wrong there. So now, see, you're fired. I'm going to spank you. His response is to say that she's begging him for his dick constantly. None of that is true. He wasn't gooning over her on stream. I saw the stream. It was a 17 second clip. He wasn't gooning over her. And even if he was, He's allowed to. And if she doesn't like it from him, they don't have to be fucking friends. If he wants to maintain a friendship with her, he can change his behavior. But like he wasn't gooning over her on stream. And if you think that's what happened, you can leave the fucking chat because you're too goddamn, da too goddamn dumb to have the conversation. He was not in any way gooning over her on stream. That 17 second clip that she made a big deal out of and then took back when I was on that panel with her, and then decided it wasn't that big of a deal? No, bitch. Absolutely not. No, bitch. Consider it sexual where, harassment. Where else in these messages were you not serious? Uh, that I was were actually going to keep you say, defend myself my against what? She's like, a public ethos. She exists for objectification. Was that a serious statement or an unserious statement? No, it's obviously a fucking joke. Rooted in the fact that it's partially true that she has sexually explicit content online and then claims she doesn't want to be objectified. Obviously, it's a two-layer joke. All jokes have a sense of humor and a sense of truth. So obviously, he's being a joke, hyperbolically being bigger than the joke. But obviously, it's true that Kelly Jean has no right to tell people not to objectify her online in the way that she's being objectified when she literally has explicit content online. You cannot pick and choose how the world reacts to you. You can only have your own feelings about it. And then Tom can decide to adhere to those feelings or not. I cannot control if you sexually objectify me. I can only control if I block you from my stream or if I end my friendship with you. I cannot control if you sexually objectify me. It doesn't make any sense. You cannot have your cake and eat it too, people. That was a serious statement that was made very okay. hyperbolically. All right. Perfect. Uh right. Hyperbolically serious. It's very specific. This is a very specific point Tom is trying to make. And it is true. It's not sexual harassment. It's public content. Serious statement or unserious statement? Serious statement. Okay, I will keep Kelly's tits on my screen every stream. Serious statement or unserious statement? Unserious statement. So you made two unserious statements apparently and two serious statements. But you defended the I will keep Kelly's tits on my screen comment in... It's a perfectly fine comeback, obviously. Because again, it's that whole like, don't tell me how to live my life. When you're obviously being a little bitch about it. Kelly is one of the most bad faith bitches in this sphere. She literally smears people all the time. She moves goalposts. Her and Jay Stock should get married. They're basically the same person. I refuse to let these people engage in such bad faith when I get to observe them. And no, I will not talk to you. Thank you for asking. And it's because you are so fucking bad faith. 
It is so fucking bad faith. This whole conversation has been hours of me proving how fucking bad faith you all are. I will not hang out with people that move goalposts, that bullshit around. Kelly Jean on that panel that I was on literally said she wasn't even that bothered. I don't even need that apology. I don't even want these things. Then stop fucking opening your mouth. Tom needs to stop engaging with these fucking bad faith people. Stop trying to build a bridge with people that are waiting for their opportunity to fucking blow it up. At least one place, if not two. You said DMCA me if you want me to take them off. Yeah, I may have. Like, as I said, so, so it was like that a seems like a serious comment. Have about, that, not like, sit down to three in. serious comments and one unserious one. I believe the other one was serious too. And you were just trying to gross her out, trying to get in her head because you were pissed off. I think you were just Hunter, unless you're a YouTuber, and especially if you're a YouTuber, I don't want to engage with you. I'm a YouTuber in this sphere. I engage with these people. I've made content with these people. I've watched hours of these streams. Do not fucking come at me and be like, oh, you're missing context. You're missing context. I am the streamer. You are the peon. Get it together. You are the person who doesn't know my work. You are new to my chat. I don't know who the fuck you are, but you can go watch my past streams covering this bullshit and I'm not going to stand here and have you in my comment section like, oh, you're missing context. Your mom is missing the context. I asked her last night when I was with her and you absolutely do not know what I know and you're absolutely wrong and my own chat can call you out right now. You're being outrageous. Sit down. You're just mad and you came in and you decided, yeah, she doesn't like sexual uh, objectification. I'm going to objectify her as hard as By the way, none of my audience is a peon. All my audiences are kings and queens and theys. Just Hunter's the peon. Everybody else is on the same level. Just Hunter is peon. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, okay. The, the arguments that, uh, the other arguments that you're reading are arguments about whether or not it's right or wrong to pull up somebody's Instagram. So those are... Like, obviously, what? yes, put in a very hyperbolic manner, but there are obviously arguments about, yes, whether it's I think even the, the, first the unserious ones, you know, when just like seriously had a criticism of you and called you a sex pest, but obviously he was being like hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. I feel like you were doing a more extreme version of that, even with the unserious comments. So when you said that she's an ethot, that's all she's good for. Obviously, you don't actually think Kelly is only good for that, mm -hmm. but also to some degree, you do think she's an ethot. You do think she should just be fucking fine with the fact that, like, you do feel these things as well, right? Yes. That's my understanding. So the even time. the unserious comments. I mean, both things are true. <clears throat> she's not just an ethot, but worse than an ethot, she's just. A crybaby who moves the goalpost and makes it about her and throws tantrums. That's so unattractive. Still have like a genuine criticism and barb to them. Again, it, what, that, that is my legitimate. point was not that that's like her value as a human. I was saying that that's her value as like a content creator. That that's why she's on streams. That that's why like she would be talking. Mikey with the super chat says booze in the chat for Hunter. <laughs> Hunter, don't come into this fucking space, bro. If you don't get it, you won't survive here to destiny or that's why she would be in the sphere as somebody that would be pulled up consistently is because yes like that's her value as a content creator that's how she got her clout that's yeah hunter got blocked and you'll be fucking next everybody get ready this is my safe space on the internet okay all the evidence points in tom's favor if you can show me some goddamn evidence that doesn't i'm here with you but right now, that's not what's happening. And I'm not friends with Tom personally. But I've been in this space long enough to know you guys are fucking bullshitting right now. Okay? Don't fuck with me. I'm better at my job than you'll ever be. That's why I'm doing it and you're not. Hunter. Bitch. Okay, so that was also, you did a number on her because that was like the first time she'd ever camped up on my stream. And th this was the outcome. It's kind of messed up. Um, so she doesn't do that. She doesn't promote her shit on my stream. She doesn't talk about it. She essentially, uh, from all indications, seems kind of grossed out that she does it in some way. Like, I think she really likes the cosplay, but the sexual element is something she like, begrudgingly uh, accepts because it's how you make money, right? And it's how you get to do something you're passionate about. Okay. Yeah, so again, she was just debating. She was debating counterpoints. She was debating a bunch of people. Literally, like in the Destiny community, she doesn't come up. She just debates, right? She, she wasn't really debating him, though. And she even admitted in that conversation that she was just throwing insults at him, that she was just like going well, at Because he came in and, and insulted her, right? Okay, that's fine. I'm saying that... Like, like she, she, she her counterpoints like... insinuated that she fucked Destiny. That was the only reason she was on stream. Okay, I'm not I'm not saying that it's bad for her to insult people. I don't know why you're justifying it right now. That's not relevant. The point what? is, is that... You you're, were... you're acting like this has something to do with her being sexual. It doesn't. She was just arguing with people. And yeah, probably insulting them. Okay, I'm not... I'm a bit lost see, see, see how JSOC confuses people? And then I, he's like, how do you not get it, bro? How do you not get it, bro? The point is, is that, like, yes, you're saying, like, oh, she's just on there debating. And I'm saying, like, from my perspective, the last yeah, thing Yeah, so that was, was what her was content was, was for. That's, that's like her up. content was, was shut the fuck arguing up. with people, shut having up. arguments. That she's on there just debating. But the last two things that I saw of her is her arguing with counterpoints, just ripping into him. And insane. Sound with the super chest says, bows to Brittany, Simon Kung Fu. Let's go. 
Let's go. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Holding him over and over. The thing I just saw maybe a couple of days or a week before okay. was her ripping into Anna and uh and like same thing, like making a bunch no, of I'm asking you who introduced the sexual uh, like a, a dirty No, Matthew, I'm not going to engage in your weird Tom has power over his audience debate. No, I'm not engaging with this. I don't believe in this. I don't believe bigger content creators can have. No, I don't believe this. Matthew, I will ban you too. Because you're like fucking weird. You're in a weird bubble. I don't like it. No, this is like when smaller YouTube creators like fucking Keffels goes after bigger content creators. And then she's like, I can't believe these bigger content creators are retaliating against me. I'm a small content creator. No, if you're an adult on the internet engaging with anybody on the internet, you're fucking on your own. Grow the fuck up. Okay, grow the fuck up. No one is coming to save you. Save your goddamn self. Okay, if you're a grown up on the internet, figure it the fuck out. And at the same time, if you as an individual find yourself to be more compromised, I give you my sympathy and I will treat you thusly. But you better be careful. If you're saying Tom has power over his audience, like bro, okay, relax, okay? Relax. Brittany, what is your thought about John em emulating certain personality traits of a certain streamer? I have no idea what you're talking about and I don't care. Everyone in this space, you know, find someone they like and trying to copies their style. Everyone has a relationship with posting content. All I know is that JSOC has no fucking, like, he has obviously some sort of intent in being here and he can make that decision to be here, but it's obviously bad faith. Whatever it is, it's bad faith. Uh like a garbage person or like talking about her tattoos over and over. I think you guys pulled up her Instagram and insulted her. Like this is the implication. Nope, or this that is never the, happened. That literally never happened. Okay, maybe it didn't happen. But that, this is the, um, this like, is like- You're just the, gonna say it. Uh, from what I, yes, that's what I read on the Reddit post about that. Yeah, it was thing, a lie. So, um, but anyways, yes. Why the, look into it though, if you're gonna make that allegation on this stream? I, I'm taking like the Oh my God, JSTOC right? has no place to tell Tom, you better look into it if you're gonna make the allegation on the stream. When JSTOC literally made hours of allegations. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. JSOC will literally do this to Tom for hours. And then if Tom makes one mistake, JSOC's like, um, you better have some evidence before you say this on stream. Where's your evidence, JSOC? Where's your evidence, J bitch? I'm taking your no, because with the juice. This has nothing to do with the oh, Hold on. Oh, just to be clear, we have to immediately said, do have to let Tom respond. But like I, I mean, yeah, we do have to let Tom respond. So like, let's just make sure Tom okay, can answer. Ahead, Tom. But yeah, I'm fine with him correcting stuff. Like if I get it wrong, that's fine. But uh, yeah, but like I would just like just be direct. Just just answer just like questions super directly because I think I understand that you're like doing the extra explaining. But to be honest, I think it muddies the water. Okay, just try to be direct. Okay, the, yes, the, the like the debate idea is like yes, this is my input. This is my impression of her is that she's just insulting people and making fun of people, and this is how she engages with other people, and she justified these things on Destiny stream. So like yes, my way of engaging with her, see at, at the time in my head seemed like it was like just a, a way that she engages that it would be okay. Obviously, I was wrong, but that's yeah, my in my head at the time Wait. It didn't seem all that outrageous. Okay, so she engages by pulling up people's Instagrams or focusing on their appearance. No, like, he means being mean. When yeah. He says I'm engaging in the way like, she does. He doesn't so mean when you pull up her Instagram, Instagram to be mean. No, are you talking about talking with these about comments? Oh my god, Jay Stuck, I'm gonna... Bro. We're talking about the chat comments, right? He's now. talking about the comments. Okay. Obviously, being uh, being mean in a sexualized way is very different. We all know this, nope. right? Nope. Sure. And so nope. This is going back to how we started this. Is nope. that like, this is how I would analogize it? So, it's only different in a sense, but not always different in terms of category. Right? So, yes, it's all a joke. All jokes are blue. What kind of jokes are they? Well, okay, so the joke is meant to be mean and about, meant about, it's meant to sink down to Kelly's level because Kelly is one of the meanest girls in this space, right? She's one of the meanest, meanest, meanest girls in this space, okay? She's on no one's side but her own and she's willing to throw anyone under the bus as needed and she literally gets in fights with everybody. So, okay, so Kelly Jean has a very mean way of joking, criticizing, getting into fights with people, and then plays victim every fucking time. That's Kelly Jean's MO. That's her pattern. Okay? So then Tom, when engaging with Kelly Jean, goes down to Kelly Jean level, which is why I'm saying don't engage with Kelly Jean. Block her. Block J Jaystock. Block everybody that forces you to go down to a lower level to engage with them. Block them. Right? That's my recommendation. If you have to go lower to engage, block. Because if you go higher and they can't engage with you, which they can't, they're useless. Okay? Right? 
So, oh yeah, Abby says, correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't Kelly gone after women's appearances? Dude, I've heard Kelly go after people for everything. I don't want to hear her talk, okay? I want to hear her talk about how Tom was unfair. Tom makes a joke that coincides with the context of the situation, which is in relation to him being allegedly a sex pest. So he goes after Kelly with a derogatory sexual joke, obviously meaning to be a meme on the fact that people think he's a coomer, but isn't any more than a person who's just into people, right? So he jumps into it hardcore, makes the obvious fucking joke that any person could see that isn't fucking bad faith, and then makes the joke. Now, the joke itself was obviously meant to be a joke on the fact that people think he's a sex pest when he's not. So he's like, oh, I'm gonna lean into it hard. Funny. Maybe inappropriate to you. I don't give a fuck. Personally, I'm pretty neutral, right? I'm pretty neutral. So if you think it's offensive, cool. Be offended, bitch. You and my mom can go to church together, okay? If Tom regrets doing it, cool. He can regret it. That's his business, okay? We all can have difference of opinion, but everyone's acting like there's a black and white end all be all that 100% wrong or right. Girl, where do you live, girl? This is all subjective, girl. Grow the fuck up something like suck my dick is that like yes this is a sexual thing that you're saying but it's obviously so ironic that you're not actually telling you, the person you would never say dick. i would never say tom is sucking my dick all the time that's not how you make that that insult yeah right? it is sure it is why not who the fuck is j stock he doesn't even know what drugs are who's j stock he hasn't even left his mom's basement right again if that is obviously ironic based on what it is that she's saying on stream about me at the time that obviously i think what you just said it's like the suck context. my dick thing Correct. The irony of it, the fact that it's not actually a real statement. You're not actually telling them to suck your dick. And then in this case, I'm not actually telling her to that. that I'm not actually saying that she was obsessed with me or that she was uh, that she wanted my dick. I, I think that was obvious. I'm yeah, I don't. Clear. Neither of us is arguing that you actually mean this. It's about what you're trying to do with the comment. And you've argued that it's like self-deprecating. And now you're saying because she was mean, it was okay for you to be mean back. So I'm now you have two yes, different, two different for it's everything. It's all of the things. He's self-deprecating because he's calling himself a sex pest. You fucking idiot. And then he's also going after Kelly because it's mean. It's both. It's self-deprecating because he's leaning into the sex pest, which is a self-deprecating joke, right? Because he's like, yeah, I'm a sex pest. And then he's being mean and going down to Kelly's level to hit her with a joke that Kelly herself would make about somebody else, but in a different way. And Kelly own way patience for making this comment not just that one comment there's a number of comments that we're talking about that comment is uh is obviously like yes very hyperbolic and i'm not justifying it I'm not saying this is why it's okay i'm explaining my, my frame of mind as <clears> I'm, <throat> I'm saying it. okay i feel like like we've I, already been over the idea right, that i should say these things and i've already else. said this so is there like another point? only if tom doesn't want to say these things and only if it breaks listen the only person who can tell me how to talk on stream is youtube after that, I'll take it into consideration, but no guarantees. To going over this outside of that? Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to get those. Shadowy says, imagine having to explain a joke like this. Bro, it's like, even the autists in my audience get it. How do these people not get it? Not, that's a joke too, because people with autism get a lot of jokes. You guys are great. <laughs> Separate motivations out of the way. Uh, you're saying they're for different comments. Nobody believes that this is ironic. I think, I... I believe that everybody who watches this will understand that she did this specifically because she's mean, because you think it's okay to sexualize her in this way because of how grossed out she was by it. Um, probably because of her proximity to me would be my assumption. Okay. What do you mean? Sorry, I, I followed you into that. Like, because of the sex best comments I've made, because I, I pointed this out originally. For the record, Kayla in chat, neither Kelly nor JSTOC are acting like ones, right? This is, they're not playing a one game as far as I can tell, right? Like it's, it's I, if you want to joke about them being one behavior, I'm into the joke. But if you want a real answer, like none of them are displaying activities of ones. They just seem like twos to me. Uh, like narcissistic twos, like traumatized twos. You know what I mean? But they could, I, I just, I don't have enough information to think they're ones, right? That I felt a little bit bad that I'd made the sex pest comments to begin with because Tom came in and did all of this. I assume mostly because he was angry at me, which just made it weirder that he was directing it at Kelly. Yeah, I, was, uh, yeah I, I mean, I have a hard time. Um, I have a hard time desexualizing the comments, obviously. Um, weird, weird take, weird take, weird take. So weird not to desexualize them. But also, peace and love if you are. Okay, you're kidding, Kayla. Just checking, girl. I just didn't want to, I wanted to give a serious answer if it was serious. Okay, I love that Kyla is saying this about herself because I personally, like, don't agree. But maybe it's because I also grew up with, like, brothers and boys. And, like, I've been called a boy my whole life. I mean, I am a man. You know what I mean? Because they're about dicks. Um, and stuff. I don't think that you're seriously saying that you, I, I believe you that you're the butt of the joke and that you're like, she obviously doesn't want They're both the butt of the joke. That's the joke. 
thick. Um, I think like the nature of it gets inherently sexualized when you had pulled her up on screen to kind of like all go out with the coomer time. She said she was uncomfortable. And then, um, oh God, now I need to pull up the order of these messages. Uh, I'm going to take here. Um, yeah, Kelly is begging for my dick. I understand that you're joking about it. You don't actually think that she's begging for your dick, but it also, it's hard to get away that it's sexual when the entire premise of what she's upset about is about her Instagram, which is in and of itself sexual. In oh, so it is a sexual Instagram. So maybe she should take it the fuck down. Erudite is sheltered. I mean, Kyla is sheltered. That's the whole point. I feel like we're just watching a bunch of sheltered people who have never engaged in different kinds of humor. And that's a bubble. Bubbles, like we do shelter ourselves, right? And I love Kyla, but obviously like th she's not, no. Like this is what I'm saying. This is a bubble and it's fine to be in this bubble. There's not wrong. You know what I mean? But it's not also true. So again, like it's only, Tom has to decide if he wants to keep engaging and adhering to these people's behaviors or if he just wants to do his own thing. Like I'm really lucky. Obviously I've built my whole platform on my own. Like I don't have to rely on a community to stay afloat. I think sometimes people in this space feel like they need to maintain these relationships to stay afloat. And maybe they do, but I don't obviously. And I recommend going that way. It's better to be independent and do your own thing than like rely on those communities. And same with like Papa God does the same thing. Like a lot of us do the same thing. It's better to have an independent platform that invites people on when appropriate. But seriously, like this, yeah. Like if your business is writing on the fact that other people have to approve your jokes, mm-mm. Sure. Yeah, sure. And as I've said, like I've already admitted, it's not not, okay. not a good look. Just in the moment, she's in the middle of Tara says, I have a couple of friends who cannot desexualize jokes. I know some people do pro some people do struggle with it. It is a real struggle for people, but that that's why it sucks to like, I can't adhere to their I always say, like, oh, I definitely recommend you don't watch my stream or like watch my stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. Manta says this whole thing was initially about the Instagram, so pathetic. That's why I got on Jay's Jstock stream to call them out. You too, Mantis. You don't have to listen to me, but stop talking to Jstock. He's useless and he's just going to fuck with you, bro. He's going to use everything against you. Don't. You too, girl. Okay. Um, Just a heads up. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Just a heads up. Tom sent me a DM. Okay, I'm pulling it up on my phone so I don't actually put it on stream because fuck you bitches. Okay, I just want to confirm something. Okay, okay, so Tom sent me his criminal record and proof of that criminal record. I'm not going to, you know, obviously show it on stream or anything. Uh, looks real, looks right. Everything is correct. Um, Everything is what he said it was so far. On probation, definitely did these crimes. Everything JSTOC is saying, like, this never happened. He doesn't believe, like, Tom did these crimes. I mean, it's all here. I see burglary. Uh, I see the confinement. I see probation time. I see, uh, I see the credit card stuff. I see the fraud. And I see the probation possibilities. Okay, I see all of it. So I don't know why JSTOC kept saying, like, um, it's not real. I don't believe he ever did these things. Like, I'm looking at a record. I mean, you can believe it or not believe it. I mean, I know I'm just saying shit on stream. I could be lying. Uh, but it looks like everything Tom said is on this. I don't want to say anything else, you know, in case. But looks real. Looks good. I've got, an, you know, a name, an address. Obviously, I don't want to dox anybody. So I don't, obviously, that's not going to get JSTOC to believe it. But I am now one more person who's seen it. So Jay Stock saying like Tom is lying about this. Like I, okay. I, Tom is the one giving me evidence. Tom has the receipts that hold up. Tom is the one with the evidence. Jay Stock brings fake receipts. They get demolished. He claims they're still real. With peace and love. Okay. With peace and love. I've seen enough. I'm content in that regard. Okay. I don't think Tom is lying. I have no reason to think he's lying about his criminal record. Jay Stock just hasn't left his mom's basement, okay? He's just like living this little sheltered bubble. It's what it is. You know what I mean? Debating somebody on stream, and that's kind of what I'm engaging with and not really like thinking about the bigger picture of all of it, so yeah. Gotcha. Sure. Um, another lie that I forgot about was Tom said he got permission from everybody who was on the list and then said he didn't know what the list was about, didn't know what the purpose of the list was. 
the list. Different lies. He knows what the list is. And he okay. also lied about getting permission from everybody on the list. What would he need permission for people to be on the list for if he didn't know what the list was? I, I, so from what I understand, there was one you, person You do know what the list is, said, right, Tom? What, there was one person who said that they, uh, that I never talked to them about the list, and then they DM'd me and talked to me about it, and then said that they were going back onto your stream to clarify that there was some implicit, uh, uh, like, uh, consent there from did she not go back on because those dms have been leaked now so they're that um, even that conversation no is not that i'm open. aware of really so that that didn't happen she, she so at, at bare minimum you're saying that before you put this person on a list you no, said not before. you asked them can i put you on a list no not so, before I, so I, I does consent sure operate in a, in a does consent operate like post hoc like after the fact yeah and so, so if I'm gonna, yeah if i'm going to continue to meme on this if i'm going to continue to bring it up if i'm going to continue to make a joke out of it i would want to make sure that yeah those people are okay with it especially as more people started making a joke out of it yeah i want to make sure that the other people who were included were okay with it and those other people were joking about it and memeing on it and posting it and so thomas welcome to memberships welcome welcome so that was me getting like some sort of input. Apparently, Iko was also on the list and didn't get asked. I, it's two people. I hate this. I hate this whole conversation. What a brain dead fucking conversation. I, I, I have I, spoken to Iko about those sorts of things. So I'm. Weren't the other people like famous people though? Yeah, there was like Pamela Anderson, Amaranth. Like obviously, I, yeah, I didn't. Okay, those I might have mistook it, but I thought the joke was that actually nobody on the list had given had been talked to because they're obviously he didn't. Reach out to Pamela Anderson no, and were, get no, that from her. There were other people. I thought like, that was the joke. I was also on the list. Apparently. Apparently. Yeah, so there were people who were my friends that were on the list. The one person that wasn't my friend was seven. And so what's the list? The list. What, the list of the list. hot bangable people? No, it was literally nothing. So it was like uh, um, there was some sort of confusion where uh, seven had posted a joke and that like she had posted a joke on Twitter. I mistook it. I misunderstood it. I got offended. She came and told me, "Hey, it's just a joke. Like my bad." So I was like, "Oh, okay." So I. Uh, I pulled up a, I typed up a list with a bunch of different names on it, pulled it onto screen real quick, and then as I show it on screen, I erase Seven's name and say, well, I guess I fucked up with Seven, and then just moved on and ended stream. So there wasn't, like, an actual thing to it. I was drunk at the time. It didn't actually, like, it was just kind of a fucking thing that I thought was funny, and yeah. But the, then other people started posting the list around, and it kind of became a meme that there was a list. Oh, wait, what is the list for? What does it mean to be on the list? It literally doesn't mean Women you wanted to fuck. It, like, it literally doesn't right? mean yes, anything. Obviously. It, it, okay. I just, I, I just, like, I feel like it's not being explicit, and I need to understand what the list is for. Is the list, even if it's a meme, I get you that it's a joke, is the joke that this is a list of women that you want to fuck? That's and like it's, a, like, it's a joke. It's stuff. not like totally a joke. Okay, it, yes, okay. I feel like I, w I want Tom to explain to me the list in private almost because I can't tell. There seems to be, okay. They, I'm going to project something onto Tom that might be incorrect. There's a neuro, my neurodivergent brain really wants to be explicit with categorization because was it a list of people you wanted to fuck or was it a list of people you thought were hot or was it a list of people for something else or was it a list? Because sometimes the way Tom is answering, I can't tell if it's actually is what people are thinking it is or if it's something different that like they can't say or if it's something, it feels like, you know what I mean? It feels... It feels something here feels like a lie. See, it feels like there's almost like not a, like, like he can't just say it because he almost wants to say something else. But if he says what it is, it might sound worse than what they think it is or better than what it is. Like, what is it? Is it just a list of people you would want to fuck? Because like, honestly, yeah, it's not just saying like, oh, yeah, if the opportunity came up for sure, which is not normal. But also, if it's a group of your friends, I don't know. I fuck my friends, so I don't know. Like, in the past, obviously, I'm married. But in my past, like, obviously, the people I've been with sexually were people that I considered friends. So I think your friends are the, like, unless your friends are, like, siblings, which I have three of my inner circle are, like, my siblings. I don't fuck them. But all my other friends that don't feel my, like my siblings, like, you know what I mean? So I can't tell if it's, like, a sex, like, a neutral, like, we made a list. Like, also, don't you just make, I can't tell. Something feels weird. I refuse. Something feels weird. I don't know. I just, um, it feels something, you know, you know, it sounds something. Alex says that's like teenage diary list material. Yeah. Something, something, right. You know, uh, pool, that's not funny. And if you say it again, I'm going to delete you just cause like, I understand edgy jokes, but I don't like that joke. Um, yeah, just like Stephanie says, it sounds like a list of people he wanted to coon Coom, sorry, Coom, not Coon. Oh my God. Coom to on stream as a joke. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like a list of people you want to bring up on stream to look at. Louis says, look, if you have friends, we all know who we are attracted to and why that would, why would that be weird? Yeah, I think like the list makes it weird, but like, I don't know if it makes it that weird. I don't know. It doesn't seem that weird. 
yeah. it's kind of the implication, but also there's like a ton of people that I'm friends with on the list. That's obviously like not the case. So it's. Yeah. And so then just like your concern is, is it that he pulled? Yeah. Why are they being weird about that? Just be like, yeah, but, but like also it's not a real list. You know, up on stream at all and made the joke, or does he now regularly no, make reference was to the he, list? It was, no, my concern was that when he when it was brought up on Wick, he said one that he had permission from everybody who was on the list to be on it, and he also said that he didn't know what the list was. Yes, that's still the case. Yeah. That what's funny about it is that there isn't like an actual meaning to the list; that it's not an actual list of things that it's or people. Okay, so why would you why would you lead into the meme that we both know about with the anyone Destiny's ever fucked before thing? Wait, no, no, wait, hold on. How does this? Apply? What, what does that mean? What is that from? That mean, anyone hold Destiny's on. ever fucked? Was that a what list of that women that Destiny fucked? Was that a list of women that no, Destiny No, no, okay, I'm so saying is... on that, hold on. I'm saying on that list was the words anyone Destiny's ever fucked before. Where did those words oh, come from? Oh, that's from another meme. Yes, that's from no, another sure. meme. But yeah, what, what's the list meme on that meme? What's the list meme on that meme? Is that what you said? Yes. Every girl who has ever talked to Destiny. So when you put those words on there, what is that referring to? That, like, that they think that I want to have sex with all of Destiny's exes or girls that he's had sex with. Why? Okay. But you, you're unaware of the meme this comes from? The picture of me holding a, a list that says anybody that Destiny's ever fucked. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay, what? that's where you pulled it from, right? That's the meme. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was at the added at the time. I think that was something that was added way later. But yeah, this is a meme that I carried on for a while, so I'm not. I don't remember okay. exactly. And also, <laughs> I don't get it. Well, I'm missing something. What? Are you guys getting it? Mantis says it's not that complicated. It was just females on a list to leave it open to interpretation. Maybe it's to signal that these chicks are hot or just some chicks. Like it's not malicious. Yeah, but like, why was it written? Is this meme court, Zim? Like, why was it written, right? Like, why was there a list? I'm so confused on the list. I don't get it. Was it just a list of like, is it just a list of people? He, like, I just, something doesn't, something, see, someone's lying. Something's not, I'm lost. I'm too lost, so someone's lying. It's either Tom or it's them. I don't trust Jay, Jay Stock because he's making an insinuation that Tom wants to fuck everyone Destiny fucked. That's not that hard if Destiny fucks everybody, right? Then everybody in the arena is somebody Destiny fucked. Like, it's if Destiny fucks everybody, okay, whether they're progressive or conservative, it doesn't matter. That means anyone you fuck will be some, if you're in the same sphere. But obviously, Destiny hasn't literally fucked everybody. Obviously. So, like, I don't like Jay Stock insinuating that Tom wants to fuck everybody that Destiny fucked. Because then that's insinuating that Destiny, like, that's such a weird thing. So I don't trust that. But then I don't trust how Tom is answering either. And I want to know what he's trying to say. Kay says, hearing Brittany explain simple social situations like this makes me really, makes it really seem like these people are all autistic in this space for real. Oh, they're all definitely neurodivergent. Don't fuck with, like, they're obviously neurodivergent, right? No one's having these, like, these conversations don't happen like this in person. Manja says it was at the end of the stream. He was drinking and it was in cheeky mood. So he's fucking around to delete seven from the list. And then he, then it, then he ended stream. So is he drunk on stream making the list? Cause then that makes total social context sense. So he's like, guys, Hey guys, I'm going to make a list of all the girls. <laughs> and then he's like doing the list. And then, you know what I mean? Is that the, is that how the list came about? How did the list happen? Was he on stream, drunk, then made the list as a joke? Because then all of that makes sense. Why the fuck is this confusing? Kay says this is chronically online shit. Literally, what? <clears throat> yes, he was drinking. This is so dumb. Why isn't he saying that? Tom used to say, hey, I was drunk. I thought it was funny to make the list. Maybe I shouldn't have made a list. But yes, if he did it on stream especially, then why are we all confused? What is happening? Who's lying to me? Is somebody lying to me? It could not, this is a nothing burger if it's what you're saying it is. It sounds like he never even made the list. It was in the context of that stream. Are you fucking shitting me right now? You're saying drunk Tom got on stream and made a dumb list and everyone's blowing it out of, pro yeah, did he type it up on stream? Did he type it up on stream? Because <clears throat> then what the fuck is the problem? He said that? He does say it? What the fuck? This is a nothing burger. Oh my God. Bro, what? Uh, just to be clear, to go back to some previous stuff, we are agreeing it was a meme that many people were repeating, right? Okay, so when you when you said that you didn't know what the list was, you were lying because you do know what the list is in reference to. 
correct? Okay. It's not in reference to anything. That's the point, is that the, it doesn't actually, like, it's not actually a list of girls that I would have sex with. Most of them are, like, just friends that I've just typed up real quick just because I, I thought it was funny, but it wasn't actually, like, a, a list of anything. It wasn't actually referencing a thing. And then name... Okay, <clears throat> so the reason that's not translating, I think I know what he's trying to say, but when he says, like, oh, it's not a list of anything, okay, but the action, the human action to write up the list has got to come from somewhere, right? It has to come from somewhere. So did it come from, oh, I thought it'd be funny to make a list, like, it has to come from somewhere, right? So where did it come from? They're like, that is the part where I'm like, see, that doesn't make any sense because like nobody just writes a list for no reason. So it has to come from somewhere. Where is the, Where did it come from? <clears throat> it's got added to it. Just as like even some girls with the Emmy and say, hey. I was watching the stream live. Okay, what was the what was the vibe? Like, what was the, does anyone have the clip? Can anyone timestamp me the clip of that stream? Is it still available? Because then I can read the tone to you and we can throw it out the window. Yeah, is it a Mean Girls burn book? Stop. Oh my God, nail. Is it like, what was the point? But the Mean Girls burn book has a purpose. So you put a list together. What was the purpose of the list? Interesting, but no one brought up the stream clip. Where, yeah, where is the stream clip? <clears throat> I'm offended that I'm not on the list. And I'd say, okay. And so I typed their name on it, but it wasn't like. Okay, so people were like, I'm offended I'm not on the list. Brittany, you're autistic. It's a joke. But the joke has to have a punchline. What's the joke? What's the joke? It sounds like he copied a joke, but didn't get the point of it. They're just trying to find something to hate him on. Mantis says, yes, it was on stream where Seven accused him of transvestigating. Do it on the stream. It was clearly a cheeky stream involving coom related stuff, in my opinion. <sighs> Amaris says, I think Tom's answers are sounding strange. It's because he's confused as us. He's like, wait, did I do something to get me canceled? I thought it was a funny drunk te context. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nail says, are these girls he knows and has no chance with? Was that the reason? Yeah, it feels like, so the context would be, hey, I'm drunk. It's a joke. Let's type up all these, like, Ingrid says the punchline was to remove seven from the list. So they made up a list to remove seven from the list. Like, oh, I'm going to have sex with all these girls except seven. So here's all the girls. I was, it was random. Humans aren't that random, guys. I don't believe in random like that. You have to have a why. The joke was to remove Seven from the list after she got accused of, accused him of transvestigating. Okay, so he created the list to remove Seven from the list, and that's the joke. That I can believe. Okay, Rock says, I thought the joke was pretending that there was a list he was taking some off of. Okay, I get it now. Holy fuck. Okay, I get it. I get it. It's processed. Okay, now I get the joke. I, okay, does he explain that to Kyla? Because now I get the joke. Okay, I get it. I'm here. I've got it. I've got it. Ingrid says, Lord, you're being autistic. No, I'm explaining it out loud. I just didn't hear it until then. It finally clicked. I get it now. Okay. Actually, a list of anything. So then why did you say you didn't know what the list was in reference to? I'm not saying- like, I get I, that it's it not a real list. I understand that, thing. but I'm asking- That's what I'm saying. It doesn't actually reference a thing. When I say I don't know, I'm saying it doesn't actually reference anything. Yeah, there's no way he's going to communicate that right. Yeah, there's no way. Binks, you're right. I don't think he's going to communicate it to Kyla correctly. It's not actually referencing anything. Can I see if so, I understand? So it, the list, it was just a list of names that you put down, had no meaning, and that's why you can't explain- No, you what... can't say it had no meaning. The meaning was to remove seven from the list as the joke. That was the meaning. So when he says, no, there is no meaning, that's not what they're asking. They're asking, why did you create the list? To tell a joke on seven, to pull a prank on seven. You guys are all fucking autistic yourself. Okay? That's not the right answer, you autists. You can't say, oh, there's no reason for the list. No, the reason for the list was to pull a prank slash joke on seven because she, because it made, you know what I'm saying? That is why they have the joke or the, the reason they have the list. What the people, what the reason for the, why the people are on the list? Because there is no reason. They're just yes, on the list. Literally, the not a reason. Okay. I was literally drunk at the time. No, no, no. You can't say there's no reason. And I literally just typed up a bunch of names, thought it'd be funny to erase the name off the list and then end screen. See, that that's not an explanation. You guys explained it better than he did. It, yeah. it sounds like a lie because my brain can't hold on to a why. So you guys explained it better in chat. Okay. And so you, uh, you, you think that he lied because he, A, the list of women that he wrote out on stream, he said that he got their permission to write their name the first time or that he's since gotten their permission? Uh, I believe he's saying he's tried to since get. Yeah, uh, saying that they were okay yeah. with it. Yeah. But even one of the people he's listing here says, no, didn't have consent to do that. 
Okay, who, who is this? Uh, it's seven, but okay. So in the DMs, I like again. These are leaks, so I don't have to like. Yeah, I don't believe Jay Stock. Anything he says about anybody, I literally do not believe anything he says about anybody. Leak them. They're there. Anybody can go look. Where her and I have a conversation about this. She says, "Why did you lie about whether or not I I said it was okay for you to put this on the list?" I said, "You literally DM'd me and said, hey, can <clears> I jump onto <throat> Wix channel and meme about the list and pretend like this was a uh like I'm upset about it or something?" And I said, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." Um. And so I was like, that to me, and like posting about it on Twitter and memeing about it on Twitter. Yes, that to me was you like consenting. Look, people are very bad at giving consent. You can literally ask people again and again and again. Everyone does consent different. It's literally cultural. Okay, how people do consent. Okay, everything is like, so you get you think you've gotten the proper consent and then you realize this person didn't feel like they gave a proper. I would honestly, if it's a pattern of theirs, I would stop hanging out with them. Seven said to me on stream on a panel that she has a very hard time socializing. She's learning about the space. She's very overwhelmed. So honestly, like, look, I don't believe in infantilizing women. I believe in, I believe meeting people where they're at is important without infantilization. You're meeting people where they at. If you tell me this is too overwhelming, this space is too much, you can't handle it. I'm going to take you away. I'm going to stop engaging with you in a way that could come back and bite me because you are not ready to handle the space. So again, it's absolutely fine for people to want away from the space. It's fine for people to be like, I'm overwhelmed with this. All of your consent is valid. But again, if you make your inability to have the proper relationship, other people's problems, then they have a right to like have boundaries around, oh, maybe you're not like, maybe I don't feel safe engaging because now I don't know if I'm getting proper consent, right? It's like, there are people that I've wanted to be with, but they're like, I only have sex drunk. I only do BDSM drunk. Well, then I'm not going to engage with you. And they're like, why not? And I'm like, well, because now I don't know if you're consenting for real. Like I've had people do that to me. And again, these are vanilla people who want to try BDSM or vanilla people that want to have sex. You know, Artifact says, do you believe in infantilizing men? Obviously not. Don't infantilize anyone. Meet people where they're at. Don't infantilize meet people where they're at. Sometimes it looks the same to people, but they are very different. Again, it all looks blue, but it's a very different shade of blue. So again, like with peace and love, I think Tom should burn bridges or not talk to people that seem to be unable to sort of own the way that they do things or have the conversation out in a way that makes sense. You know? So again, with, with peace and love, I just think like, Kelly Jean, Seven, Sass, Zonia, obviously something's fucking wrong with them in the nicest way possible. Like with peace and love, just like their displays on stream is like every, there's something wrong with all of us. It's just the kind of wrong that they have is like uh, it's out of personally, no thank you. And maybe Sass is different, but right now she's not, it's not looking good. So again, like everyone has something wrong with them. All of us have something wrong with us, but it's a different shade of blue. I want the lightest shade of blue, the the least amount of baggage and the most amount of self-responsibility, okay? Okay, that's what we want here. We want people to recognize we're all fucked up in our own ways, but the kind of fucked up you are is too fucked up for me to deal with, with peace and love, with peace and love, you know? Stephanie says, Seven also said Tom ruined her experience and therefore wouldn't be pursuing streaming because of him, only to then jump on every stream shitting on Tom. Yeah. The kind of fucked up you are is the kind I don't want to deal with. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Put down boundaries. Don't deal with fucked up that you can't deal with. To this, that it was an okay meme, that this wasn't a problem. When I do shit when I'm drunk sometimes on stream, yes, I will definitely double, like, think it and think, oh, shit, maybe, like, this could have, like, bad implications. But instead, like, the people on the list were, like, having fun with it and... Mantis says seven is dodgy. She turned this into something that she never said. She had an issue with Tom. With to Tom, she said he, quote, violated my consent, even though she joked and played into the list. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds shady. I don't like it. It sounds weird. Something is sus sussy baka. I don't like it. Thought it was funny. And so, yes, them engaging in the meme to me was uh, implicit consent. Yeah. Okay. I, and that's um, what we're sure saying. Sure I can see how that actually is implicit consent it. to me in the DMs that she leaked. So. Why did you say that you had, to be honest, I don't believe the other consent, because why the fuck would you get their consent for like a five second meme? I'm not gonna lie, like why the because fuck would you do that? Because it continued afterwards. Oh. It wasn't a, it, like, it was a thing that I did Yeah, Tom's being too courteous, honestly. See, I wouldn't do this. Tom's going way beyond his need. Obviously, if you feel like it's weird using people in the space, use celebrities and just switch it out and fuck everybody in the space. It's like sometimes we want to try to be inclusive, but by being inclusive, it, it like makes it too much for people. Because look, streamers are, are celebrities or mini celebrities or content creators or public figures. 
You can be talked about. The only chance you get at being treated, quote, like uh, a friend is if you are one. You know what I mean? And so again, I don't even know what we're pretending. You think if I went to Chud Logic and said, hey, can you take down your stream where you called me a genocidal cult leader? Do you think Chud Logic's going to give a fuck? He was willing to post it in the first place. He literally called me a genocidal like cult leader in his title. What are you doing, bro? I spent all my time watching One Piece and fucking my husband. You think I have time to run a genocide? Are you fucking dumb? He's not going to take down that video. Why would he take down that video? What are we talking about here? Why are we pretending like people in this space are in any way humanizing you any more than you're human? Why are we pretending, bro? Pick your limits and stick to your boundaries. Use your values to decide how to act. Don't let people pressure you outside of your values. If you want to be, you know, thoughtful and open-minded, I've curtailed some of my language for my audience. I'm happy to do that. It's a little less authentic, but it's a little bit more courteous. That's fine, but I'm not going to do it for every person that requires it of me. I'm kept sorry. referencing this like list not of all the girls. Me. Other people screenshot it, started posting in your it community. On in, in, no, not just in my community. Like Wick tweeted it out. Um, the uh, other, I think, girls who were literally on the list tweeted it out. It was screenshot and posted in discords and stuff. And so then, yeah, afterwards, there was like all, almost all of the people on the list were like memeing about it and posting it around. Did they interact? Okay, so the the girls who were on the list and were in reference to you took basically implied consent. If I'm understanding you, okay, if I'm understanding what you're saying, you're saying. You got implied consent because they were engaging with it. They seemed to be laughing about it. There seemed yes. to be positive receptivity. And nobody said, like, what the fuck? Take me off this, you creep, right. or anything like that. In fact, some people were saying, why aren't I on the list? I'm offended. Yes. Is that or, correct? Or they were people that okay. I already had this sort of relationship with that, I, yes, I was well aware of that they would. Okay, okay, so when you say that you got their permission, you don't mean you got explicit permission. You're saying you felt that there was implied permission. Yeah, I, I understand. If that was my exact words that I said, I got permission. I think he, I, I don't remember. But no, yes. Tom said implied permission. And I think he's right. That's like a reasonable amount of permission. That was what we were talking about is yes, whether or not they okay. were okay and with And then this, when you said that you yes. didn't know what the list was, that was, again, I'm just stealing you. I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm just making sure that everyone understands what you're saying. When you say that, you said that you didn't know what the list was. What you meant was the um, anybody destiny fuck list. You don't actually know who that's who that is like it's, it's not a true no, thing it wasn't referencing That's what you're saying. That you don't list. List it wasn't referencing that list it was just a fucking list that i typed up that meant nothing i understand and then... oh my god i think tom's autistic oh my god Wah. hello he he can't keep saying that it's driving me crazy it's driving me crazy it doesn't mean anything the list doesn't mean anything stop saying that it doesn't make sense you're not oh i know what he's saying now but it's so frustrating why did you say that you didn't know any what you didn't know what list they were talking about oh my goodness if it was I, a re regular meme i feel like maybe you're confused I, okay i could be really up, retarded me typing up a bunch of names on my screen wasn't thought of as okay. a list it was just names on a screen so then later there is another meme called the list about me wanting to have sex with all any girl that destiny's ever had sex with i was not relating these two things to one another at the time i don't think as far as i remember this was just uh me typing up random names and adding in names like pamela anderson and amaranth and stuff like that like it was just supposed to be yeah, a bunch of a bunch of way, random names. he also said the majority of these women were cool with it and i can see three people i believe three people who aren't cool with it or maybe Maybe three if you count Cherry, who was added on Twitter, or said, I think he said, I'm adding you to the list. Cherry, just, okay. I don't, I don't, so I don't that, that ever happened. Block her, stop engaging. I don't, okay. I okay. guess, I don't, yeah, maybe there are women who are uncomfortable with it, if that's the case. I, I was unaware, but yes, the, from my perspective, yes, the, the women who were on the list were okay with it. And the thing is, is that, yes, it changed like a dozen Ugh. times over the course of the meme. And so I can't even remember like what was or wasn't on it at first or in the end. I, yeah. Like what the, the joke was is that it, it was a meaningless list that didn't actually mean anything. So no, the list. Why it was funny. Okay. Yeah, I think Tom is not explaining the list enough. You know what I mean? So it doesn't make sense to me the way he's explaining it. And this is the only time in the whole five hours or six hours or two hours we've been here that I feel like, ooh, this isn't good. You know what I mean? Okay, so this is how I felt watching the Destiny and Britney bridge burn. Both of you are autistic and don't realize it. It's because we are like double speaking each other. I feel like if Steven had just messaged me, we could have cleared the air. I don't know why he didn't message me. We could have just cleared the air. But then at the same time, we wouldn't have been much closer because we never were close to begin with. But I obviously can't be close with people that do these types of things. That's what I'm saying. There's a behavior pattern. Like there's a behavior pattern. We're like, if you are so edged, if you're so hurt, you think everyone's trying to hurt you, but you can't tell the difference between people who are actually trying to hurt you and people that are just speaking in their truth or their values because you're not used to people having values. Bro, it is so frustrating. Again, I only disagree with people on principle. I'm not, I don't have any issue with anyone in the space except the people I talk about and I have blocked. I haven't blocked Steven. Why not? Because I'm not, I don't think of him in that category. JSTOC and Cherry and all those people had to get blocked because they couldn't maintain. 
That's what's so frustrating. It's like Stephen's not even in that category. He's a different category. Okay, he's a different shade of blue. You know? Like with peace and love, like I, there's so much inappropriate behavior in this space. So much assuming words mean more than they do. So much assuming people are closer than they are. It's so inappropriate. And I'm just here to call it out because this is like not common in healthier circles, right? And yes, it can sometimes happen with friends and family. They're like, hey, we're not spending as much time together. I miss you. But they have much more reasonable reason to be complaining about that than this. This is so weird. You know what I mean? This is just so inappropriate. <sighs> okay, says the autistic one is destiny, but in the moment, both of you were not in, 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 glishing, in glishing? So badly, it was frustrating to watch. I mean, bro, could have talked it out in private. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying I can't have this conversation on stream. That's what I mean. Real friendships don't happen on stream, guys. You know, that's what I'm saying. This is so, this, this, if this was real, this would happen in private and people would understand each other or they'd agree to disagree. Okay. This is all inappropriate. Okay. Okay. Um, now, Erudite, if you go to the, the channel in information that is called the list in this discord, in what this do you discord? see there? Yeah. Channel. Oh, this is really nice. The list. It's girls. It is girls, 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 girls. Cute girls. What is this? That's a Our thing for a show that we were making that we asked people to contribute to a list of girls that they would want to be on a panel. And the panel was for like. It's supposed to be like a whatever podcast style panel where like we did the same okay. thing just over Discord. So it's like a Coomer esque like dating panel. Is that yes. Correct? Yes. The, again, what's your concern? Just like, way later. You disagree that that's what it is? I just, I just think it shows very clearly that he knows what the list is. He's continued to meme about it, which is fine if you lean into it. But then when you go, I have no idea what it means. I've got no clue. I, that is <laughs> what is it became. Another, another but thing yes, that is not what it was at first. That is not like what the plan was. The idea was more so that I was trying to say that like, oh, I fucked shit up with Seven so badly. I made myself look like such an idiot by misunderstanding this joke that she's never going to want to talk to me. Like that was the the joke at the time but yes it evolved into something else over time that was not that yes that's just not what it was gotcha um oh here we go hmm. nah, okay hang on <clears throat> status what is this i'm dying here it was i was just erasing seven from the list i think i fucked that one up okay but what is the list you know what the list is and you know what the list is um i'm trying to see i believe that you know what the list is is coming from me i assume that's that, the when tom yeah, quotes that oh sorry i no. oh, let me try this too Wait, isn't that a Twitter post? That you're it's a Twitter oh, post. Sorry, yeah. I thought we were going yeah. over the channel again. My I'm bad. sorry. Let's. I'm gonna post it inside chat actually for everyone just so that it's super available. Uh, it's a Wick post about the list. Um, it's a bunch of engagement thinking that it's funny. He said I was just erasing seven from the list. I think I fucked that one up. And he said, "What is the list?" Tom and Webby both say, "You know what the list is. You know what the list is." Oh yeah. Did Wick message Tom like, "What is this list?" Did he blow it out of proportion? Was that the problem? You know what I mean? Was that the problem that he like blew it out of proportion? Yeah, I think Wick might have fucked up here. Maybe he blew it out of proportion and thought it was bigger than it was like when he freaked out about ADHD meds. He saw it on Twitter and he thinks he's curious and ass and then Tom stayed vague and went it from there. Oh my God. It feels like this space is like full of people that haven't bubble hopped enough to like actually be curious on why things originate. Like no one's asking why. But then there's also miscommunication happening. Like Tom is explaining this very badly. Okay, so Wick sent him the picture and he probably, I am assuming, didn't do it calmly from what I remember from a screenshot I saw. It was like very like, what is this? And it's just like, yeah, Wick, <laughs> Wick does, does, I think Wick is a little bit more sex negative than probably I am. But also, again, considering all the sex pestery in this space tom is the least offensive like he's definitely there if you're gonna make a list but he's not actually like why are they holding tom to such a standard that's what i'm trying to figure out they would never really hold certain people accountable the way they're holding tom why is it about tom that makes people go after him the hardest is it because he's healthier than them i would definitely say tom is on the healthier side of the other shades of blue. What is it about Tom? 
what is it about Tom that makes people go for him? Is it because he's like, what is it? What is it? What is it? <sighs> what is it? <laughs> Brittany, don't go suggesting making lists now, bro. I'm telling you, there's something here, right? Isn't it gnawing at your brains? Like, why is Tom so interesting? Like, why is he the target? You know? He's more attractive than them. Mikey, please. Okay, Momo, you're getting blocked. Because I fucking, your comments are so feeling racist to me. And I hate that vibe. Okay, let me see. Just inappropriate. So many inappropriate. Tom is on my list, Discord says. <laughs> Abba, Abba gif or Gabba emoji. I think Tom is just the easiest target during the content drought cases. Maybe. He's more willing to accept his mistakes. He does do that too much. He's too nice to these people. Interesting. I wonder what it is. Okay, I got to pee. I've been streaming this whole time without peeing once. I got to pee, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mantis says it's because he cares. They like targeting people they care to get under their skin. I agree with you. I actually think Tom is the target because he cares. And it pisses me off how much he cares. Who cares about these fucking losers, bro? They're losers, bro. Who cares? You know who cares about losers? Losers. Stop caring about these losers so you're no longer a loser. Tom, like, I think Tom's better than these people. But Tom is also the only streamer that I feel like is much better at, like, dissecting information and being good faith. So because he is fair, I, I do tend to watch him as a viewer, but I also do hate that he seems to care what they think. Kay says, yeah, Tom plays into it by giving too much engagement in these bad faith interactions. I agree. Why does he care? Good point. Maybe it's his childhood. His mom didn't hug him enough. Maybe he's just coming off of church, church. Oh, maybe it's like church related, you know? Like he's trying to like have a new community. Ditch this community, Tom. You're better than this community. Life was a fool. 